Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. You're watching our coverage of the Idaho High School Esports Showdown as top high school gamers compete to see who has the stuff this year. My name is Artie Nerdy Bird Rain, and joining me on desk to open this today's events is Joe Tacky Chigbrow. All right, so we're starting out with Rocket League, of course. You know, that's why we're the dynamic duo here on the desk this morning. Good morning, everyone. This is a little awkward. Hopefully you're here both physically and mentally. I am going to do my best as well. Well, I think I'm here physically. I can't attend to the <laughs> mentally yet. Uh, it's a little bit early for when I've usually been waking up. <laughs> yeah, well, these guys have already been warming up, so they are completely geared up and ready to go. So this isn't our first rodeo when it comes to high school games. What are you hoping to see from everyone today? Honestly, I'm just hoping to see some fantastic Rocket League all around. I mean, mistakes are going to happen. That's fine. But... To see the opportunities for these high school kids to play at a level and have the opportunity to improve this early on in their career, super exciting in general. I'm just super excited to see some confident Rocket League and some great, fantastic clippable moments. I am very excited to see what these kids bring to the table as well. It's going to be very exciting. We are going to rotate out of Rocket League into Valorant off and on today. So be making sure that you're watching this broadcast. Check out all the teams that we're going to be bringing out today. There's going to be a whole bunch on the table. It's going to be going until pretty late as well, so make sure that you stay hydrated and drink. And to everyone that's in here, please also stay hydrated and stay healthy while we're all in here. And we can take a quick look at our matchup for our first game here in Rocket League today. I do believe it's going to be Nampa going against Highland. So I have a little insight about the Nampa team. Not sure if I should share it. I might share it later. We'll have to see how <laughs> things go. Let's see how it pans out. Yes. Some uh, quick tips from Artie Nerdy Bird Rain. Maybe. Maybe. You might get some quick tips. <laughs> All right. And before these gamers get completely started, we are going to do a tradition here. Hopefully, they take a moment and take a breath and do take a quick look at the screens that are going to be in front of them. Not quite their actual gaming screens, but one of the many other massive TVs around the arena. You can see we have a lovely audience today, which is a rare occurrence, and it's fantastic to see all those seats filled up. But guys, we are going to give you Doc's keys to the game for Rocket League. Yes. Yes. Yes, we'll always <laughs> be giving you guys Doc's keys to the game at Rocket League. And Doc's keys to the game in Rocket League are set the play style, understand the rotations, play to follow up, and have them sweaty comms. Doc's keys to the game are brought to you by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming is the premier online platform for gamers who see competition. Play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned venture, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your competition journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. So if you are wondering, this is going to be a best of five, no best of threes for anyone. Those uh, are heartbreaking moments, in all honesty. We discussed it before. We're not the hugest fans of them. So hopefully these guys are ready to take on this first best of five series that we're going to be jump jumping into here very shortly. I wish them luck. Um, some of them are nervous. I've heard that. But you guys got this. Only a few seconds in. Looks like a lot of clean defense so far, covering a lot of angles that could lead to disastrous opportunities for either team. Dragonism finds a clear off the corner, but can't quite get to the ball in time to prevent it from being pushed right back by Chosis. Now we've, it does get popped up. Now the challenge is going to be taken away by Dragonism going in front of the goal. There's no one there. He hits the fourth man crossbar, though. It can be your friend or it can be your enemy, and today it was your enemy. Barely not able to connect to the back of the net there, but surely they'll have more opportunities. The 0 0 scoreline is really not something to be too worried about this early in the game. Dragon gets it over one. Can they get it out of this corner and send it up? Or are they going to go for it by themselves? They will! And they find goal number one for Nava High! A great play by Dragonism here. Gets the fake and then the flick around. Astronic not quite able to connect back in the net will go in favor of Nampa High for the first goal. All right, still got plenty of time and plenty of Rocket League left to go. The first 50-50 goes in favor of Nampa High again. We've got Bluey going for the backboard. Unfortunately, Astonic is going to be there first. Tries to pinch it down onto the ground. Dragonism comes in, centers it up off the back wall. Is there a follow-up touch? There is, but GDOT makes it a little too late. Now ball crossing that midfield strike. Bluey trying to put pressure on to get possession away and find a clear for the side of Nampa High. Highland pushing really up, looking for an equalizer. 
here that they need in order to keep the pressure equally on Nampa High. Oh, and a missed opportunity there, but surely they'll have more as the offense continues to stay on the side of Highland. Nampa High is still not able to find their way out. Oh, and a great shot by Astronic, making up for how he was done dirty earlier before. This a is fantastic actually... bar down. Right dunked over Dragonism as well, kind of just returning the favor. Now we are at the It's Complicated Tide, one aside, basically 0-0. Zero, zero. We have still over half of this game left to go. We'll have to see who ends up pulling ahead. Both teams looking for two goals, one for the lead and one to be sitting in a secure position. Let's see who comes out on top in the next three minutes. Definitely exciting game so far. It's super cool to see these teams play so confidently on offense, going for what they're capable of and using the mechanics they practiced to create pressure. Stronic gets a great shot down into the corner, but Jesus, it's going to get pushed away from them. Giac finds a great clear. It goes over Stronic. They're trying to go for the follow-up. Stronic finds a clear, crossing the midfield stripe, goes to the back third at Nampa High's side. Dragonism is a fantastic clear. He's choosing to rotate back to the back post as GDOT pushes forward, maintaining momentum for their team. Off the back wall, Stronic gets in the passing lane for taking away that initial goal-scoring opportunity. Great save by Highland. Determined to keep themselves in this game. Nampa High just barely being thwarted before they were able to find the back net again. And now the offense is in play for Highland. Dragonism went to go dunk the ball down over, over Chistas. Unfortunately, they did miss. And now Gita is going to push it forward. And Stronic at the midfield stops it. But Bluey comes forward. It's going to go off the back wall. Gita looking to dunk it down in front of the net. Bluey is there before Bluey can grab it. Astronic finds the clear. Dragonism goes for the tertiary. And the fourth touch. It takes all three members of Highland to block these attempts on goal. Bluey comes in for another one. Unfortunately, it's just a little too high as the ball is now hitting that midfield stripe. Land trying to lay a demo from Bluey. Manages to do so, but has to get rid of the possession of the ball. Really, really close opportunity there from Nampa High. Lots of pressure out there. A little bit of a double commit from Highland, but not something that they weren't able to work around after the fact. We have Definitely crossed good. across uh, into the 100 second zone of this first game in a best of five series right now. Tied one aside, both teams still looking for an extra goal. Are we going to have a buzzer beater opportunity or is someone going to set the tempo from here on out? Dragon is a great pass on the backboard. Can't quite connect for Nampa High. Close opportunity is Jada hits it to the mid, maybe looking for a teammate. But now Highland will have an opportunity to play offense. That was quickly thrown by Dragonism. Dragonism with a boomer downfield connecting off of an unfortunate flick attempt from Highland. Or Just excuse me, Nampa High. Too many touches were taken on that ball, pushing forward when he did not have a teammate to follow up or pass to. Got to be careful to give him the go as a central and fast-paced game here. Do you have the collision on the 50-50? Astronic going to make the redemption shot and does. We are once again tied to a side. One minute and five seconds left on the clock. And Astronic is determined to make the game go on. He is not willing to give up game one just yet as he forces another one into the back of the net. And now we're threatening an overtime again at one minute and five left in the game. Off the 50-50, Dragonism gets a better touch, but suffers the loss of their car in the process. Great clear out of the back third from Highland, onto the back third of Nampa High. Dragonism off the ceiling, it does an awkward ricochet. They lose possession, Astronic gets possession on the ground. Bluey manages to get a touch on it to send it to Dragonism, now trying to bring it up the side. Looking across midfield, stripe to a teammate, but unfortunately pushing it too far forward, allowing Land to corral it here in the corner. And right now, it doesn't look like either of these teams are necessarily nervous. They're being confident in their aerial play, and they're looking for aggressive plays, even if it means double committing at times. So it, right now, it seems like the biggest changes need to be made are mostly connection-based. Pluey is going to manage to get an opportunity to bring the ball over one, but can't get it over the other. Gita in the corner centers it up. Is Dragon doesn't going to connect with it in time? He does, but the crossbar stops him. We are now at five seconds left on the clock. Are we going to witness our first overtime of the day? Be in our first game. Astronic is telling me I don't want to see that happening. So is Gita, but it may just be so. And the ground finally meets the ball. We are in overtime. Golden goal is going to take away the first game win. And right now, Nampa High and Highland. Both are going to start feeling the pressure as this overtime in the first game on stream. 
is going to make it so that everything counts. The dragon is a fantastic save. Follow from Chizits. Oh, another fantastic save. Two extremely close opportunities from Highland, barely thwarted by Nampa High. Chizits looking for the back pass. Could be a little bit risky when we are in golden goal situations. Bluey got to take it off the wall, off the backboard. Cheetah tries to go for the dunk down. Fortunately, can't get the nose on at the right angle. Now bringing it up this side, we have Highland crossing that midfield stripe. Astronic trying to get an opportunity to get in this passing lane, take the ball possession away. Land will be the one to do so. Instead, Dragonism off the wall, finds the clear. Can they maintain possession? They will for a few moments, but have to go for the boot play. Instead, allowing just Astronic to get possession for a couple extra seconds. Shot on goal from Astronic is going to be a little bit too wide. Almost a passing opportunity there for Nampa High. And right now, defense is the key to this game. It was seen. Fantastic barely saves from both teams are keeping them in. Again, Chizits right there. A fantastic last ditch effort save, keeping both teams still in this game, turning our overtime to almost two minutes now. Land pushing forward, collides with Bluey. Ball in the corner, Astronic pops it up. Dragonism is going to play it back into the corner. Chooses to leave it, knowing that they have to have the opportunity with the teammate follow up. We've got a Cheetah pushing the ball forward. It's taking a little bit of time to find the connection from Bluey, but Dragonism comes Ooh. in with another shot. She's us getting back to back saves. We are now almost in that two minute marker as Bluey takes another shot on goal. And with that, Neva High will walk away with the game one victory. A fantastic first game. So close, so much good defense played from both teams, but you have to hand it to Bluey for finding that last clutch say or goal right at the end there. And we can take a look at our stats here. Shots on goal as well as boost and side control heavily in favor of Nampa. Now, if you were to give advice to Highland, what do you think they need to be doing here just to clean things up a tiny bit for themselves? Yeah, I think the biggest thing right now is making sure they're working together on defense rather than just kicking the ball out over and over, spread out, and maybe try to find each other off of your clear. That way you can pass it to one person and then take it down the field from there. But right now, it's still so close. I feel like if they played that same game again, it could end up in their favor. But at the end of the day, the offense from Dragonism especially is just in their face constantly, and they need to have an answer to it. The one thing I am noticing on Nampa High's part is that they are they hard commit on a lot of those goal scoring opportunities and that does tend to force a lot of Highland into the goal box and forcing all three members in there. I understand that you're trying to take away as many opportunities as possible. There was a lot of saves back to back because all three of them were in that one spot. However, the breakaway opportunities because you're all huddled together is much harder to come across. And so in those situations, you got to figure out those rotations and get a little bit more spaced out as you were saying. Yeah, I have to agree there. And honestly, they're playing so well for a team that, I, well, for both teams, that I'd imagine hasn't had a lot of Atlanta experience coming into this. I know my first land, I was super nervous, so I can't blame them. And if you are nervous at your first land or even first tournament, what do you think is the difference maker to keep you kind of in it? despite that nervousness. So I'm sure you can relate. When you start uh, kind of, you know, getting really into the game that you're playing, you, you zone in, you kind of forget everything else that's happening around you. It's that uh, I started playing at 8 o'clock and I look at the out my window and the sun is rising type of moment. Uh, that is the type of mentality you need to be looking for. You need to be focused on yourself and what you are doing and try to block out everything that's happening around you. There is blinders on you and you are just listening to your comms, your teammates, and what is on your screen. That is the best advice I can give. And honestly, beyond that, if your nerves really get to you, Stand up and take off your headphones for a minute. You can take a deep breath. It's okay to do that. That is the best advice I can give to anybody, regardless of what game they're playing today, because I understand this is nerve wracking. Yeah, I have to agree. Standing up, finding that flow state as you continue to play the game. I think those are definitely the difference makers for this kind of event. Yes. A lot of the time. Well, that was our first game of a best of five series. So there is still at least two more. If I'm lucky, we'll get four. And if we get four, my voice is going to be gone by our second game of the day. But that's OK with me. So plenty of opportunities for a lot more Rocket League for both teams to still be clawing their way to figure out who's going to come out on top. But before we jump into this next game, I, I really want to ask you if you were one of these high school players and this was your first LAN. How excited would you be right now? Oh, probably the exact same position. I mean, I was first introduced to Boise State University's esports program through a high school tournament like this. Well, aren't you just lucky? I know. Are but uh, I, I was super nervous. I was super excited. And 
it honestly made me super jittery, but I wish I had known what I know <laughs> now about uh, handling those kinds of nerves and, I don't know, handi handling the tournament stage. Well, it does not look like the nerves are really getting to these guys. You can tell by these replays. They are absolutely popping off on fire across the board for all of these players. Definitely, they know the game that they are playing. And that's, that's also the other thing that I didn't touch on, is you guys are here for a reason. You're good at this game, and you're confident in your skills. So that is why you are here. Just have faith in yourself and your teammates, and you're going to succeed. That is one of the most important things that I feel like any team needs to build upon, is the faith and trust you have in yourselves, and the faith and trust you have across the board between each other. Because teamwork makes the dream work, as you can see by these fantastic replays that we have going on right now. That was some intense gameplay, especially for such a gosh darn early game. Y'all are incredible for bringing out everything you got and coming out swinging this gosh darn early in the day. And you can see our beautiful audience. They do have cowbells. You might hear those as well today. Every th one of our theater, theater seats is filled. Every computer has someone in it. It is awesome to see the arena just full of life like this yet again. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And hopefully everyone is in good spirits and willing to cheer on both teams, regardless of what happens on the screen. At the end of the day, we are here to have a good time. And if you're not having fun, I feel like you're not playing your game right. Yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, that's a big part of improving at a game that you love. I mean, we all get into a game to begin with because we love the game. It's super fun. And so it's really hard sometimes to manage continuing to press yourself to improve at that game and almost turning it into a chore while also enjoying it. And so you have to find that middle line where you're working to improve so that you feel better about your gameplay to begin with and you reach that goal that you want to reach without the cost of turning it into the same thing as cleaning up your clothes every day or something, you know? Picking, making it so it's not a chore, but it's still something that you're actively trying to work towards. I mean, this is advice coming from what, how many years were you actively involved with the program as the rock as, as a, one of our Rocket League players? Uh, well, if you count this, I'm still and actively this. involved. But uh, I would want to say three. Okay, um, I think I'm. I'm gonna not. I'm gonna say over or under by a couple here. Five years now. Uh, never once has doing this ever felt like a chore, and I think that's because. Every single day, there's always something new to learn, and it's always something that I find joy in doing, especially when we get opportunities like this, because this is absolutely incredible. It's not every day that we get to have full arena, and it's a genuine experience that is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity every single one of these lands. And every practice that you have, it's like that day is special because you get to spend it with people that love and care about something as much as you do and are working towards the same goal that you have. And I feel like eSports has the opportunity to do a lot of things and bring a lot of people together. and. This whole thing is actually a huge thank you to the Idaho Army National Guard for helping us put this on. Uh, in general, the Idaho Army National Guard also supports the Boise State Esports program, our top place in the game that you see at the end of our broadcast, are brought, brought to you by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time with more than 10 jobs, offering $20,000 in bonuses, and your degree of choice made for it. They're the best team out there. Reach out to the National Guard on Twitch at iGuard Gaming. And you can also see them, they are in this crowd as well, walking around, some of them are in the seats. Uh, I think most of them are actually in our hallway by our arcade cabinets right now. But they are fantastic supporters of this program and are definitely helping us today put this on. So huge thank you to all of those people. But honestly, one thing that I want to point out is I think I see quite a few parents in the crowd. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the coolest things ever because growing up, I played a lot of sports. Parents were always at those things, but uh, playing video games, I could never really anticipate my parents being there, at least when <laughs> I was younger. When I came to the college level, I was like, yo, I'm playing eSports. That's when they're like, wait, this is this is an actual like, thing now? And started coming. But to see that now at the high school level, where parents are like, yes, pursue your dreams. Do exactly what you want to do. You, you love this game? Well, I will support you and be there for you throughout everything that you do, just like any parent on a soccer field for a soccer kit for a soccer game it's so great to see that and so hopefully each one of these kids has someone in the crowd supporting them today whether it be a friend family member coach or your teammates as we go into game two of this best of five series so far Nampa High has the first game in their back pocket no one at match point yet though as it is best of five a slow start so far kind of the same place that we were at earlier and I'd like to point out from what you said, if you don't have a parent here today, if there is no one here to support you, really, come find me. Or me. I will do it. <laughs> I will make a sign. I am so excited to watch this game here and watch all these players play because already we're getting such exciting offense and Pluey looking to find the next goal in this series, but a solid bump and defensive play 
from the fourth man will make this possible. I am noticing a, quite the change here. The pace is a little bit different. It seems like they became a little bit more cold and calculated of each other's play style here. Snap seems to have been rotated in for one of their teammates as we do have deep rosters here today. And Astronic is actually going to find goal number one for Highland here. Just almost at that one minute marker, about, almost, about equal to what we saw earlier. Maybe someone starts running away with the scoreline, or maybe we hit the it's complicated 0-0 uh, zero, zero yet again. And already a fantastic kind of give and go off the wall from Snap to Astronic. So we're looking at a little bit more of a clean offensive play than we've seen in the first series. A lot of either bad 50-50s or overextensions or some really big boomer shots. So it's good to see a classic kind of passing play come out in the series as well. Get, te get teams to showcase everything they can. Woo! And again, the same thing right here. You notice Snap, again with the assist, again with the pass off the wall. So far, he has 100% goal participation in this game. Snap is actually being not physically aggressive, but disrupting a lot of play by just getting in there, taking away ball possession, and getting in the passing lane before I think even the Namba High players are fully prepared to do the give and go in these situations. And it looks like Astronic is trying to do that themselves. They center the ball up, but it does go, it's going to go off the backboard on their own backside of the field. Not something you want to be doing. Clue and G dot slight awkward double commits. They both back off. Got to work on them sweaty comms. So Dragonism is going to come in and push the ball into the corner. Atomic's going to get the clear. G dot off the back wall has a follow up from a teammate, but it was a little bit too low. So Stronic now pushing forward into the back there to the Nampa high side of the field. And we're getting back to that back and forth now. It feels like Nampa high is finding their footing a little bit more on offense, and a bit of confusion from Highland. Looks like they're not quite connected fully with Snap yet. Might mean they just have a little bit of so rush to kick off having not started with him. But uh, definitely not something we can't overcome. They did, luckily didn't have any issues in a situation that would cost them. And now they're using this passing opportunity with Snap to really get down the field. You see he passes it off the wall again, almost able to find the back end again. And I think right now Snap is really showcasing his ability as a midfield passer. Definitely someone to watch out for, try to shut down or put pressure on. Snap yet again, pushing the ball forward. It goes straight to Dragonism, though. He's going to pop it up, slow down a little bit, take control of the tempo here. Steals the ball away, back from Snap, pops it over Astronic, but can't maintain possession. Thankfully, GDOT comes in to help them out. Ball is going to be pushed back towards the midfield, though, by Highland. She's it's pushing forward now with possession off the wall. GDOT's going to get it, play it around them. Now they have to play around Astronic. Can they? They do, but they can't play it around Snap. Very close opportunity, a long shot attempt taken by Dragonism again. Oh, and a fantastic read from GDOT to find that, find the pressure reliever for his team. But the pressure is on them with the count going down fast, almost at a minute 30 now, and still nothing to show for Nampa High's offense. Dragonism has possession, it's gonna bring it off the wall, bring it into the middle, is looking to drop it down, has a follow up from Bluey, goal Number one for Nampa High, we have just under 90 seconds left in game two. Down by one, will we see this come out to be another overtime situation in just our second game of the day? Or is Highland gonna maintain their lead? A fantastic air dribble pass from Dragonism to open up the opportunity for his team and a great follow up from Nampa High. And oh, oh, another long shot allowed to go in. Bluey this time finding the chink in the armor. And it just comes off a poor touch from Astronic not reading the 50-50 coming in and handing up a good tee shot. All right, once again, it's complicated 0-0. Zero, zero. We are tied 2-2. Two 50-50 two. goes in favor of no one, but it does look like Gita is going to be the one to capitalize on the ball slowing down in the midfield. Blue goes for the disruption plan, fortunately does not work out. Astronic pushing forward, dunks the ball down in front of the goal, loses possession for a few moments, allowing Dragon to push forward, crossing the midfield stripe. It hits the ceiling. They will lose possession on the ground as Snap pushes that ball forward. There is another shot taken, but it goes wide of the goal. And finally, now, ball is just going back and forth between the midfield area. Looks like no one really has quite a plan as to how they want to set up goal scoring opportunities just yet, but Astronic is looking to set one up now. Louis trying to pass the Jidda, trying to do what I had talked about earlier, but this time in Nampa High's favor. Oh, and a great pass, Jidda's up for it again. It looks like 
Looks like the theme so far of this game compared to last one has been passing. A lot more passing opportunities taken and a lot more chances not necessarily thrown away. And I really like to see the teams work together like this instead of as one unit in three. We are ticking down awfully close that no time left on the clock as we are still tied. Both teams with two goals. Are we going to see another overtime? We got Dragonism pushing forward with possession. Has to play around Stronic again. Now 10 seconds left. They're trying to find that buzzer beater goal. G dot on the side looking to stop this ball from crossing the midfield stripe. Ball needs to stay in the air now lest we see overtime yet again. It does hit the ground and now golden goal opportunity. Who will get it? Is it going to be Nam or Highland to equalize our series total? And they really like these 2-2 two -two overtimes. <laughs> they like to soften the back of the net just a little bit before they end up taking a golden goal situation. I honestly have no oh. idea. Oh, a fantastic last ditch effort saved by Pluey. Pluey just in the way for Highland, but the opportunity is still there as Astronic is looking to push down the field. Off the respawn, Pluey pushes the ball away from Astronic. Snap slowing down a little bit, try to calculate where this ball is going to go. Dragon. Chips the ball in front of the goal, trying to go for their own secondary touch. Pops it up, has G Dot come in. Hit goes into the corner. Astronic crossing the midfield stripe. Bluey volleys the ball right back. Hits that crossbar. Astronic bumping around a couple of the Nampa high players. He managed to maintain possession for a few moments to get this ball away from the net. But now Dragon has possession, dropping it down. Collides with two of the Highland members. G Dot trying to be the follow up as is Bluey, but no one can find the net. The ball is going to hit the midfield with snap with possession. Finally, the pressure will lead for Highland that they still desperately needed. Now they want to find that goal as soon as possible. They see Nampahai pressuring them to make something happen. And if they don't, we're going to go right back to that Nampahai offense that won them the game last time. Stronic pushing forward, plays it around one. Can they play it around another? It's unfortunately going to go up that back wall. Dragon now with possession, plays it around one, but loses it out to Cheezots, who's going to push forward. G Dot stops the ball on the wall, but cannot get possession back. Ball in front of the goal. It's going to go off the back wall, looking for a centering opportunity. Pluey trying to get it clear here. Cheezots will collide with them, take away that 50 50 ball in the corner on the back there at Nampa High side. A little bit of a reset here from Highland as they communicate a little bit more, look for their teammates who have a better touch, and now they're pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. They need this Nampa High offense or defense to break down because the offense on Nampa High is just too much. Cheez-Its will elevate, unfortunately can't get a touch on it, so Astronic comes in to help them out. Ball at the midfield, gets dunked down. G-Dot follows it up. Shot on goal, turned away by Astronic. Is there going to be another touch? It is from G-Dot, who's trying to crowd in the corner. Dragon comes to help, plays around Astronic. Can they play it around the two defenders in the goal? Pops it up over another one and finds the golden goal for Nampa. Dragonism again being the saving grace for this Nampa High team. Some fantastic offensive pressure from him. He had two irritable attempts. One of them turned into a fantastic pass. One of them was barely saved. And right there, we had a fantastic flick into a double tap read. And wow, that game was just as close as the first one. Super exciting to watch. Stats-wise, though, we're a lot more equal. That's what I like to see. That means we've got some uh, good Rocket League happening. Both teams firing on all cylinders. As far as accolades go, go, again, pretty equal, but Snap is definitely a wild card to keep an eye out for. I'm curious to see if Highland makes another rotation just to shake things up a bit more. Each player tends to bring their own play style into the game, and that seemed to really throw off Nampa for at least that first half of game two. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what exactly was working more. Was it working that Snap was this great passer and that the team overall was fleshing really well together for that first couple uh, minutes or was it more that they were just kind of caught off guard and they weren't quite ready for it so I'm curious if they keep snap in if it's the same kind of story where the offense is popping off for them in the first few minutes or if it's something that now they figured out well we'll have to wait and see we're about to jump into game three of our best of five series we do have Nampa High sitting at match point so Highland now is looking for the reverse sweep taking the next three games in their favor next five minutes we'll tell if they can do that though Let's see if they can top, if Highland can topple down Nampa or if Nampa walks away with a 3-0 sweep. Yeah, and if I'm Highland at this point, the player I'm looking to shut down the most is Dragonism. Statistically, he's been in the way of our defense the most. And I think what it comes down to is just stopping his solo plays before he's allowed to start building them up. 
Dragonism, I'm very sorry if you start spending a lot of time on the respawn screen, because sometimes that's what happens is we have the ball get dunked down by one of the Highland players, and Pluie immediately capitalizes on it. This is one of those situations we had a dox key in the past call uh, that was, well, it actually is one of our normal ones. It's the create mistakes, but it's also important to capitalize on the mistakes that are made by those for you. Yeah, and right now it just kind of seems like uh, Highland is not quite ready for Dragonism's attempts to pass or get in the way because every single time he's going for something crazy and because he has so much space to make it happen, it makes it so difficult for Highland to respond. So still, Highland, you need to shut down Dragonism early and if you can do that, I think you've got a great opportunity to pull this series ahead. Got Dragonism going off the back wall. Claw touch from Fluey. It's going to be taken away by Astronic, though, who's that solid defensive wall for the side of Highland. Ball gets sent to the back there to Nampa High's side of the field. Dragon yet again, though, playing it off the wall. Has to play around Astronic. Manages to do so, but can they maintain possession? They will choose to back off instead. Snap, dunking the ball down and ends up with G-Dot. But Fluey with the follow-up. The touch, though, does end up hitting one of the Highland players finally. Crossing that midfield stripe. We've got Dragonism again, popping it up, playing it over one. Astronic, though, waiting for them, going to be there for the challenge on the defense, takes the ball away, pushes it forward, but Dragonism immediately at the midfield returns the favor. Pluie goes for a shot on goal, and it's going to be turned away by Snap. Now we've got Snap pushing forward with that ball, looking for the opportunity to find a goal, but Dragonism yet again gets possession of it. Off the wall, though, Snap gets a couple touches. GDOT now looking to center it up to a teammate. It is going to go too far forward, though, hit the ceiling. Oh, just barely missing the ball was Pluie. Now at the midfield, Dragonism goes for the 50-50 challenge. GDOT's going to come in to challenge Astronic. Astronic dragging the ball down into the goal area. Pluey stopping it in mid-flight, finding a save for themselves. Two members from Highland will elevate to stop that ball from going in. Awkward double commit does work out in their favor and is not punished immediately by Nampa High. Astronic pushing forward into the corner. Does have to play it around one, and it's Dragonism who's going to steal the ball away again. Nampa High, your offense is on point right now. Oh. Shot after shot after shot, and a follow from GDOT almost finds the back of the net, but a great save by Cheezots. Cheezots has definitely been that player for the Highland defense. Snap now takes a shot on goal. Pluey sends it right back. Astronic going for the return volley. It does not have enough momentum, so Dragon is able to capitalize on it immediately. Pluey pops the ball up again. Ball still here on the side of Highland. Hits the wall at the midfield. Dragon gets another touch off the backboard. Is there a secondary? There is not as the reset rotations already came forward. She's out now pushing forward. Has to play around two. Can't play it around Pluey. Sends it immediately to the back corner to Astronic. Astronic couldn't quite body pass Pluey, so we're still playing Nampa high offense here. And attempted pass from Draconic could have been a juicy one if anyone was ready for it, but potentially they were resetting. Dragonism clears the ball off a shot on goal from Snap, is already in the corner looking to set up another opportunity for GDOT, but GDOT's ball unfortunately will not find the back of the net. Dragonism not giving up just yet. It still has to play it around two though. Do they have the follow up? Because Astronic's just here taking away every opportunity that they possibly can. Has to play it around two. Cannot play it around GDOT. Snap comes in to help them out. Ball now in the back there to Nampa High side of the field. Has to be ticking down to that one minute mark. Highland is really needing to break into the Nampa High defense right now. The clock is running down. We're not going to get a golden goal situation in this current situation, so they have to turn this around. And Oh, and Louie bodies it through after two 50-50s that don't go the direction of Highland. Nampa High finds a goal off of two 50-50s. Bluey's in the way. There was a lot of pressure being put on Bluey there. 45 seconds, it's not impossible to score those two goals, but it is a Herculean task indeed. I do not know what Highland's gonna have to pull out here to make these two goals happen. They did it in our second game of this series. See if they can do it again. Ball is on the back third of Highland side of the field though, so they need to find a clear here if, they're open, if they wanna open that opportunity up. They find the save from Dragonism as we hit the 30 second mark. Dragonism only almost found another solo play there, but this time Highland is ready to respond with their own offense. Cheezots tries to force it through, but is not quite able to get there. And Astronic 
not quite able to find the back of the net either. Dragonism finds a clear. Pluie's gonna get taken out by Astronic. Anvil Dragonism by Astronic. Astronic has turned this into Mad Max on the field to open it up. We've got four seconds left. Two go down. Both Cheez-Its and Astronic returning the favors there. And with that, Nampa High walks away with the 3-0 victory in our first series of the day. You can see here, total shots on goal, 77% in favor of Nampa High. Boost used pretty equal, side control, 64% in favor of Nampa High. This is just our first game of the series uh, of today as far as Rocket League goes. Congratulations, Nampa. You guys get this one in your back pockets for now, but know that that was definitely not an easy series for them. And what I wanted to bring up earlier that I'll mention now is I happen to be friends with their coach, mm -hmm. and uh, he told me that these guys have had 20 minutes of scrim together. 20 minutes? So not very much time. No. No. Well, they're clearly in sync on some parts, and I, I have to hand it to Pluie. I've been talking about Dragonism in the first two games, but Pluie stepped up that game just statistically. All these shots and saves, very, very good game from Pluie. And honestly, that was so close, even on that last game, but it just feels like the Nampa offense was so good. It's punishable, though. Definitely punishable. The overcommits are not, gave me heart palpitations, but I tried my best to not open my mouth about it because they were fantastic moments that were happening. But uh, you got to be careful on those. Overcommitting means you leave the goal wide open, and any good clear will be capitalized on immediately. That's something you got to be careful of. Let's see if that gets cleaned up as the day goes on. But that is going to be the end of our first series of the day. So congratulations to Nampa High, but know that we have plenty more Rocket League in store, but up next is actually going to be Valorant. And we're going to do, you know, our traditional thing here. We're going to do a top five for this, but also player of the match. Oh, that's hard to say. For me, I honestly, heard a Pluey in the crowd. Yeah, honestly, I, I think I can back a Pluey. I think I can black a Pluey for a player of the game in this particular series. I think it was pretty good. All right, so I, 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 uh, I'm going to go with Dragon just because I, I know that they had a lot of flashy plays. All right, so we've got options here. We've got Pluey. I think we're also probably going to see Astronic up here as well. Just, just taking a guess. Yeah, if I had to guess, it's Pluey, Astronic, and Dragon. Yeah, there's Dragon. No surprises there. A fantastic game from Dragonism as well. And waiting on that last one, it is... Astronic, yes, it is there astronic. it is. Astronic, all right. So we've got three options. You've got a 30% chance of success here. Odds aren't in your favor. I'm going to leave this all to you. Who do you think it is? I think it's Pluey. I, I think he showed up for one of those overtimes. I think it was the first overtime, and he really showed up in game three. I think even though Dragonism was all over the place, Pluey was that solid player that was just there in the way constantly with just the basics of the game and able to keep pressure just by keeping calm, cool, and collected. All right, so... That is Joe's guess, is Pluey. I'm ridding myself of all responsibility of this one. Thank you for no one calling me out on that. And at the end of the day, we are just giving suggestions on desk. It's ultimately up to production to decide who popped off the most and had the flashiest of plays. And it is going to be Pluey. So Joe, you were correct. Congratulations, Pluey. You are a f our first player of the game for today. There's going to be plenty of more. But the player of the game is brought to you by the Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes the team more successful, just like Idaho Central's helping members achieve financial success. Pluey is the Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game, the first of many more to come today. Definitely be on the lookout for players just as good as Pluey that are going to get the same kind of accolades today in all sorts of games, for sure. Rocket League is not all we've got for you today. And as we get ready for the next match, let's share our top five plays of the game presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time with more than 10 jobs, offering $20,000 in bonuses and your degree of choice paid for. The Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out to them on Twitch at iGuardGaming. We're going to take a short break. Enjoy these top plays, and we'll be right back.
NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts.
Welcome to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena, and you're watching our coverage of the Idaho High School Schools Esports Showdown as top Idaho High School gamers compete to see the stuff this year. My name is Brandon Red Hot's Cozy and Sick, and I'm joined by none other than Greg Old, Old Smith. And Greg, we got a crowd tonight. You know, we got everyone here for this high school event and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it is Valorant at the end of the day. So I will kind of say, I mean, this is probably one of their first LAN events in terms of in-person and things like that. What do you think changes in comparatively to online matches? Ooh, um, you can't complain about ping anymore. That's true. Right? You can always complain about your teammates throwing, but you can't complain about ping anymore. Yeah. Um, it's a different energy for sure. And true. I think that's the big game changer. You uh -huh. can feel it in the crowd. The fog is in the air. Um, you really have to take that into account. Mm. Um, some people perform better under that. Some yeah. people uh, can't handle that noise. So it's whether it's zoning out or really mm. tuning in. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is like being able to focus and find that point. Because I'm not going to lie, the one thing that difference is, is when you're in person and stuff like that is when a, someone makes a good play, whether it be either team here, you're right. going to get some feedback response. Oh, yeah. And if it's the enemy team, sometimes it's like, oh, well, you know. So sometimes I think it's a big thing is just kind of get in the zone, just play your own game and Definitely kind of so. get ready to play it, just get locked in. I think that's the biggest thing. And I'm really excited to see kind of these two teams. So it is Jerome versus Twin Falls here. It sure is. And uh, Haven was banned, Icebox was banned, and we're going to Ascent, which is kind of one of those... You know, cookie cutter maps, we've always seen it a lot. We love the map as well. Definitely. Anything you're kind of looking forward to, maybe agent wise, comp wise? Um, I'm actually going to start off talking about playstyle. Yeah. I want to see really steady playstyle, yeah. right? They're in for a bit of a marathon tonight, mm -hmm. considering that we've got the, uh, uh, the lead into the finals right now, mm -hmm. and then the finals themselves afterward. So if this goes all the way out to single or double overtime in any of those, they're going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot of energy that they've yeah. got to keep up on the stage. So I want to see like a steady playstyle, a lot of communication. And just keep, you know, rinse and repeat the, the works that work. Yeah, consistency. So then when Definitely. something falls, you can kind of fall back on that. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty smart as well. Because, you know, it is, it is like you said, it's like a marathon. I yeah. mean, potentially best of three in Valorant, you know, we've seen that literally one game can go about an hour or something like that. So you got to be kind of careful in terms of, like, how long it's going Definitely versus so. how long the game is. So I'm very excited to see that as well. I think agents, I think it's going to be a lot of kind of toss-up here. I think it's going to yeah. be a lot of comfort or a lot of, like, relying on comfort, which is a good thing. I think when it comes down to it, you definitely want to play comfort over anything else. You don't want to be like, oh, well, mm -hmm. Neon's the meta. I saw Optic Victor, and it's like, well, that's Optic Victor. You yeah, know? So definitely. <laughs> yeah, so I think overall definitely. I'm excited to see, you know, just different agent picks, maybe some, you know, a love scene omen, of course. No, I think yeah. Fade is actually, I don't know if she's enabled or not. But of course, we get to our docs keys to the game, which in value, you want to focus angles uh, and your flank, know your win condition, count cards, call abilities, and of course, click heads here. Always be clicking And that is brought to you by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming is a premier online platform for gamers who seek competition, play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your ga competitive gaming journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. Make sure to check that out. And of course, you kind of get back to that map there. So it is best mm -hmm. of three. Uh, Haven and Icebox have already been banned. So at this point, Ascent has been picked. So it means after this, I think it'll be another. It'll uh, They'll pick another one after this game here, mm -hmm. which, you know, that kind of leaves up, breezes up, it fractures is. up, it is. splits up. And that's, I guess, n not common for us because usually every time we've casted, Fracture or Breeze is literally banned every oh, time. Oh, insta bans, yeah. So if we saw that today, I wouldn't complain. That'd be crazy. I'd love to see some Fracture. That. Definitely so. I would love to see some Fracture just because of the kind of chaos that it brings yeah, on. Yeah. And you have so many different options because mm -hmm. you can go front or back. You can pinch or go straight. Yeah. You can try to force through mid to get through. There's really three points that you can enter either side from, and the tunnels only make that more complicated. Absolutely. So I think uh, when you're looking at a marathon style setting like this, mm. and when you're looking to keep the energy going for a long time, having that variability is, uh, it's it's a nice tool in pocket. Now the one thing we can touch on for sure is now we are playing on the new patch. We are. And that means that Sova is nerfed. We've seen his shock darts get nerfed by a considerable amount, 15 yep. damage, so now to yep. 75 max. That's at the center. At the center. So the double shock dart still does work, but it has to literally oh, hit precision. both of the center. Precision. So that'll be interesting to see uh, for sure. And we can kind of see these comps here. We're going to see yeah. Reyna from each teams. 
Each team Reyna, we went with the double duelist on one side and the double initiator triple. on the other. We got triple duelist. Triple duelist, wow. Yeah. Talk about comfort picks. Yeah. Okay. Well, interesting that they decided to take defense first then. Um, that is our... Uh, we got all the network information just for us. I am looking forward to it. Yeah, so um, that is Twin Falls on the defense. Absolutely. It looks like they decided to go defense. Um, even though they have a very attack built yeah. team here. So I would not be surprised if we see this chamber uh, come just riding full force into a five stack here with the headhunter out. But um, yeah, I, I will say, I think Jerome for sure is, since they have that double initiator kind of combo, they definitely got to coordinate a little bit with those flashes, things like that. Like so. that KO flash, KO silence, yep. KO ult. So I think the big thing is Twin Falls, yeah, they have three duelists, but I think the biggest thing is it's going to make them play discipline more. Yeah, hold on, that's triple initiator actually. Sky, Sova, and oh. KO. <laughs> wow, we have a stack here. This is aggro. We have a full aggro and a... And a Smoke comes out. She fuck, actually. takes on sight here. Ooh. Meets some resistance. Hug doing well. Gets pretty low, too. Was able to take the space, though, so they're oh. on full sight. Starting to go down, though. Drone blocked one to not bomb me. Not bomb me. Pulling in for another one. Ace's got a reply on to him, though, so... They own that sight, but they're it's crowding around. A good smoke Ooh. out. Wow, what a... What a reload. They double peek him, though. Wow, that was that was quick. It was a lot. There was a lot of I utility. mean, they were took sight, and next thing you know, they, all five members of each team are going back and forth. So at that point, it's just how fast can you react and, how, you know, your communication. Because a lot of times that comms get kind of cl clouded up if it's that many things. So definitely, definitely so. have to clear those comms up if you, to do well, of course. And, I mean, what a... What of a whites of their eyes approach <laughs> to it? They really had all four people. There's a nice a nice frame or two in there yeah. where you saw all members of the team just lined right up. Yeah, and I do want to say that not that Pompey literally just comes out with the shorty through heaven, so Does. gets one at least two. So that's I mean overall, them. yeah, I'll say that's a huge use of that shorty here. We're gonna see a buy, of course, from Twin Falls and you win that first round. Now that Bombie has Ooh. a shotgun, is blast packing in there. Blast packing in with the Bucky. Wow, yeah, look at this. No vision. I love the intro utility, One and it's got to be there. Wow. Nice. Wow, double a double kill with the boom bot. That's huge. That's There so was nice. so much smokes going in there, so I think they were just kind of, you know, you just so let it loose. So many smokes, and it's so tight that the boom yeah. bot, the boom bot, the boom bot and the uh, <laughs> paint shells get so much more utility off yeah. of those kind of AOE cluster damage. Uh -huh. So I think that's a really good call. Um, as for the other calls, would you really take Jet when everything is so close, when everything is so bucky? Yeah, I think it's still good. I think it's, you know, that dash, stuff like that, especially with the new dash. So mm -hmm. the thing is, if you queue up your dash and then you get a, a, a kill through that, it actually gives you one charge towards your next dash. Yeah. So yep. you actually can get more dashes this way now. But now we can see the first kind of full buy here from Jerome. Yeah, a little bit Vandals, slower Phantoms, gameplay. yeah. Maybe I had a great soon. cross there on B side right there as well last round defending here. Ooh, and look at this, this stack up. They don't Ooh. take one though. Wow, Prestige Pug and Upper. Great flank from Cat. Moving on to both of them. We start to see that rotation. Ooh, a lot of damage. Ooh, Hog almost finishing up Pug here. Wow, Bomb actually gets the uh, Lurker that was mid there. Some of us kind of playing that tiles area, but he did check it. Hog gets another one. Prestige Pug is at 3 HP here. No heals available unless he gets a kill here. Helios looking through a little spray through the smoke. 3v3 now. Much more technical play. Yeah. It, I, Ooh, Bomb gets another pick here. Getting one, some big picks. Remaining. Great Ooh. job. Twin Falls used, honestly, great job there. Great retake, making sure that you play together there. It's a lot easier to kind of, oh, I'm going to peek first, then you go down, then you peek again. So great job kind of covering those angles and playing together there. They both dropped at the same time into hell there. So overall, great job by Twin Falls. And Drum Falls 3-0 here, but they need, I think they have a full buy now because they saved that round as well. Yeah, they should have a full buy here. So mm -hmm. definitely going to swap up the pace here with, you know, guns able to match those phantoms, phantoms and vandals, kind yeah. of holding those angles. Definitely so. And I do want to say that Bombi got some great picks at the beginning of the round. I mean, Sova was lurking tiles, and he, they were all A, and he still found them there. So he's obviously clearing those corners, doing a great job of that. Mm -hmm. It's like Hog just trying to bonus that Spectre, keep his uh, five grand in credits. Hey, maybe he's just a Spectre player. I guess so. We've seen him kind of pop off the Spectre, so. Showstopper is available here for Bombi. Oh, and it's a flea from the mid by the defense. Looks like they're feeling that pressure onto A. Drome is okay to just rinse and repeat, though. Doesn't look like it's really working for him. They did try a B push earlier that didn't work, so they might be more comfortable here. Start to see that. Ooh, 
We already have aggressive defense utility being used up. It's not going to catch anything. Yep, trade one for one there. But looks like uh, Drum could be rotating out. They kind of faked him on A. They realized that Twin Falls is rotating really fast. They thought, okay, we can just kind of fake it here. Yeah, it'll have to be real sprint to make it worth it, though. They're already being caught up in mid a little bit here. Hog trying to double up that middle. Ooh. 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 Wow, Julio's upper great shot there, yeah. That's, that's their zone. If they can close this door off, whether it's by posting an initiator. Does have the silence up as well. Should be thrown here. Does take a lot of damage for it, though. And it was destroyed, so no silence to go out here. Yeah, it's not worth it. A Great good crossfire. Double down. Yeah. Oh, close there. Prestige Pug does get the heal, so he's now full HP again. Still just absolutely gay. keeping that door with the spike is already down. They're running out of time. Oh, Kelso with the 4K here looking for the ace. Oh, they send one on the around. The reload is... Okay, here comes the showstopper as well. Oh, and he does get oh, the last beautiful. one, and just like that, Twin Falls, really close round there. Two members, literally one hit each, take the round there. So really close one, but great use of showstopper there. And uh, honestly, uh, crazy there by the chamber play. 4K there from, from Market, too. Had some great shots there. Yeah, he was really shutting that down. Yeah, Kelso down. just went really crazy this round. It seemed like it was pretty doomed for him, too. I mean, they, they were both in Market. One was pretty low there, but just had some great shots, and overall... Kind of clutched that round for him. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to be 4-0 here for said Twin Falls. And these rounds are pretty close, too. It's not really one-sided in terms of, okay, there's like three living, four living. It's That's usually like a one to two, and they're pretty low HP yeah, here. We, so. had, we had one flawless yeah. in there earlier, and it's getting closer now that we're playing slower. Yeah. I hope Jerome recognizes that and brings the pace back down mm -hmm. even further and uses it to their own advantage. Absolutely. Sort of Force is actually coming out here twin, out of Twin Falls now. Indeed. He got a lot of kills last time. Gonna break that. Does have his TP available, but not in it, so. Nope. Oh, great. Dismiss sees them there. Good dismiss. Can't quite catch that other one. A little bit surrounded here. Oh, Dart sees them. They can shoot through, but they're not gonna. Oh, wow. Oh, another flawless miss. Ready for the next one. And it's all Upper can do. Yeah, Twin Falls had a really good kind of crossfire there. They had one left side, one right side. So no matter where you kind of peek or go, you're going to at least trade at the very least. But at this point, they're holding it very well, held those angles. It's just the two to force out, that one shot kind of holding that from heaven there. Yeah, and not all crossfires are made the same. Yeah. They're really respecting the uh, range that each player and weapon mm -hmm. has here with that tour de force in back being able to quick move out. Yeah. And that Reyna that can uh, kind of melee with her distance. Yeah, I'll say. So good understanding of... Uh, of Player position. So Twin Falls isn't playing too aggressive either. They're really playing this defense, really making that, you know, drum work for those kind of a sight. Oh, like that that was almost a nice one. A lot oh, of force a little high. high. Coming sideways. The dog lets him know. Oh, goes in for it again. Oh, Not gonna catch so any close. damage. They're a little bit further out. Yep, they're starting to back all the way out. He might reconsider, but they're not going to play that game. Helios, good job keeping him back of the Intimidy. Got a lot of damage off onto one of them, actually. But it looks like that Sky Heal came in, so they're back to a 5-5. Have been deterred from him. That's oh, enough Kelso. for Kelson to move in. Oh, they don't check it. It's a little too late, so he takes a one-for-one. One. That's all the information. He saw three faces right there, and they're a little bit too late in time to re-rotate without Twin Falls knowing. Yeah, they do have like a minute left now, so they got they can't be too slow here. That's true. They do have the Seekers available here from Gunner Runner. Gonna flash out, does get the audio cue, so they know Good at least one's flash. on site. Ooh, they don't check that Garden in it. Ooh, oh! It was smoked off. Yeah, it was smoked off. Gunrunner walks away with that one. They volley <laughs> straight into it. Good heal up here. Definitely. Drone looking through their first round. They have four ults available here. So this post plant looking pretty good. Upper with another great Sheriff kill. Does go one for one, though. Ooh. Yeah. Hog gets two. It is now 2v2 here. Ooh. Aces gets one. Aces. 1v2. Solo looking for this last one. Oh, great. It's uh, a double peek. I, 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 that's a great double peek right there. Excellent double Drum peek. does a great job there. I'm surprised they didn't know ults, because now they've got a full ult roster, yeah. and they can't they can't use that in, you know, in two or three rounds. So by then, you're going to have the ones that you already used kind of moving up. You want to yeah. stagger those ults so that's always with you. I definitely I, think uh, it's like, you know, kind of like you're saying, yep. but they, they could just do a, you know, three ult for that really guaranteed they round could. here. They do have that brimstone ult for the back of sight. They got the Seekers, and they also have the KO ult, so they can, you know, yeah. silence yeah. them all here. So yeah. uh, I guess we're going to see how they want to use those in sync here, or if, you know, if they want to kind of just use them based on the situation. We already see an AWP coming out here for TF Solo. Oh, Ooh, great, great smoke, freshman. though. The, the Brim smokes have been on point Yeah. Here. And they're quick. Uh, yeah, no, Blazer's doing well with that placement. Clearing all these angles. Ooh. He's already in tree. I mean... 
He's crazy. Hog is being seen. Oh, Hog absolutely just swarmed on here. It's just multitasking too many angles. Watching that deep without someone on your back doesn't work. Kelso finally coming in here for it. Pinhole is actually romping, uh, running a double op here, actually. Ooh, they might Ooh, get right KO for here. It. Playing this close range kind of swarm feel. They've got the heal out. Playing that double op is going to be difficult. I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to go for a change. Doesn't get the auto Ooh, heal. Doesn't. It was a good play. It was splash. playing the smoke a little bit, yeah. It was. That's yeah, right, okay, though. TF actually did swap to a Vandal. That's a good call. Does have the Empress available. Surprise her. I was going to say, surprise her not shooting down. Ooh, Kelso very low. Ooh. Probably going to opt to save run this. Out. Yeah, they're going to save both these ops. Definitely so. Um, they and might... Jerome, taking that another round. Yeah, and with these ops, that's a really nice outro stance, so we're not going to see Jerome even try that. They head out to the front and... Uh... Ooh, got him to get taken down there. Ooh. That Sorry, was, uh, honestly, uh, Jerome is definitely kind of... Stepping up in terms of aggression, Upper has just been literally running it down Cat in terms of like just mm -hmm. full sprinting Cat, gets a pick and tree, ults on site. He's doing a great job of playing that initiated role on this KO. So, no, they definitely had the right uh, response to yeah. a double op there. Uh -huh. and, and then really just kind of skewed on that positioning. Uh, yeah. Just absolutely swarmed Hog and then got underneath so that an op was kind of useless. It was a while until they could switch out and they were backed up behind the smoke. That smoke positioning has been vital every time. Absolutely, yeah. And we'll see a little lineup here Ooh. for the silence. That's a fancy one. Does it catch? I don't think I don't it actually think it did. Yeah. I don't think it caught. And they couldn't have heard it from that far. Some utility more? coming Defender in here. Defender aggression yeah. on the util. Yeah. Actually spending most of the pack here. They're going to reply. A good flash followed up by a leer. Moving right in one at a time. gets a pick. Ooh. Ooh. Does go one for one. He's going to have to close that off. Reload. Yeah. That reload is. It's got to be tight if you want to play against Kelso here. Ooh, Hog is kind of playing. Tree, it is smoked off. It seems like Jerome is not going to commit too much there. They know that off is there. Ooh, but there's oh, another off mid. Wow, and it was not traded. Solo gets a free one. Now it's a 2v4. They do have the Orbital Strike and Hunter's Fury available for Jerome, but the sa same thing goes for Twin Falls. They also have their Orbital Strike as well. Definitely the Empress. so. Yeah, so you kind of have to spread what out if you're Twin remain? Falls. Never mind. Now you're not worried about it. B. Yeah, Helios gets a pick there. Jerome's Hunter's Fury can save him the round if he stands the right distance away and uses that on uh, Spike. Yeah, he's going to be careful about, you know, playing that in terms of them by aggression here. But the thing mm -hmm. is, is uh, you know, Spike's Three right in front of them. Left. It is. And so if he has to get Spike, he has an operator here. So it can be really hard to kind of deal with that. Oh, he's going to peek. Oh. And Kelso had the angle, so he's ready from yeah. that there. Kelso did have the angle go up 6-2, yeah. And Peeker's advantage just does not happen when you're playing right next to your opponent. <laughs> so you can't try that one. It is pretty hard with operators too. You it gotta is. be you gotta be really pretty pretty ready for that on the, on the operator. In. Yeah, pretty dialed in to to, to peak quick scope and then. Absolutely. Hide. And so it's six two. I mean, Drome. It seems like when they do kind of go in that full rush, commit with like all members, it's kind of been working out for them. Uh, I think the biggest thing is this kind of default action there, where they have these double ops. So Twin Falls is just playing those like base angles, and it's really hard for Drome to kind of get ahead there. Definitely so. Moving right Ooh. in, this aggressive defense. And just like that, nice. yeah, gets a pick mid. Oh, good oh, grenade, though. Oh, my goodness. Tries to push it. Solo takes two of them. Yeah, that mid control is going to be pretty hard here for Jerome with, you know, Twin Falls yeah, holding Bonnie, that mid angles. Bonnie's still right on top of him in this mid angle. It did get... Oh, I did not get smoked. That is... Oh, Solo still playing it again. That's kind of... So quick. Lucky timing there, you did check it that's a third one and with decent repositioning might catch some more it's not going to happen though bomby is watching that crossfire and is not quite deep enough to see anyone walk across b oh he's kind of looking though nope did not catch say drum's still kind of holding spawn if they're trying to bait him here yeah they don't really want to push that by the time they get to a main they do have another op there sitting there and they have to worry about time as well they do have to worry about time only 45 seconds from spawn that's a rough push we already see Bomby considering moving up a little bit further, trying to get a better watch onto B. It's not there, so they know they can rotate through a tree, especially with this dart coming out. The swarm happens. They've left B entirely, and it is a full 5v2. Watch the up here. Quick. Kelso, a left. good delay onto Kelso, but he comes out. Oh, oh. almost caught him. Yeah, say, but Bomby has the tree area yeah. and ready for both in there. Does get another one, and it's now 7-2 for such when falls here. Keep in mind, though, these comps are pretty skewed. Yeah. We could see a little change in 
the leaning. Or remember, you know, yeah. an even half is not a fair half, especially with the kind of you know picks that we have. And I think throughout this kind of uh, event here in terms of today for Valorant, I think we're going to see a lot of defensive sided maps, in mm -hmm. more, more so than usual, just because I think uh, sometimes attack takes a lot of like big coordination, a lot of practice, stuff like that. So in defense, it's you know you can kind of just talk about conversations like that. So I think yep. that could be a big factor with that as well. So I can definitely see defense kind of being the one side today. We got a little bit of the rosters for tonight. Absolutely Get here. Oh, and Helios actually has a 3k already with these knives. Absolutely. Gets four, looking look for forward. the ace. Hungry for that ace. He is on his tail. Oh, watch out, Spike. Oh, Ooh, there it is. Oh, that's an ace from Helios. Huge play with those knives there. So fast. With the jet nerf really coming in. Well, the crazy thing is, right, is like with Knives, especially with Jet, it, she can literally cue the dash, get one, dash, get another one, dash again, and then just keep basically queuing it up. So at that point, I mean, you know, Jet just becomes a, a really aggressive Jet can just keep resetting pretty easily without, you know, one less kill than you usually would need. Right. But these obviously would be the biggest thing that Drum has to kind of deal with here. Especially Ooh, this close playing aggressive here. classic one. That Leer goes too deep. He, they're not punished for it. Oh, so they did have the uh, the sky flash there, that was though. good. Oh, Prestige Pug is very low. He must have got hit there. Yeah, maybe so. Oh, Helios takes him down. Has a cross here, but Drum does get on the side. They're planning now. Oh, great old oh, right. quick plant. Gets punished. A good blind. Not followed up. Oh, Seeker's coming out here. Oh, Aces. and the Hunter's Fury. A, a good two left. Actually, oh, very close. Some... They hit him. Oh, that's good. Hunting that man down. Just gotta follow the Seekers here. 4v3, Drome up, remember, gets another. Interesting positioning there for the Sky, healing in the middle, having everyone watch the same door. Kinda gave up Heaven there, so they're gonna start moving in. Bami is taken, but Solo replies, finds another. It's down, it's a 1v1. Solo's on a three streak, and is on the spike upper. A great oh, position yeah. for it. It's a great job, from Upper. Yeah. I think Upper played that last very well. I mean, three of his members half. go down on his team, and he has the last one alive. So I think he just has to realize, okay, I just got to play on the spike here. We'll play slow, kind of peek it a little bit, make sure he's not, you know, faking it out there. So overall, great play. I think the plant was really nice, too. Yeah. And you could say, wow, yeah, it was a convenient plant. But think about it. They were kind of pushing the time there. Yeah. Instead of coming right in, getting the free default, mm. they had to run back and plant deeper yeah. to get out of that orbital strike right onto the default so that they were able to get it down fast enough. They know that the other team's been playing back site, yeah. especially when timer's that low. You, you could call that a meticulous play that Absolutely. kind of brought him around. Oh, and wow, a double kill the Odin right away here from Helios. Oh, Hug absolutely taking down. Laser rifle on the upper, get their one. Helios. That's through, he's been reloading. Comes oh. through though, it takes the 4K. And Helios with the last round of the half there Ooh. gets another 3K. Switching sides. And I think this is when Twin Falls' comp definitely kind of is going to be helpful to the, those three duelists, but it's going to be, I think the difference there is with the initiators versus the duelists, the duelists can kind of do that themselves, yep. whereas the initiators are kind of, okay, we need to play with the team with our, with our utility definitely there, so. so I think it's a little bit easier to play with those kind of duelists rather than those initiators here. But we will see. Uh, Drome is obviously going to be on the defense here. Go. Cannot play some big defense here with a lot of information gathering. You have the KO, Knife, definitely Sky so. Flash, you know, Sova, so you got a lot of utility you know, options there. And my worry is that that leads to a cascading effect where when Jerome loses a few players, yeah. their play style depends on being a 5vx. Yeah. If you're an xvy, then Jerome has the lower hand because anyone on Twin Falls can spread up and, and kind of play themselves. Dash Ooh. right away. Helio's feeling aggressive. Man, Let's have that frenzy available. they are not afraid to play all out in these pistol rounds. Going to find Ooh. first contact with the knife out. Looking to follow up. Absolutely chases. Wow. Bomb gets two. Upper gets two as well, though. They own the site. They've already got it. Spike is down, but it's a quick click up to plant. Helios already moving up for good positioning. Gunrunner not quite ready for it. Thought they had the space. Aces knows better. He's got to move up slow on a Helios, but he's got he's got more angles to watch. Yeah, definitely clear. They do hear him though, so they know he's gonna be on this right definitely side. Oh, Helios is watching it. Hog gets the kill. Actually, that white yeah. hair is shown. Yeah, Hog plays for it. And Twin Falls are in the first round, so now you're going to see probably a buy here with these Spectres. It's going to be 10-3 for Twin Falls, kind of, you know, using a lot of that momentum here and playing with it for sure. 
And wow, Helios playing so aggressive on that jet there, just dashing in and then updrafting once you get on site there. Mm -hmm. Does kind of get Prestige Pug outside of it though, having his knife out. See, but if you have another defender watching that site, all of a sudden you go you go live to every angle that you haven't checked. Yeah. It's, I mean, if they were playing aggro out onto A long, all of a sudden you have people watching you from graves. And wow, five finds man all silence, five. Yeah. That calls for a nice rotate, maybe a flank. Doesn't look like they're going to take up on that flank, so Helios is going to catch one in the middle before it. Unfortunate. They're really Ooh. walking out with the upper hand here. Dashes through. Oh, it takes more. A little bit of a dirty dash, but he makes it. Some spray control on point. Oh, wow. He's firing a lot of bullets, playing really aggressive here. Upper now has a 1v4 scenario. Doesn't Ares, they're coming right to him. Oh, and Ares is almost there. Takes one with almost a pop bullet. Two. So close. I mean, they're not punishing Helios. Yeah. Helios is playing kind of kind of dirty there. Yeah, he's playing really aggressive on this jet. You know, he's playing his dash. He has that Spectre. Definitely getting his Ecos in in terms of just Definitely rushing so. in there, knowing he has the gun advantage here. So. Definitely so. And has that, that kind of flick advantage. And when you're comfortable with the 1v1, look at that. Flick tries yeah. to check all the angles. That spray control was not quite there. Nine, oh, nine bullets and does a great shot on the other one as well. Now it's going to be 11-3 Twin Falls here. And Jerome's going to buy, you know, some Spectres, it seems like. Got one Vandal in there. And going into this kind of, this is a big round for Drum to win, I would say. Ooh. Oh, Aces doesn't take one actually. It doesn't, which just is in sad time. because yeah. now he's unsure. Takes a couple, fire through just to intimidate, but it's not going to find much. Prestige Pug, on the other hand, if they only but knew, a little bit of gunfire coming in, so the leer goes out, nice and low. Oh, good leer. Oh, he does. Oh, get him though. Yeah, was ready on that. Oh, good Molly. Oh, Molly right in the middle. They decide to run back. Pug considering walking through. Aces has got quite a few here. The verticality is not enough. Spike goes Spike down, down mid. mid. There's three Ooh. of them around this. Aces, oh, almost. Eye contact, just barely walking this angle. Got to reply to everything going on here. Oh, Take great one. peek, though. It is a good play one off contact remain. there. Putting it to a 1v2. And Jerome ties it up. Great job by Jerome there. It's a big round for them to win. Definitely so. We're at 11 Because you don't want to get to that 12th round. Mm -hmm. You really want to kind of hold that as much as you can for that you know chance of a comeback. Because once you get the 12th round, it's okay. Well, at least the minimum we can do is overtime. You're so playing on a, on a real back foot when you're yeah. on the 12th round. Uh -huh. You have no option to ever say, well, let's save this. Yeah. You know, we're, your worst case scenario, we have another one. Um, but they've got one mistake left in the bank. Absolutely. But they did a pretty good job there kind of. Trading as well, I've noticed. They had a lot of good trades there. That, really that cat trade. Context, yeah, definitely. exactly. No, and when you have numbers advantage, bait and switch. Throw a guy out there so you can get a free one. That's the biggest thing, yeah. You just got to play smart in terms of numbers, especially when you're attacking. You can kind of go for that one for one. That's big for you because then, you know, usually they're splitting these sites and stuff like that, so they then are. you have the number advantage. They're spread so much thinner. Yeah. And just like that, they're going to run this cat up. Ooh. Not too much mid uh, being held here from Twin. Uh, sorry, from Drum. It's always smoked so fast, though. I think that's the brim defensive smoke that gives them mid almost immediately. Now, it's just kind of this mid main, this mid lobby, so they can't go too deep into market, but they don't need it. So they hear the updrafts, they know that leaves their mid. They do, they're kind of watching. They're splitting the mid a little bit, considering a B. Doesn't look like they want to push Garden. They might go for a full dive here. Yeah, it looks like Brim is considering that back smoke to play onto a Sova. It's not gonna happen though. They're walking into market, that flash is nice. Not a lot worked off available. though. Only a couple seconds left. Out. Great not dash. Quite checking angle and it's a dash away. A good spray transfer to get those assists. Solo and Kelso are the ones that cash in on the actual frag counter though. Pushing us to a 4v2. That KO could be nice. Upper does take one. 30 seconds left. A 3v2 now, yeah, is more playable. 3v2. They do have the KO ult for retake here, which yep. is pretty big because then they can't use any utility. They're sitting on spike Play here. Oh, upper gets another one, but Ooh. that's his 3k for him, but it's not going to be able to blaze rifle. Oh, oh gets one. 1v1 here. Oh, he's behind him, though. Play for time. Oh, no. He didn't see him. Hog, no. Oh, great flank from Hog there, kind of securing the round. That was very close. Takes the Vandal, the spike, walks right out. Match yeah, it's a hard situation, too, because, I mean, you're playing for time at the same time. You know, you're just, okay, you have... You know, 10 seconds left, so you know he can't plan it. But the thing is, nope. you don't know where he is. So Definitely. you're trying to check all those corners. You know, I think he's going to be mid. But unfortunately, he comes from behind you, kind of pushes you out there. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, he was coming from that angle, which means he could have just as easily walked through B. Yeah. So he was actually trying to multitask, like, three different angles. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> so he, he, yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard there. Yeah, yeah you gotta yeah. have to like corner yourself, let them take spike. Once you hear the plant, go yeah. in for the put. There's no, I mean, like by the book, that's just uncomfortable. Yeah, that's a hard play, especially where he gets that pick mid because it's like, okay, I'm already in the open here. Right. What can I do to actually help me kind of play a good angle there? And unfortunately, it was just like there's so many angles there to play that it was hard to actually get that one. You want to play? Oh, nice. Force coming out. Reply. Great. Oh, great pick. Helios gets one. Does have the knives? Orbital strike coming in. Oh, great light click. Gets the gun. Man, playing aggressive off those mollies and those orbital strikes are just never expected. Oh, he gets wow. on the drone. He gets four. Unreal. He knows the sky is here. The sky doesn't know how fast they are. Doesn't know how close they are, how short. Gives it away with those bullets. Now it's a fair 1v1. Goes oh. to the beacon. It's not there. Ace Helios for the game. Wow, what a top five. Yeah, it seems like Twin Falls had a lot of just big moments there. So it was pretty huge back and forth. And of course, we have the Idaho Army National Guard here, which Idaho Army National Guard is a proud supporter of Boise State Esports. Top players are presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impre impressive critical thinking skills into real time. With more than 10 jobs offering a 20K bonus and your degree of choice paid for, the Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out at twitch.tv slash iGuardGaming. Of course, that's a great sponsor of us. They're here today as well helping out, so we'll see that. And Great first game. I mean, we saw a lot of back and forth. It was kind of skewed sco uh, you know, scoreline-wise in terms of like you know, 13-4. But overall, I think if Drum can kind of make those key changes, especially that defense and stuff like that, those rounds that are really close in terms of those 2v2s, those 3v3s, if you can kind of you know, focus down those rounds, I think it's a lot closer game in, you know, on our hands in terms of those. And I think one thing that would help is um, having a set a sentinel. Yeah. Having a sentinel to reply against that triple initiator because mm. you can have – so many more angles that are watched more loosely yeah. by having a Killjoy that Absolutely. has up some swarms, some turrets, maybe some tripwires, mm. um, a nice wall or a slow, because really what they had was a really swarming just yeah. just absolutely overwhelm, and it was that every time. So. Yeah, and I, I also think that when it comes down to it, like when you have that Sentinel, especially like Killjoy or something like that, uh, on these maps, you don't really know where they're going to play a lot of these times. So if you can just have that one anchor in terms of like a B site or an A site, I think that helps a lot because then you can have like three to four members on that side of defense where you think they're coming, where they're kind of showing their utility. Right. But then you have that one anchor available, so you can at least slow them down enough to where, okay, now you know I get one to two maybe, or at least stall them long enough for my team can get there. So I think a Sentinel could be a huge kind Definitely of difference so. there. Yeah, especially considering how difficult retake was Yeah, exactly, sides. yeah. It, it, there, the pushback was just not there. Once you had taken space, they mm -hmm. were kind of walled up into heaven. Yeah. Like smokes were good. We had good mollies. We had people that got a lot of verticality and could mm. kind of jump heaven yeah. and end up deeper than expected. Absolutely. And so I think we're going to go to a break here after this game one. It was a great game one. We're going to take a quick break here, so don't go anywhere. And we'll be right back after this. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by.
NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Welcome to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena, and you're watching our coverage of the Idaho High School uh, Esports Showdown as the top high school gamers compete to see who has the stuff this year. I'm your host, Brandon Rodhots Kozigansik, and joining me is, of course, my co host, Greg Olsel Smith. And, of course, great game one. I mean, like I said, we said it was one sided, things like that, but at the end of the day, it was very close. Uh, what do you think is kind of going to be the, the, uh, the factor here on Breeze? Because it's a kind of a different sort of map comparatively to the others. Definitely so. I think yeah. that's actually a really nice follow-up. Mm. Um, if Jerome picked that, then you guys understand what's going on. Because uh, what we had a lot of was just forcing into space. Yeah. And it was okay for Helios and Co. to mm. force into angles. And if you don't like it, just kind of keep walking. Um, you can't do that on Breeze. It's so open. It is such a grassy playground yeah. for these ops to come out. So I hope we see more double op comps. I hope we see a lot slower taking, mm -hmm. watching all the corners before you walk in on them. It's going to be totally a pace change, or we're going to see a repeat. Yeah, I think the one thing that we've talked about also is the Sentinels going to be huge here, like a chamber or something like that, because there's a lot of flank like options here. Especially if you're going to that A side, there's a lot of flank behind you that you always have to kind of be aware of, because it's kind of hard watching that while holding sight here, because... Breeze is a map where you can play it so many different ways. There's literally, you can play where you just play retake. You just, okay, A, we try to get a pick. We didn't get one. They're coming A, we leave site. Okay, all five of us go back in for the, you know, the post plant. So I think it's going to depend on who kind of has that style. And I think it's the biggest thing is going to be kind of choosing what style is working for you and actually kind of apply it, right? Because there's Definitely a difference so. between kind of, well, what's working? Okay, well, can we do it again? No, we're not going to do it. We're kind of, you know, switch back and forth here. But I think... The consistency of like, okay, well, do we want to retake here? Do we want to really hold it? Like, what do we want to do? And I think that's gonna be the big factor of this game. Yeah, no, I know. We, I know we talked about this before we got on. Mm -hmm. um, Ascent basically just has into the middle, yeah. outside, one, two, yeah. maybe both, mm -hmm. and that's it. But Breeze has so many more options with that tube. Yeah, exactly. You have the kind of the long, long on B, the short, long on B, <laughs> the mid on yeah. B. You can force all the way through Nest and get to the back if uh -huh. they're watching too deep on A because there's so much space. Yeah. It's just so – it's not all the way to Fracture, but it's a very much more – Oh, well, a much more varied game. Um, with all that open space, you've got to have those Sentinels that can cut this down. You've got to have those controllers. I love this pick on the Viper for both teams. Yep, Viper huge. is a must for Breeze. Absolutely. Must, must. Um, I love Sky just because I'm a Sky main. Um, I love seeing Chamber. His yeah. Headhunter is so much bigger here on both A and B. Uh -huh. His Tour de Force is so much bigger here, both on A and B and mid. Um, the Reyna is nice, and it looks like we're very comfortable both sides on Reyna. Uh, also, just winning those duels is huge. Definitely. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is, you know, a lot of 1v1s are happening here, and that means Reyna's going to be a lot of strength, because if you have those 1v1s and you win as Reyna, even if you take a lot of damage, you can just heal back up, and you're basically back up to full. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing here. And I, I really like these, like, both adaptions of these team comps. Both have decided, okay, Breeze is definitely a different beast of a map. We actually play a little bit more traditional comp-wise. And so they have those, you know, that chamber, and especially that Viper, which is kind of... The most played controller in this yep. map, for sure, being able to split those sites, especially that A site, it just makes it can take it so freely. So, 
really excited little, to see these angles. Got a little hot take for you. Mm. Bombi playing KO, um, it is a comfort pick because all of the AoE shots that ha uh, that KO comes with is mm. not effective on very open terrain, but because uh, KO was released about the same time Breeze was, a lot of people were comfortable picking those. That is a very hot take, because I do not agree with that. Okay. <laughs> I think overall KO's uh, option for this map is so huge because of his ult. His ult has the insane retake factor because a lot of that is going to be the utility. Interesting. Oh, and Solo gets one right away. Great flash. And that's another thing as well, this, this pop flash. Oh, she was flashed, actually. That's crazy. But I think a big thing here is the KO flash with the Viper Wall is insane, because you can always just flash through it and peek. Definitely. Oh, Solo. Oh, I'll be three here. Does get Ooh, one. Wow. Great try there, but Drum goes one round. That's the first time uh, already here. Starting the game off with a 1-0. It's a great start. I think Pistol Run is a big start in terms of kind of getting things going for your team. It really helps your momentum build up. But, you know, Pistol Run is very important. Now you get the full upgrades. If you win this round, you're up 2-0 immediately, and then, you know, you just go for the bonus. So Clean I think it overall just feels better here. And we're, I, I like the Marshall here, and Bobby, I've noticed a lot, Bobby's a big shotgun guy. Yeah, definitely an up-close kind of player. Yeah, he, I mean, we saw that with the classic yeah. right there, just... Oh, If that B space is there, here. take it, baby. He goes, ooh. Takes one, sees gets three, two. gets the two, jets away. Oh, oh what a fly! Oh. Takes the flawless four! Oh. And the sidearm switch for the jaw shots. Helios, the laser. Yeah, and so I think it's actually Twin Falls is up 2-0 now, by the way. Swapped. But he just had a great round there. Uh, that was insane. Honestly, having that uh, Sheriff from the previous Ooh. round to kind of swap to, insane one-tap there as well. So great job yeah. on the thinking there. And just dirty to, instead of going for the muzzleberry spray control stinger down yeah. the body, to be like, no, this this is a forehead shot yeah. kind of kind of distance. I say the Spectre ran a bolt, so he's like, I'm ready to go for the second yeah. one. No reload time. Not when you've got four faces on your mm -hmm. screen. Upper now has this Vandal as well. So we're gonna have the guns. Drum is ready for this as well. Kind of slowly checking here. Good mid control now, so this is kind of what Drum want here. I love this left to right split block. Great pick right away. And now they're gonna go to A, and A's wide open right now. We yeah. see. KO kind of Bombi holding this very far back of sight, but he has a oh, he has a bucky. The, the bucky. That's gonna be a big silence, I believe. I'm surprised he's not three. sprinting up two for yeah. this one. Oh, does have a good nade too. The only problem is it's gonna be really hard for him to get kind of close here. Yeah, definitely so. Yeah, it's got a little bit awkward. He's got to push straight in there, all backside. That headhunter should be up top. Oh, they upper. take him. Upper takes one on the Kelso, looking for that other one. They're absolutely cornered. Get into a better positioning, but one's coming across the cat here. That door is going to be open spot. pretty soon. No, they don't go for the door. They're not looking for a pinch at all. They're watching the same angles here. This Ooh. retake, it's got to be flawless. <laughs> Takes one. <laughs> that Spectre me. sometimes is really hard to hit the long it's range. It's a lot of screen time for and sure. And Drum get their first one. That's a big round to win, of course. You know, we've, we really talked about it every cast of, okay, that third round comes, you definitely got to win that one. You have your Vandals, you have your Phantoms, yes. you got to yes. have that advantage. You got to win that round, too, because mm -hmm. if you don't, you know, you have another save round. Next thing you know, it's 4 0, and it doesn't feel that good. So, great round. And I really liked uh, Drome's kind of taking mid approach. They took all of mid. There's no one holding mid. They got to pick mid and immediately went to A site, too. They were kind of posturing towards B, but they realized, okay, well, they probably just, you know, rotated towards B. They're fast rotating, so they analyzed that and said, okay, A is kind of our side to go to here. Starting to see a nice push straight onto the front of A, or at least considering it. Thought about thinking about it. Looks like they are just trying to see how much y'all talk before I see something happen. So, <laughs> sliding right to B. And this time, uh, Twin Falls is actually holding that A site with those three here, and yes. Jerome is going to the two site. Definitely got to make sure they ca uh, check that verticality here, since last time Helios kind of got him on oh that one. Oh my gosh. He's totally changed positions, though. Oh, nice Ooh. shot. He's ready. And they walk right in one at a time. He takes the second oh, one almost. Pumps. Not quite. Has to switch to ult and doesn't even get a fire off. Yeah, didn't have, the ult, didn't have the ult pop, so it took a long time for the animation there. Ooh, but Hog Ooh. has a great play gets two. Actually, three. Ooh, Hog, that crosshair drooping a little bit. Has to 30 HP. He's reloading. Gets nice. four. Wow. And Hog played, you know, kind of sneaky there. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was, was playing around that pillar, kind of holding it down. And they didn't know where he was at well, so he peeked after they were on site there. 
since you know a lot of their focus was on Helios here. Pops the knives mid fight there. That oh, kind of was his downfall, rough. but the first shot was great there. Was but Hog had like I said, just had a great flank playing on this pillar here and just playing all these different angles. Had a great shot on that. That was an insane shot on that jump there. Yeah, it's always nice to, uh, when you peek someone, you see their ears instead of their eyes. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a free first first uh, first bullet. That feels good getting those too. Like you know when you like you're like yeah, nice. I that outplayed was him. Great I job, me. Him. Yeah. <laughs> Kelso can hold like this mid here. Hog dropping a quick one onto A just to intimidate that off. They're not worried. They're going straight to mid. Yeah. They're walking along this line here. And Drum kind of splitting. They have that chamber kind of playing that Lurker B here, which I'm a big fan of. Unfortunately, oh, the op has come out here. Oh, great crossfire. Kelso gets him through mid as well. Yeah, Kelso. It, yeah, that mid put, uh, aggression from A. Not even aggression, just yeah. presence. Ooh. You cannot surprise Kelso. A quick reload. He's ready for the next one. Upper's Get trying those. his best here. Following him back. Man, the fire. Upper is under so much fire. Oh, we did see him there. A little bit of eye contact. Vulnerable takes a little bit more damage. He's very low, but this man down. gets around. He doesn't have spike, though. They oh, don't need to chase him. doesn't have his sheriff anymore. He, granted, he had one bullet, but... Okay, plays oh, on smoke. deep hold. Right-click angle. He saw his gun. No. Oh, good try, good try. That was a I, great response. I will say, I think the biggest kind of hurdle that this map is going to have is these operators. The thing with Viper is once you have a Viper, it's really hard to stop these operators. Unless you're going to site, right? Because an op can always hold mid. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have any smokes. You don't have a brim. You don't have an omen who can kind of smoke that out there. So the only thing you have to play with is these flashes. And so you're to really coordinate, okay, flash out, then peek. Because if you don't, the op's just going to hold that angle and just get free reign there. Yeah, and there's more. Most maps... I'm going to be ambitious here. Most yeah. maps have like front to back ops. Yeah. This side to side op ability is actually pretty nice as well. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah, cave. Yeah. Yeah, we saw like three kills right out that doorway right there. Uh, ooh, Bombie might get a fantastic one here. Ooh, Looks like didn't that shoot it. Was, mm, Had the right down. idea. Oh, Bombie, great cross there. Helios gets another one. Bombie looking for another one in the right position for it. Helios with a little bit of a 90 cross. That's They're cute. On him. Oh, that's flash. Flashes really hard. Goes for the second one. They're Wheeling off of it. Yes, he. Kelso gets a chance to push oh. up. Might catch one. Oh. oh, still moving. Gotta have that counter strafe. Oh, the crouch. Oh, oh my gosh, he almost had the headshot that there, but just basically. Soul. Woo! Upper does win. That's a huge one to win there because now it's 3v4. His one bolt left of the two are to force, though. They do have a. 3v1 kind of on this A site right away if they can kind of push this and get this pick here. If they can move fast. But look, Twin Falls is not replying. They're staying strong. They're okay to play. Go down. Oh, and just, that's just what they needed here. It is. Now they're in the post plant. Oh, for a nice 3v3. A 3v2. Bombi takes a quick one with the Vandal. Oh, great. He's replied. That's the last shot from Upper, yep. so he's got to be down to the standard gun and sidearm. Oh. Sees two faces. Hog has to drop back down, go around the side, try to individualize here. He does have support, though. 2v2. Oh, Solo gets an off kill. Upper. Oh, and Solo gets another one. He's kind of terrorizing on this op here. Upper to the last man alive for the second round. Yeah, great least. try there, but great retake from Twin Falls there. Playing those operators to get those two picks. That's huge there. I was worried about their staggering in a little bit. Yeah, but same. They, they pulled it together. Um, we had, I believe it was Hog, wait nice and slow for that yeah. op from Solo to come in so they could do a push. Uh, he thought about jumping. Yeah. Took a nice pop over that yellow. Got a little scared. Back yeah. down. Here it is. Going to hang out a little bit. And then Solo comes in with the backup, and after that fire goes off, he knows that he can just yeah. begin the absolute hunt for upper. I'll say, Solo kind of had that static angle, and it means he's kind of just holding that angle, so if he does peek it, he's ready to go, yes. so he can't get flanked on the left yeah. side there. So. You don't want both your people walking. You want yeah. a nice rock and a hard place where there's a, 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 an angle that you try to use a uh, hog to force the other Absolutely. guy into. Absolutely. Uh, just good positioning. Oh, 100%. Solo watching this big yeah. open space that we talked about. Lasers yeah, and, the oh, and they're going to Viper this time. Oh, just go a little too early, though. So He's the so wall ready. is actually going to fall here. Oh, and it means that they don't have protection they, here from yep, the op. They've all got to back off here. They know that op is absolutely looming. It's going to hold just the same dot. Oh, oh so so a headhunter. Oh. It takes one to the body, but it's not enough. The quick mouse reset. Oh. Their angle fix was too good. Solo takes another one to that op. The See, op just yeah. fits like a glove in Solo's hand. Upper did a great job of kind of having that good flank there, but unfortunately, just didn't get the headshot. Ooh, Ooh let's get one. Hog kind of had to chase that one down. 
Looking to get some utility out and kind of push this back so you can get some some people watching his back. It's a good snake bite. Another one going in. Just going to hold this spot. Does have wall available as well and res. Yeah, a lot of options here. A nice wall so you can just get across. Mm -hmm. Definitely the move. Can also just go for a sprint and heal, but I don't recommend that. So the spider is kind of hard here because you can only play this close angle. You don't really have that long angle, and Breeze has so much fall off damage. So if you play that long angle, you're just going to have so much fall off there. Prestige Pog just kind of still playing this corner here. And now we're going to see the twin falls kind of. I call it the watch. They're just all looking around now. They're all just figuring out where the last one is here. Yep. Oh, it does hear him. Bombies right there as oh. well. Has his knife out. They both have their knife out. Wow. What? A, that was probably the fastest one v one or trade that we'll we'll see for a while. <laughs> that is that is true. Six one here for the side of Twin Falls. Drome is kind of, you know, it's hard with dealing with that operator. Like I said, I mean, the the wall was great there. They had a good they had a good plan, but the problem was is the wall didn't go up before they peaked. And the moment that they go down, the wall goes down, and it's really hard to actually push through that. Back to a stocked ult. Uh, economy from Jerome here. Do you still recommend going for the ult overload? Try to three stack for an easy. I mean, I think at this point you next? definitely need that win. Yeah, I think it's fine to go with those seekers and then on top of that viper's pit. You know, uh, mathematically speaking, yeah. If Jerome can really clutch it up here, really make a mindset change, really, really, you know, pop another Red Bull, then uh, <laughs> they can bring it to an even, well, an even half. Yeah, right. They have not lost. They've not gone down too far yet. Kelso gets picked right away. Hog does another one as well, so they don't have the Vibers Pit available, and the Empress does go down. Empress is down. They've still got that res on the board. So Upper does have an op, but he is if on that, the other side of the map. If that res can bring out Seekers. Last player oh, unfortunately, happen. the op got him again. Chamber without the Tour de Force, last one on the board. Upper, again, the last one alive. He plays pretty back sight. Ooh, he's clomping Ooh, around close. with the knife. Never walking uncontested territory with the knife out. Ooh, oh, oh. and Kelso kind of held that angle. It was Great so try close. there, yeah. And Twin Falls go up 7-1. And so far, I mean, definitely kind of looking more one-sided so far. But it's definitely not, you know, over yet for sure. Yep, yeah, that's very true. I think the biggest thing here is how can Jerome adapt? What are they saying? What are they thinking? Okay, guys, what is working? What's not? What's the biggest thing that we can kind of change here? Or what is the thing that did work? We have that one round. What can we reflect on? How did that work out there? So. Now we see another. And the, op, the two ops, like you said, you know, Greg, is the biggest thing is they're running those two operators, and they're definitely making a big dent in this kind of attack here from Jerome. No, they're really capitalizing on Ooh, it. Like that, that yeah. I see so much. It's got all the info. Viper's Pit comes down. I like that Viper's Pit. Really anchor in the space you've already taken. Oh, big pick right there as well. That is important because we do not have any other defenders on site and they're all, whether oh, they know it or not, wow, funneling great from one shot. spot, which is under fire. This is going to be a good ult. It does oh. not get rid of the Viper's Pit, so. And they're kind of peeking out of the Viper's Pit, just getting picked one by one here. Yeah, stay inside. That's your advantage. That's your high ground. Don't come down the hill. The ult is going to end. does not have silence anymore. And he's going to get that heal if he does need it. That pop flash is not going to be enough. They're Ooh. on the body. And Aces. Aces has the chance to finish. Oh, he sees. Oh, so close. The jump. The flick's not quite there. The jump is too good. The oh, reload wasn't wow. there either. Aces takes another one on a Kelso. Bringing it to a four kill. Just need to get four kills from someone. That's what it kind of looks like. I guess so. But that's a good round. I think that's a start, definitely, right? Definitely. You gotta, you gotta get something started over everything else it here. It was a different so. energy, and it may, it may have slipped, but they had the high ground for a little bit. Yeah, there. absolutely. Aces. And just a great job. Aces taking a lot of one v ones too. Playing these good angles, not playing these kind of different angles we can be seen from so many different spots. So just playing one at a time, mm -hmm. doing a great job there. And now it's 7-2. They definitely want to win these next three rounds if they can. That's obviously more than ideal, but I think, you know, if you get two at the very least, it's probably a good spot. And Viper's Pit being popped right away. Now do they push it? Upper gets a pick right away on the bomb reaction. That's a great start. Hog is kind of watching inside. That's a snake bite inside the Viper's Pit. Can bring those orbs down. Just keep watching this wall. Very intimidating. They're going to walk from it. They've got a Ooh, man in mid. Upper Ooh. gets another pick. Upper with a great one. 
Upper started playing aggressive with this operator, and it's definitely making a difference right now. When upper is the last person on the field, that yeah. op is not the. You can't laser an angle. Ooh. Playing aggro and catching these off angles is the move. Solo almost catches a close op. Not in a great position to keep playing that now that they know he's got to back up. That op coming out, hoping for another one. He's too thin. He sees the hands of some more. Oh, he actually had him there too, but you know, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. You the leer is out there. Yep. Yeah, right there. Good placement. Oh, and upper with a 4K looking for the ace. Wow. Seekers come out. They do know where he is. <laughs> it's so, he's not going to get it. I want him to get this ace, but he's not in the right spot. Uh, I, I did over here oh, the comms, which I do like. Is I don't want the ace. Which I think they meant they were trying to give it to him or something like that. Like, oh, ace, ace, ace. But I think it's a good call from upper yes. there of, hey, we got to win the round first. Win con first. Love yeah. it. Ooh. But upper they is flanking Hog this. Hog is going to take one on to Gunrunner. Upper could get the ace here. If he does upper. hold, Hog is actually going to go around. Hog is going to move around. Upper could go on the hunt, but it's not going to happen. His job here is to Contain. beat that stone wall. Yes. Yep. And Boy. as Blazer moves around. Hog gets three. Not bad. Ooh. No, not okay, wrong. he wanted to go mid there, but... Yeah. Good plays. Good moves. Yeah. And I, I, By both teams. And ex oh, dude, I just. I'm. All I have to say. Yes. All I'm saying is, is you just gotta get a 4K if you're drum here. One one player just gotta get a 4K and you're ready That's to all go. It takes. And hey, you can rotate through. We've just saw <laughs> it. It's, it's two now. Someone else now. If you don't want to take your one every time, just take get your four. four. Every uh, yeah. Yeah. You gotta rotate. Like, your turn. Okay. My, your turn. Okay. Who's up next, drum? Who's gonna yeah, pop yeah, I would off? Say, yeah. Maybe they've got a Wii Fit board that back there that they're <laughs> passing around. Just the ultimate pro controller. It's true. They're like, hey, give me the Guitar Hero next, cause I need to take my four. <laughs> okay, here and drum. Hey, they're on a two two O spree here, so not that bomby. Playing very. Definitely close. need these two rounds if they can. Ooh, I'm Ooh. surprised there's not a judge in his Great hand. Peak. Great peak. Great peak. He had the spot, but Prestige Pog. Pog making it. Oh, he's in the back corner. Dash is through. Oh, that dash was just a little yeah, bit off. a little too early. Oh, they're coming in like a storm, taking two on some. And Kelso. Ooh. Ooh, great Ooh. shot there. Good spray control, bringing it back. Kelso trying to get another one. They're sending in the initiator. Does not get the concuss. Gets Might it on Hog, up. though. Oh, sees one, but not where he was looking, so he moves back down. They're coming back Ooh. around. Oh. That was like one HP there, so. That is not the angle. This op misses a little bit. Wall's got to go up. Now it's a 3v3 here. So playing aggro, staying loud. Prestige gets another one. <laughs> hey, get his four. Get his four. You, okay, you can't jump that wall. I was going to say, well, that was a cheese. Prestige is on it. Needs his four here. That secures the round. Prestige, let's see it. Oh, oh no. Got his three, though. Three's good. Kelso. And then they just need to play this post plan. They have lineups, it looks like, They've here. They're, Ooh, they're, an upper they're out one. of time. Well, they didn't quite get their four, but they got their three. Prestige Pug did a great do. job there. I will say the biggest thing is checking that left corner there, but she just pugging that entry. Yep. Big deal. Because now you stop any forms of cheese of being able to get more than one. That so could have been a three there. collateral right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. That was a good check. Uh -huh. And I think having that, because there were good checks on the other side too. Yeah. It's not like we had two people like mainlining and then uh -huh. one guy had like, uh, you know, a convenient look over. Yeah. They actually split right from it. They mm -hmm. did not let the 50 50 happen. Absolutely. And now it's 7 4. It's like we talked about. I mean, if they can go 7 5 here, they're in a pretty great spot That's for this defense bad. here. And I think the biggest thing is Jerome has found their stride and they're kind of repeating. They're kind of getting to that A site, playing that A site fast. So I think they're doing a great job of kind of figuring out what works for them. Although Helios does have the knives pops, which is very scary. Got to be careful about that. Ooh, Hog a little bit overwhelmed. Does a good job back oh. off and they chase him down. Hog gets two. two. Yeah. Wow, was that? Oh, but Ace, Ace takes two in retali retaliation there. These activity feeds. Everyone's on doubles. The Empress comes out. Solo Mine looking planted. to cue it down fast. Got Ooh. that ping just in case there's a Upper. blind. Ooh. That's it. Solo's playing an insane oh, angle there. You got to be goodness. really quick on that one. Solo, you got to be just razor sharp for that laser thin angle. It's Ooh. not quite going to be there. 1v3. Can Kelso do it? The Empress is still on the field. Upper. Going to be seen by Kelso. Oh, good TP. Excellent TP. Now in the position for it. And great angles there. And Drome, 7 5. It's kind of like we said. I mean, went on a. I think it was a 4-0 spree at the end yeah, there. It was 7-1. It was. And they brought it back 7-5. So Drum is definitely feeling some momentum here. And I think they know that, hey, you know what? We're in a spot. We can do this. We can, let's try to go to a game three here. Now, to me, the biggest thing here is how are they going to attack? You know, how is Twin Falls going to kind of approach this? We saw this last time. If what, what kind of worked was them kind of overloading a site, playing that Viper, that Viper Wall down and playing off that. So we'll see if Twin Falls kind of realize that of, okay, well, maybe we should try some rushing there. It kind of works oh. pretty well there. So. Especially uh, these teams on the pistol round. I yeah. 
We've swapped colors. It's back to pistols. They are going to be hard pushing for sure. Absolutely. And look at that stack on B. We got one straggler coming in, but five seconds are on the clock for. I would not be surprised if I saw just an absolutely rushing B right on to Hog there. Yeah, no. it looks like they're going to walk, though. But the thing is, is, there's only one here. Yes. It is literally only the Viper. It is thin spread. So if they do get Blazer, it's going to be pretty hard for them to retake here. They're going to wait for the wall to go down, and then you're going to see all of them right here. Ooh, that dash. Oh, great job from Kilios. Making sure to use that, you know, that pen, too, the high pen of the Sheriff. Rotate coming in. They saw some noise from upper. Oh, we actually good I think he tagged him, it. yeah. I think that was. Okay, now it's just the post plan here from Twin Falls. Ooh, upper gets a pick, which is just what they need. They're in a nice little positioning there. I like that side sight watching the wall. Kilios gets another. Ooh, oh, great a flash. Good flash. It's 180 really well, but coming back to Takes one. Oh, Almost so much damage, though. He's one, he's one. Has a leer available. Got that leer. Not going to. Yep. Is going to push it. A good move. And great job. Excellent. Way to use Excellent. your utility right there. Solo just, you know, has that leer available. Peeks out. Gets that one. That's a huge pick to get because I mean, it's a first round for pistol. So should be able to buy now and have that gun advantage here for the second round. Now, if you're Jerome here, do you force, though? Do you think it's that close where it's worth it? Or do you think, you know, we save here? No, I think it's worth the force. I'd say go for it. Yeah. Try to try to push their step off a little bit. You and don't want them to get comfortable with the idea of, you know, of, you know, buy, win on the save, mm. bonus. I also think it's the biggest thing here is the difference between these and other maps is you can kind of play those long angles with marshals and actually outgun those specters if it's a long angle because those have such a huge can. ball off. So if you have a marshal, you can play with that. But it seems like Drome uh, going to the safe play, which, you know, is also very fine of just playing those classics and saving. Yep, play the long-term game. Pug with a good wall right to start. Gets a lot of rotation information out. So we see Jerome just sweeping the field. Going to corner him in. We might see the first good flank of this round, of this half. <laughs> and, yeah, we're going to see Blazer. Hey, he's going to come back up uh, there. He's yeah. like, ah, that's, I'm getting close, but that's a little too scary for him to back up. They are. They cleared so much of the field, but they're worried there's a rotate. They moved yeah. over to B. It was quiet for a little bit. That's just a good play by Twin Falls. If they can take Upper with his back turns while he's showing off this skin, it's a nice skin, but is it worth the win con? I don't know. I know he's trying to maybe kind of listen here, but oh, Dash goes through. Push goes in. It does get Ooh. slowed though, so they know he's there. They do. But they gotta be close back side. He's a shorty, I think. Oh no, he has classic. The plant and they oh Upper. Oh, this is the smoke. That wow. was great. That great was just, shot. That yeah. was just understanding the default because that was really protected on both sides. Ooh, upper holding the angle. I think he only has like two bullets left maybe. Ooh, a 2v2 here. An awkward position for Twin Falls. A good flash, but it's 180 completely. They're going to play onto it. Helios is low health, but all they need is time. They don't need to be pushing this. They can walk back. Upper gets another one. That effective 2v2 is being brought down as we see more people from Twin Falls moving in. So they're able to take it. Bomb beyond the Blazer Rifle. And not too bad for a save run. They had all classics there and things like that yeah. of that sort. So I think getting two there is probably, you know, that's not bad. Nope. You're going to have two, you're going to have three this round that either they upgrade, which looks like they're doing. So if they do lose this, if Drone does win this round, Twin Falls Eco is going to hurt pretty bad. And I think that's where you have to kind of worry about, okay, you know, we gotta, this is going to be a huge round to win here. So. And I think Drama, you know, they should get their confidence here for this one defense round. We saw it last round, you know, last half on attack. They just took their one to two rounds, and then after that, they kind of popped off there. So, overall, great job. Exactly. Twin Falls did a good job of attacking, of course. Cannot sell that short at all. Getting those picks that they need. And Upper's holding this mid. He's probably the guy for the job, but he... Oh! Okay. Very low. Still oh. holds it, though. And unfortunately, he's got caught in that U-till. Now we see Twin Falls is all taking taking mid here. Jerome holding tight on A site. Go one aggressive on the up front. Holding that wall. Going to go to try to watch this mid. It's going to be a B push from Twin Falls. An absolute pack. All five moving in. They have no kind of heal and their jet is low. A nice little bit of a, a side angle from Gunner Runner. But mm -hmm. if they, with so many people, it's not even a 50-50. So that's that wall is going to be vital. Oh, oh good nice but What a return. The knife out was not the option, but absolutely swarmed on that first one. Blazer rifle taken as well. This is a good look for Twin Falls. Absolutely. Owning the site with a wall up to defend. Ooh. Jerome has one good push onto him. 
Pug making some damage. Aces and Prestige Pug looking to come on strong against Chamber there to take damage onto KO. Finally a kill onto Aces. That wall up is nice. Jerome's got an uphill battle fight here. It's almost out of time. Wow, and Kelso, yeah. And that was a, just a great round from Twin Falls there, playing that mid control. Did kind of catch out upper right there, trying to get that pick mid, but unfortunately he was ready for it. They got caught in the util there, and they kind of trade that way. So got to be careful about that. I definitely think the big importance to that round was uh, after they had taken sight, which it was just kind of lucky that they took sight as quickly as they yeah. did because there was only one person there, uh -huh. but that they shut down that retake so quickly. Yeah. Because you could have had that, uh, and they were already under fire by mm -hmm. that chamber in the back, I believe. Um, being able to shut that down with a wall and being able to post everybody up on the side moved them into post plant much quicker than yeah. they would have if that wall wasn't there or if people were Yeah, and I think, behind. you know, when you have two down as well, it's huge. You know, you're Definitely. trying to retake Definitely. three versus five there, and it's kind of hard with those numbers. Ooh, Blazer Rifle has got the right idea. Oh, Not going to quite execute. Smoke, though, yeah. Solo takes him out. Gunrunner replies on the Helios. Oh, the reload. Oh, that reload is rough. Bombi takes him because... Of that reload. Yeah, so Twin Falls is playing just really aggressive. B with the jet dash immediately. So they have the KO ult as well. Kind of using that great utility right there. They've got it on lockdown here with that KO ult. Oh, Pug Pug takes Pug gets a one, yeah. smooth one on a Bombi, bringing all that utility back. We start to see it. A nice slow onto the body so that there's no respawn one solo with remaining. a quick one out of midair onto Pug. Hogmeat following it up onto upper. A 3v1. Jerome is looking rough here. Aces. Got to play through this wall. All he's got is an op. You can't 180 that Leer, but you can shoot it down. Doesn't quite play off that Leer. Looks like they might be looking for an exit. Looks like they might be looking for an extra one. Oh, Aces, oh, so close. Oh, good try there. Does get, you know, a one shot there for the half, but... It is the Marshall, so yeah. a shoulder shot does not send him home. Need two for those. And like that, uh, Twin Falls is up 11-5 here. Drum going to kind of be looking out for any round they can at this point to kind of maybe get something crawling back here. But Twin Falls doing a great job of attacking here, playing in sync, and, you know, kind of using that utility together, of course. But no ops so far either from no. Jerome. I, I don't know if they've been able to afford it either, though, because that buys has been kind of Definitely. all over the place, so you don't know about that. But they actually do have the uh, two to force up, so maybe that will be kind of the change they need here. Yep, and it is popped. Something to consider for sure. I'd like to see those Seekers come out yeah. in, a, in a post plant. Ooh, Upper gets one right away. That's what we kind of talked about. They own that mid territory. Can't quite move. Upper TP'd away, too. So mm. Seekers are coming out as well. Can you kind of talk them out? Yeah, those early Seekers. Ooh. You have to follow those Seekers up, so we start to see them tighten in a little bit. Just hold the angles a little closer. That smoke is nice. Let's them kind of set up the crossfire they're looking for. Maybe get Blazer a little deeper Ooh, in. Oh, they're going on day. That's the move. Look at the flank, though. Reyna has a huge flank. Oh, Reyna. Gets one. That Leer. Gets two. And the bomb. Yeah, the spike's eight. down. But the thing is, the other two teammates are still on B. So he's just going to hold this 1v2. Great Empress proc. Oh. Dropping the Empress. Gotta Another be careful here, though. Doesn't quite play off it very quick, so he knows he's not right around the corner. Could play aggro onto that. Not going to look for One it, though. Let's him take oh, it. Oh, and great cross there from Blazer. 1v3. Twin Falls Jet has a lot to fight. One. Not going to happen. 30 seconds left. Huey's looking for another one. Oh, denies. 1v1 could clutch this. Spike is right there. Ooh, he oh, he knows where close. they are. Yeah. He knows. Aces. Watching the right angle, too. It is all eye contact. Oh. The forward dash with nine health. The verticality. I don't know if that was intentional. Finally takes it. Huey's for the ace. A nice slow ace, too. Yeah, I mean, Matt maybe the upcharge was just to catch him off guard. Keep him on their toes. Yeah, he's like, oh, whoa. And then, yeah, yeah actually, whoa, you know, he's put peaks on you. Yeah, exactly. So, great job there from Helios. Huge clutch there, of course. Look at that. Updraft for style points. Doesn't even look. Pops out right to Yeah, the they were both so low, too, because Aces oh, couldn't get that goodness. last. I think his, uh, the healing did fall off if he did have it, so... Uh, now it's going to be game point here for Twin Falls. So it's going to be 12-5. Very close now. This is game, you know, make it or break it here for Drum. Definitely so. You've got to win it or you're going to lose, you know, everything here. Everybody so. needs their yeah. one on this one. No mistakes allowed. Mm -hmm. Pug hopefully has someone to watch their back here. It looks like it's a scatter. Calling in that for that reinforcement, guys, I just saw. It's three one. of them. Ooh, whoa. Oh, that was 
really close. Had it lined up a little bit, but it was a little just too far. It's just not the gun to be playing off against an operator at that distance with that kind of focus. Here, here comes, yeah. In with the squad. Oh, a good Viper's Pit right around the plant spot. Wow, goes heavy. Upper takes two. Looking for that third one. Sees it. Those tracer rounds just hand it over. A 3v1 is something he'll take. They're looking at 2v3, and they're, already, really they're off, both yeah. on site. Solo. <laughs> yes, and look at that crosshair. It's a long one. It's it's pretty big. But it works out. Hey, I tell you what. It works. Okay. Kelso. Empress Proc. Oh, oh has a great angle. Catches one's ear. Oh, and the second one, there's no communication. This third one knows, but it's a little awkward. <gasps> oh, the line of two bullets. Can't do the job. You want to play? Let's play. Ooh, Tour de Force last going to be. Tour de Force looking to just close the game. Absolutely on the hunt. And I don't think they have enough time, so I think time. Twin Falls is going to take the series here. Going to move on to Grand Finals, so congratulations there to Twin Falls. Great game overall. Definitely so. Absolutely. I mean, that was a great back and forth there. And I, I mean, for a little bit, the attack was pretty close at the end of the first half, 7-5, after going up 7-1. So definitely had an opportunity there for Twin Falls. Kind of just played it well at the very end there and kind of closed the game out on that, on that offensive side. Yeah, we definitely saw a creep back there in the return yeah. trying to come back for it. But Overall, great game, though. Definitely. I mean, I like to see a lot of the aggression that Twin Falls kind of had. And, of course, uh, Boise State is always looking for talent, players, production, and broadcast talent. Top talent can earn scholarships as well. So sign up today by visiting boisestate.edu slash esports for more information. And so you can always check that out and kind of see if you fit the team and stuff like that. We would love to see you and, well, maybe a new worker as well. So oh, yeah, you can run the desk but with us. But now, now we have to kind of talk about what we usually talk about, and that's kind of the top, the yeah, ICCU yep. player of the game, which is a big factor here. And it's going to be a little different there. We're seeing they're give us three options here. We have to kind of guess who it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I would definitely think I think Helios is up there. Uh, the Jet definitely had some huge pop off moments, huge clutch moments as well. Yep. So I can definitely see that kind of being a big playmaker there. Uh, I could see Kelso in that first game, kind uh -huh. of going pretty well with that chamber and stuff like that. But I would say Upper. Upper had a, a consistent kind of play there. Had a lot of good entry. Whenever he was with the team, we saw it on the KO the first game for a second. He had a lot of insane entries there. Had a lot of good sheriff kills too. On just kind of taking sight right away here. I so think we saw some really good stuff from yeah. Hog as well. Yeah, so I'd agree as well. This first one is going to be Yeah, had some great clutches there. Had some like had like three aces oh, in the series. Oh, laser so. aces, uh, an absolute IGL. Um, some good stuff. We saw Pug with the Leer a lot. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, overall, I think the biggest thing is the Jet. Yeah, Kelso as well. He had a great job in the first game. Had a lot of good ops as well. And had a great picks, as, you know, with that chamber. And, you know, kind of going through it. A lot of great overall, I think, teamwork. But also, I think a lot of individual play definitely shined here for sure. I think, you know, when things yep, kind of get so. rough. Uh, we, like I said, we saw a lot of 4Ks, a lot of 3Ks coming both sides. And now that Bombi actually had a lot of good performance too. So... I think out of all three of them, I think it'd be Helios just for overall, I think just like insane clutches. I mean, over at the end of the day, had like, what, three aces in the series. So I definitely could see kind of those being that. And of course, the player of the game is brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes a team more successful, just like Idaho Central's healthy members achieve financial success. And we will see who the player of the game is soon. And I, like I said, I think... Great three options there. I mean, both teams as well played very well. I think, you know, everyone kind of had their moment today, too. A lot of options where it was 3Ks out of nowhere, you know, 4Ks, 3Ks. So a lot of great job there. I think everyone got a shine, of course, on the stage. It's always different kind of playing on a stage, you know. Feels a lot pretty cool overall, I think, you know. Of, okay, well, I got to play in front of a crowd and stuff like that. So always fun. And, of course, yeah, Helios is the Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game. Had multiple aces. So overall, great job. Had some crazy moments here. Just like this one, playing on top, playing cheeky moments. and Very, very deserved, I'd say, at the end of the day. Especially a big part of this, you know, win over Definitely so. No, Helios definitely carried his own. Picked up, yeah. picked up some ones here and there. Um, I like how you say, though, that uh, they kind of passed the 4K around every once in a yeah, while. Yeah, they it, did. They, everybody really got their value in. We saw uh -huh. a lot of good value from people. It's just the nature of having a triple initiator and triple duelist kind yeah. of comp stack play style mm -hmm. that leads you to have so many ace capabilities. Absolutely. And like I said, I think a lot of 
almost everyone individually kind of had their time to shine. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of moments where, you know, it, whether it be utility, it doesn't always have to be like the 4K, the 3K. It, you know, it could be the utility. It could be the flash. It could be like, you know, the retake ult. It could be stuff like that. So I think everyone today had got a show. And, you know, Drum has, you know, nothing to be ashamed of or anything like that. They just had a great showing. And just, hey, you know what? We get back to practice and we'll get back to it. You know, we have a lot to work on. And we can kind of figure that out and come back next time. Definitely so. Whereas yeah. now Twin Falls have to worry about the finals. They do, yeah. Twin Falls will be coming back next time in uh, Absolutely. an hour or so. We're going to be heading into, I believe, it is a uh, Rocket League coming up. Yeah, as well. So, you know, as we get ready for the next match, we can share the top five plays presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time with more than... 10 jobs offering 20K bonus and your degree of choice paid for. The Idaho National Guard is the best out there. And, you know, I like the series a lot. I had a great time. And so I think, you know, overall we can kind of get those top five plays there. And we'll take a short break with Rocket League coming up next. And so we'll, we'll show you these top five plays and we'll be right back.
NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure.
broadcast from the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. You are watching our coverage of the Idaho High School Esports Showdown. A top Idaho high school gamers compete to see who has the stuff this year. I am your host, Artie Nerdy Bird Rain, joining you back on desk. And with me right now is actually going to be Sergeant Flygar from the National Guard. Hello. I'm Sergeant Flygar. All right. So, how amazing is this? This is crazy. There, there's so much stuff going on. I can't even, it's like overwhelming how many screens, computers, the booth. It's, it's kind of unbelievable to be here. I, I mean, yeah, I feel like every <laughs> single time a LAN event is put on, it's always, it always makes everyone, even if you've been experienced with it, to just be in absolute awe. Every oh. time it ups the game, it just gets better and better. So my next question for you is, why is the National Guard interested in esports? Why gamers? So. I guess the biggest reason for me personally is Middleton High School is here. So Middleton High School is one of my schools that I'm actively in all the time, probably at least once a week or once every two weeks. And about three of them actually recognize me from my school visits. So I go over there, I teach classes, I let them know exactly what the National Guard is, how it's going to benefit them. As you know, Boise State has an esports team. So gaming is huge for them to feed into college gaming from high school. 
is kind of a no-brainer, and we're going to help pay for that high school as well. So it's, it's, it's like a, a two-for-one. They get to come play in high school, experience the guard with what college does as well. So it's, it's a big thing, um, showing them what the guard is going to do for them if they ever want to join the guard, um, work for us part-time, and go to college and get paid to go to college while we're paying for their college is, is awesome. Uh, me personally, I've never been to college, but I know quite a bit of people that have taken advantage of our actual educational benefits and have gotten bachelor's degrees from it. All right, so what I'm hearing is bills on bills on bills if you join the <laughs> National Guard, which is quite nice to hear. All right, so for tonight, well, this afternoon, since this is a very early broadcast, if you've been here since the first hour that we started, what are you hoping to see coming out from everyone across the board in these games? So, of course, Middleton's my school. I hope they take home some hardware big time. <laughs> Go Middleton! Um, it's a lot of fun. I'm hoping to see a lot of competitive games. I know there's some rivalries going on. They, they played each other in the districts, and they're kind of going back and forth who's winning. So just see some interest, um, being interest for them in the gaming world, and maybe some interest in the military as well. All right. Thank you so much for your time here on desk with me. If anyone has questions, are they welcome to come and talk to you about National Guard while this event is happening? Of course, anytime. I'm always available. So. All right. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to come over to Sergeant Flygar and discuss those questions with him. For now, we're going to send it to another break, and we'll be right back with some more Rocket League action in just a few minutes. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. from the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. You are watching our coverage of the Idaho High School Esports Showdown as the top Idaho high school gamers compete to see who has the stuff this year. 
I'm your host, Artie Nerdy Bird Rain, and joining me back on desk is Joe Tacky Chick Brow. All right, so our next matchup, Middleton and Wood River. There might be a little bit of a rivalry brewing, but we're gonna we're gonna turn our heads away from any possible like I don't know mudslinging that might occur. And instead, what are you hoping that these guys bring to the table that is different than what we saw in our first game? I'm fine with seeing overtimes. That, that's, yeah. that's not an issue, by the way. Overtimes are more than acceptable. Game fives are more than acceptable at this point. Um, but what I'm really hoping is that we see a lot of passing, specifically. Um, it's really exciting to watch all these cool solo plays happen, but it's even more exciting to see a really well put together passing play come together for all three players it's really just getting everyone involved and being excited for everyone is just a really unique experience all right well our matchup for our second game today in rocket league is going to be middleton and wood river going head to head in a best of five series no best of threes here tonight and we also have Doc's keys to the game presented today by Drop In Gaming. Those keys in particular are set the play style, understand rotations, play to follow up, and sweaty comms. Drop In Gaming is a pure, premier online platform for gamers who see competition. Play your favorite games to win cash prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you're new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your comp competitive gaming journey, sign up at Drop In Gaming. I'm very excited to see what these guys have. I, I, I'm going to be honest, they have a kind of high bar set for them. I mean, two back-to-back -back starting games in overtime. How yeah. more, like, it'd be more exciting if every game went into overtime. That would be a little painful for us. Oh, we yeah. do have voices, and we're, it gets very warm in here. It, it, it strains things, but we'll, we'll push through it. <laughs> However, I understand that, you know, going into overtime is also very straining for the players in general, but it is just so gosh darn exciting to see. Oh, it's super, super exciting. And honestly, I would be okay if we have no overtime as long as it brings us to a game five. Sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles, but getting right into it, we'll have to see what the players have set up for this time. The crowd is ready. Here we go. We have Elite Striker trying to steal his ball away from Bubbles. Bubbles off the wall, collides with one, one player in the corner, does not face them too much. Ball gets chipped into the back left corner. Milton's back there to the field. Ooh, Elite Striker coming in hot with the first goal of the game. Right off the bat, he sees the chink in the armor and takes the shot, nobody there to defend. And then an early start for Wood River. Going into this next 50-50, it looks like the better touch is going to end up going to Wood River. Demolition out onto Halo Thief from Run Noob, immediately causing a setback ball in the back third side of Militant. Trying to find a clear. They do get it to the middle third. Run trying to get it past. All three defenders can't quite do it. Triple commits can be punished, but sometimes they're hard to break. Ball in the back third of Wood River side of the field. And right now, both teams kind of gunning to gain off the bulk of the offensive pressure. Lots of back and forth still. No team really taking over the pitch yet. But it's more than possible that we'll see a more dominant threshold appear in the next three minutes. We have Run pushing this ball into the corner, but Bubbles takes it away from them, crossing midfield. Unfortunately for them, Elite Strikers waiting on the ground, passes it to Phantom, but before it can touch them, it is disrupted. Ball now heading back towards the midfield. Runs trying to beat out Bubbles. Bubbles backing up into it, sending it to the other side where Elite Striker from Middleton is waiting, grabbing it off the ceiling. They will lose possession. Phantom trying to keep it alive for them. Ball stagnating. Now finally getting pushed forward for just a couple of inches. Run will backpedal, get the shot on goal off the crossbar, but a double commit will prevent that ball from going in. Wood River playing a lot of defense right now, but keeping their net safe all the same. And now, finally getting their chance to convert out. Let's see what kind of play they go for here. Phantom trying to get this one off the back wall. Halo Thief comes in, can't find contact with that ball. Getting pushed away by Elite Striker. That's some physical gameplay. We don't normally see this early on. Coming in clutch, ball now on the back third side of Wood River. Elite Striker gets a shot in. The secondary touch, just awkward ricochet angle, does result in the ball going wide of the goal. Halo Thief now playing off the wall to themselves. Too many touches, and Phantom disrupts that play immediately. 
Fathom not quite able to connect, and they're resetting here now. They have to look for either a defensive opportunity to break out, or they have to look for a passing play, and we go for the defensive opportunity. But, but, Elite Striker is able to get past two on his own, forcing Wood River to throw the ball away again. We are hitting the two minute mark. Will Wood River find that back half boost and equalize this game? They are on the back third, Milton side of the field. Ball gets cleared out by Elite Striker to the midfield stripe. Halo Thief trying to back paddle as Elite Striker is just pushing forward with this ball. Off the corner, ball is saved by Astroy at the last second. Middleton looking to convert their pressure now as Elite Striker is in the corner looking for the passing play, but a good 50 from Wood River will keep it out. And now Wood River has to be looking for that conversion play, that clear to a defender that they can then use to create offensive pressure. Fathom pushing forward, unfortunately can't maintain possession for very long. Elite Striker comes in, playing it off the wall to themselves, plays it around one, but Halo Thief comes right back in, just push that ball away. Run hits the ball, gets the crossbar. Fathom comes in for the secondary touch. Neither one find the back of the net. Can run, find another opportunity. They will not ball. Crossing midfield, stripe. Bubbles racing forward with ball possession. Unfortunately, overdrives it, and Elite Striker turns that ball away. Now Wood River looking for a goal of their own to tie this series up. Passing play not quite able to happen. Good 50-50s from Middleton will slow it down in the corner. And now Bubbles has to find a way through these defenders. Fathom playing it off the wall, centering it up to Elite Striker, who pops it up over Halo Thief. Off the back wall, the crossbar being the saving, saving grace right now for Wood River. Halo Thief slowing down a little bit, looking to play it over Elite Striker. They get it over them. Will they manage to maintain possession? They will, playing it around two now. They just have to beat out Fathom. They collide on the 50-50 challenge. Bet Bubbles now racing back to try and get possession before Elite Striker can. And as this time winds down, definitely still enough time for Wood River to get back into this, but they have to start converting now because Middleton's defense has just been too far in the way all game. Bubbles gets it clear, but there's not enough follow-up, so it's dunked down at the midfield by Run. Pushing it to the back there to Middleton's side of the field. We are down to the eight second mark. Are we going to see a buzzer beater goal to take us into overtime from Wood River? They're looking for it. Ball now needs to stay in the air or this is the end of game one. And unfortunately, Middleton will walk away with a game one victory in this best of five series. And you can see here by our stats, shots on goal 100% in Middleton's favor. Boost use 67 and side control 61. However, I will say shots on goal. I believe there's only three in total. There's um, four. There was four, four in total? Okay, so it's a little difficult. Those are low numbers, so yeah. they, are, they are skewed. Yeah, and the fact that there was a low amount of shots on both sides does not mean that either side was kind of forced into their corner the whole game. It more so means so much of that game, easily three to four minutes of that game, was played in the midfield third. And so that just goes to say that this is, these are really close games. They're kind of decided by who's able to con kind of control that area the most. And at the end of the day, Middleton was the one that was able to convert the most off of their uh, possession. Do you have any advice for Wood River going into game two? I think in this next game, they just have to hit the ball with a little bit more intent, whether that comes from dribbling to flicking to a teammate or just straight up passing to a teammate or looking to hit it off the backboard. You just can't be banging it around the corner over and over again because that's really easy to knock out. My advice, honestly, would be to avoid some of the physical aggression that we see coming out from Middleton. There wasn't a whole lot of demos in that series, but there was a lot of pushing around, and getting you out of a passing lane can be a huge deficit to your team. Not as bad as being stuck on a respawn screen for 2.4 seconds, but it's still pretty rough to be pushed out of position. So hopefully they start looking for that and preventing that from happening as we go into game two. Already a one kickoff from Middleton, but not in a way that Wood River will be able to respond immediately. Luckily, a whiff from Middleton will open the door. And already, it kind of feels like the physical play has already started. We saw Middleton go for a bump on Wood River after the first whiff. And just like you were saying, Artie, already Middleton now two serious physical plays in the first 20 seconds. Right now, Middleton has very little pressure on them as they're carrying this ball forward. Lost possession, though. Bubbles will send it to the back third of Middleton's side of the field. Immediately popped and volleyed back at the mid. A double demo coming out from the Middleton players onto two of the Wood River players. Forcing respawns, allowing a lot of pressure to come forward. Du double commit on shot on goal. And a follow-up touch still getting saved by it by bubbles and the pressure is just too much after all that time 
This is the kind of offense that's going to break down defenses like this. We're not just looking for roll around kind of passes. We're making sure we're hitting it off the backboard. We're maybe looking for a few midfield passes, but we're making sure we're mixing it up so every shot has some variance to it. Let's see if Wood River starts to pick up on these trends. They have four minutes to rectify the situation in order to pull out and get in the lead. We have run, take out bubbles immediately. Lots of just gasoline getting spilled everywhere. Fathom pops the ball up, bubbles dunks it down. Looking for a shot on goal, immediately turned away. Looking for the secondary shot. It's volley to the midfield. Astroy elevates to send the ball to the side. Middleton only a minute and 15 into this game, already threatening match point, but Wood River still has so much time to respond, but they need to get this offense online and they need to get this ball out. Oh, so close to attempts from Middleton will be thwarted by Wood River defense. Halo Thief now looking to rotate back. Bubbles trying to get in position to prevent this ball from going in in the 50-50. Gets the better of the touch. Pushing forward off the side. Plays it around Elite Striker. Has the ball in the corner, but they need that midfield follow-up. It came just a little too late. Possession has been lost. Ball at the midfield in the favor of Middleton as Run pushes forward. Looking for a centering opportunity. Finds the pass back instead. Disrupted slightly, but Fathom still gets a touch on it. Great pop-up from Wood River. No one quite there to respond yet. Yeah, so close. Three defenders up. That would be the time to take a shot, but no one's home. And Middleton will get away with murder there. But Wood River back on the offensive half. And now Middleton is looking to convert. Bubbles sends the ball to the midfield. Plays it around one. Elite striker racing back in the corner trying to corral this ball. He's going to play it off the wall and leave it for a teammate. Now Fathom pushing forward into the corner. Centers the ball up, but the touch is not fast enough from Run. Midfield volley returned off the backboard, going for the secondary touch. Dumped down from Elite, taking out Halo Thief as Fathom Ball is going to the back side of the other. Oh my goodness, what a shot from Bubbles. Middleton, the overcommit was finally punished. You've got to be careful with those rotations. Yeah, and a poor shot from Middleton leads to an overextension on their half. Two serious mistakes. Very much countered by Wood River, and Wood River a sigh of relief for sure as halfway through this game about they're finally able to break through. We are now at the It's Complicated Tied 1 aside. Who's going to be able to find that extra goal plus one more to be sitting safely with a victory in this game? Bubbles gets a shot. It's going to be safe. Bubbles going for another shot. Gets a double commit on them. One of the Middleton players will pop the ball up. It crosses midfield. Now in the corner, Fathom has possession. Leaves it to take out the goalkeeper. But was that the right decision? It was as Run is managing to come in. Centers it up for a teammate. But it's going to be popped up by the keeper at the last second. Ball getting volleyed to the midfield. Goes over runner. Is this going to be a repeat of what we just saw as Halo Thief goes forward? The defender did rotate into position just in time. Halo Thief almost able to play round two and look for the back of the net there, but now Wood River has to play a little bit of that midfield game we just talked about. They have to try to get control of this play and a great touch. Oh, if he can get a mid, almost the opportunity there for Wood River, but they'll have another one here soon. Bubbles looking for a shot on goal. Does have it, but Run saves it. There were two defenders in that situation. The secondary touch is definitely necessary there. Got to get those rotations honed in in order to find that second goal right now for Wood River. Ball gets cleared to the midfield. All of Wood River's racing back, but Run has taken out Asteroid in the goal yet again, but it's not going to be able to be capitalized on as the ball just glides across that top, top goal box. High shot from Middleton isn't able to connect with the back of the net, and Wood River wasn't able to touch it either, so a little bit of some scattering there at front of the net, but now the play is beginning to develop once more at midfield, and Middleton wins out. Ball gets cleared back to midfield. Bubbles racing into the corner, trying to get possession. Ball in the back there to Middleton's side of the field. We're ticking down to the 32nd mark. Both teams have one goal. Bubbles has a great shot. Elite striker, though, saves it immediately. Run now pushing forward. Has possession, has to play to round one. They managed to do that. Can they keep the possession? They will not. Ball in the corner as one of their teammates comes in. Elite striker goes for the shot on goal. It's going to be a little too wide, and the follow-up touch does not find connection with that ball. Another opportunity and a great pass to the midfield. What a great heads-up play. Communicating and saying, hey, my teammate's mid. I don't need to hit this around. I can just pop it mid right now for the 90-degree pass. Finds the back of the net. What a great use of teamwork and communication 
That will ultimately put them ahead in the last eight seconds of this match, and the pressure is on Wood River to respond now. And disaster for them as they desperately wanted to take it to at least an opportunity in overtime. With that, Middleton will walk away with our game two victory. Remember, this is still a best of five, so Middleton is at match point, but we cannot count Wood River out of this just yet. Game three can be where we start to see this beginnings of a reverse sweep. Will it happen? Well, the next five minutes definitely are gonna be the deciding factor. Across the board, it seems like things were pretty equal that time in comparison to the last set of stats that we got to see. Middleton definitely showed up a bit more this time. Took a little bit longer to find their groove, though. Yeah, I definitely have to agree there. And there was the still the kind of scary situations on defense that I feel like could be responded to a little bit better. But the offense was, I think, a lot better. There was a lot more attempts to flick at the midfield or to just kind of make something else happen rather than just rolling it up the side of the wall, which I really appreciated. But at the end of the day, you have to have a consistent defense. Otherwise, it's not going to matter. Well, Wood River, that is the advice that Joe has for you on desk. And to our viewers and everyone who is here at the arena, I want to give a quick shout out to the Idaho Army National Guard, who is a proud supporter of the Boise State eSports program. Top plays are presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. With more than 10 jobs offering $20,000 in bonuses and your degree of choice paid for, the Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out to them on Twitch at iGuardGaming. Or, you know, you can come talk to one of the people that are currently here today. We will be heading over to Farmstead for game three of Middleton versus Wood River. Middleton leading 2-0 over Wood River currently, but both of these games have been one goal games now. Just the tiniest little adjustments from Wood River could completely swing the series. We'll have to see what they have in store for us this round. Bubbles saves Fathom shot on goal. Now trying to get the clear Wood River can't quite maintain ball possession. Fathom pops the ball up, a back pass to run. Is it going to be enough? It might be, but Bubbles elevates, sending the ball across the midfield, immediately responded to by Run again, playing it off the wall, looking for an opportunity to play it over Halo Thief. They managed to get it over them, but Bubbles with the bicycle gets the save. However, many of the players were forced out of position for that one. Ball hits the crossbar, though, on the shot, so that fourth man coming in clutch yet again. Yeah, and that whole play almost developed because of a triple command originally from Wood River. No one quite covering back post almost led to a completely new start for Middleton. Halo Thief pops the ball up, gets it over one, but can't get it past Fathom. Bubbles comes in for the follow-up off the backboard. Bubbles tries to get the secondary touch, but there's just too much pressure on them. Ball at the midfield. Fathom looking for an opportunity to send it to Elite Striker. Elite doesn't quite get the touch, so Halo Thieves managed to pop it up to Bubbles. Bubbles pushes across the midfield. Now ball on the back there to Middleton's side. Elite Striker again gets a touch on it, slowing it down as Bubbles and Halo Thief both collide. It feels like communication is breaking down a little bit for Wood River. A couple double and triple commits so far this say but it hasn't resulted in a lead for Middleton yet, so Wood River still has time to turn that around. We haven't even hit the second half of this game three. You're definitely right, they have time, but they need to fix something, whether it, whether it just be the rotations or just clear up the comms. We have Run pushing forward, playing around one. Can they play it around Asteroid? They cannot, Asteroid gets the save. Elite Striker, though, not giving up on this opportunity just yet. Takes a shot on goal. It is going to be eventually turned away. Bubbles has to elevate. Gets pushed forward. Halo Thief misses their touch on the ball. Fathom overruns it as well. So now Halo Thief has the opportunity to bring this one up the midfield, but has pressure put immediately on them by Run. Run loses possession. Halo looking to dunk it for Bubbles. Bubbles grabs it, but it's going right to Elite Striker, who's flying through the air. And 100% of the accolades for Wood River currently are five saves. A whole lot of defense played for them so far. Some of it set sketchy and some of it done really well. So we'll have to see if they're able to take the offensive pressure that they were just given and turn something into a goal. We have Bubbles trying to calculate where Fathom's going to take their shot. They do get the save. Ball's going to get cleared by Halo Thief. Elite Striker, though, waiting down by the goal, grabs it, pops it up here in the corner, trying to get it around one of the Wood River players. Sends it to Fathom. Fathom leaves it to the midfield to allow Runner to get possession, but Bubbles dunks it down. Elite Striker has to come in to push it forward to the back third of Wood River's side of the field. Oh, a great midfield pass by Middleton again. This time blocked by Wood River. Great time to get in the way. A double commit from Middleton. Oh, and a bad 50 off the wall. Could lead to an opportunity for Wood River, but not quite in the way yet. 
Fathom off the wall, dunks it down to Elite Striker. Does look like Halo Thief got a nose on it though, so it took an awkward angle. Astro saves, run, shot on goal. Now Bubbles pushing forward, has to play around Elite Striker. Elite immediately gets a nose on it, sending it back into the third, back third of Wood River side of the field. Run not giving up on this one yet. Bubbles sending it to the mid. Fathom immediately volleying it back. And here comes an opportunity for Wood River. Oh, the 50-50 is gone, that's fine. Defense picks it up. But at this point, being a minute into this game, 0-0, zero, zero, the pressure for Wood River has to start stepping in that you have to turn this game into a W, otherwise you are done with this series. Elite's aerial play, they end up dragging the ball down directly on top of Bubbles' hood. So now Run trying to pop this ball off the back wall. Does find the clear asteroid rotating back. Shot on goal, a little bit too wide. Bubbles now has an opportunity to get possession here, but they have to play it around all three members of Middleton. Can they? Elite just chips in and manages to push them away. Asteroid pushing forward now. He lets the ball into the back third on the Milton side of the field. Run, pops it up over Halo Thief. Goes for some great aerial play. It's going to hit the wall. They're going to dunk it down to allow Elite Striker to play it off the wall. He's going to look for a shot on goal, but it's going to be a little wide. Can Fathom get the second touch? They will. Milton finds goal number one. 21 seconds left in this game. Oh. Wood River, you can do this. You can find the one goal you need. You're looking for overtime at this point. You just need to honestly be the one making the passing play here. Middleton capitalizing on a disastrous triple commit from Wood River, but there's still plenty of time, as you mentioned, even at one second left on the clock. But Fathom will seal the deal, I believe. We'll have to see if any adjustments are made, but that great pass and that great follow-up from Fathom just absolutely punishing Wood River defense. We are now down to the last 10 seconds of this game three in our best of five series. Once that ball hits the ground, it, it's going to be GG's for someone, and it looks like it will be Middleton walking away with a 3-0 victory, dominating once again in shots on goal. Side control is pretty equal. Boost used also pretty gosh darn equal. Zero accolades to Wood River, but a well-fought game, all the same shots. Not there, but to say the least, it was still pretty even side control. Well, like you said, it just couldn't quite turn that offensive pressure that they did have in those small moments into goals. I think it honestly comes down to a thing you brought up earlier, which is that communication. Who is going to take advantage of that? Just open up those comms, make them sweaty like Doc says in Doc's piece of the game. They're really important, and that's how you can understand what people are looking to do. No one has ESP in this world. We can make believe we do. <laughs> we can have uh, BSU ESPN over here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, a well-fought game, to say the least. I think that was the only game of the series that wasn't a one-goal game. And it was pretty close to one-goal game in the last couple seconds anyway. But a well-fought game from Wood River and Middleton. But ultimately, Middleton had cleaner gameplay on this particular series. That is just some, the way the cookie crumbles. But before we close out this series, we do have to take you know our best guesses of the Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game. And we, I'm going to challenge you between the two. Okay, so we... There's six people, obviously. Right. We're, uh, we each have to pick someone different. Right. I'm not allowed to go with the same person. Last time, I just right. gave it all to you. So I will take a little bit of the pressure off, and I'll give my first guess. I'm sorry if I'm taking yours. It's going to go to Fathom. Fathom? I was not expecting that. Oh, man. I was kind of expecting to go with Stryker. And I honestly, if you're not going to take Fathom, I have to take Stryker. All right. There are two guesses for the ICCU player of the game. Am I right? Am I right? Please. Ah! All right, okay, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm a curse. So Elite Striker is the player of the game from ICCU. The, uh, the player of the game is brought to you by the Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes a team more successful, just like Idaho Central is helping members achieve financial success. Elite Striker is your Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game, and also Joe guessed right. <laughs> I'm a failure. <laughs> No, I can't blame you for Fathom either. It felt like he was really good in the offensive end, especially in that third game. It was all over what felt like the Wood River defense, but Elite Striker in the first two games was just in their face and scoring a lot of the goals early on anyway, so I just felt like he was a safe bet regardless. Yeah. I mean... I mean, who could blame Fathom getting it either? I mean, real. Fathom yeah. got two back-to-back -back goals very quickly. I think that's why my brain instantly went to them. No offense to anybody else, but when you do that, especially in the last 20 seconds of a game, it's kind of incredible. 
Well, as we get ready to close out this round of games, we are going to be sharing with you our top five plays presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time with more than 10 jobs, offering $20,000 in bonuses and your degree of choice paid for. The Idaho Army National Guard's best team out there. Reach out to them on Twitch at iGuardGaming. And we'll be back after this short break with some more Valorant gameplay. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure.
Now we're just two passive strangers who tried you like goodbye. 
Welcome to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena, and you're watching our coverage of the Idaho High School <laughs> Esports Showdown as top Idaho high school gamers compete to see who has the stuff this year. I am Brandon Red Hot's Cozy Anson, and joining me, of course, is Greg Old Soul Smith. And Greg, uh, we saw last match, you know, kind of a, I guess, one sidedness in terms of score, but a lot of back and forth going on here. Uh, these teams could probably be a little bit better matched up. We can kind of see that going. Uh, so I, I kind of want to talk to you about the pick and ban phase, right? Because pick and ban phase, is a lot of just comfort into it as well. So like this time we had Breeze banned from Blackfoot and then Middleton banned uh, Fracture. And I think we've seen that a lot in terms of just kind of banning that. Do you think that those are just newer maps that they haven't practiced that much? Or do you think it's like kind of a comfort thing they don't like? I think it's a comfort thing. Yeah. I think really those maps are really indicative of different play styles, yeah. actually. So Breeze, we see a really wide open map. Mm -hmm. um, it is a really complex map. We talked yeah. about this. There's a lot of options to go, but it's very open. Mm -hmm. I love describing it as just grassy fields for ops to play on. Yeah, that's true. Um, Fracture, on the other hand, is not. It's a playground for Breach and for you know moving really quickly through. We see a lot of Breach Neon. Um, and if you're not comfortable with tight spaces, you're going to want to get rid of that. Yeah. If you're not comfortable with open spaces, you want to get rid of the other one. Mm -hmm. So I think it really is just on the spectrum of uh, maps. Yeah. Those far ends kind of get shot down pretty quickly. Unless you have two teams that are really comfortable with one or the other and really want to go that way. And I think this kind of extreme commitment um, type of play style is why we saw this real domination in the last game taking turns. It's because yeah. it was full gambles and big commits. Yeah, because I mean, I think this map, especially when you're not practicing too much on it, you can definitely like, have a lot of momentum swings mm -hmm. there. And of course, we can kind of show out the uh, the rule set of the Valorant, which is a 5-5. It is a best of three. And uh, it is first to 13. And so you'll have a half time, of course, of 12 rounds. So that's always kind of the fun thing. And usually it's kind of, usually, I, like I said, I think today it, it might be a little bit more defense sided because I think attack comes into play here with the advantages once teams kind of, like they play a lot of together in terms of like utility and stuff like that. So I don't think attack is going to be the harder side in terms of all these kind of high schools and together as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a lot of defense sides. So I think if you can go like 7-5 on attack or something like that, you're in a pretty good spot because then you're ready for defense ready to go. So Yeah, and I'd really like to see more defense sided uh Picks. Agents, yeah. Agents, yeah. Uh, kind of roster roll-ups because we saw, wow, such an aggressive pick on this last one. And, of course, Doc's keys to the game. And Valor, you want to focus those angles, know your win condition, count those cards, call abilities, and click those heads. Doc's keys to the game is brought to us by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming is a premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your competition gaming journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. Make sure to check that out if you're a big gamer on that mm -hmm. end. Or a small gamer. Or a small gamer. That's for, that's for everyone. Free money. That's True. for everybody. If you want to play competitive. Yeah. Sometimes you're, just, you're not feeling the solo queue. So, oh you're tired gosh. of the, the not, you know, not I am working together and stuff like that. usually not feeling the solo queue. Luckily like today, doing. we don't have to worry about that. We've got five players that are all comfortable playing with each other, playing against another team of five that's that true. have been here since at least districts. We saw them play in districts. Yeah. They, uh, I don't think these two teams played each other in districts. Yeah. I don't think so either. But overall, they both qualified here, so it's obviously it's semifinals. They both deserve to be here. They're both ready to go. Both want it because they're obviously in land mm -hmm. format, which land mm -hmm. format, like we've said before, is kind of definitely a different change of pace. I mean, usually you're kind of all at home, playing your your comfortable setups yep. Yep. in your quiet peaks. Maybe your mom or dad are walking in. You're like, hey, wait, well, I'm playing right now. But, you know, I can't stop. Yep. But overall, I think right now it's like you really don't get too much distractions besides the fan, I guess, more Ooh, so. Ooh, fanfare. 
like feedback because mm -hmm. I, I call it because it's it's if you pop off you get cheers if the enemy team pops off they'll get cheers too so it's like a, a double-edged sword where if you pop off and the cheer happens you feel great you're like you're ready to go but sometimes you can't let it get to you too much in terms of like okay well I'm popping off I want to keep going sometimes you got to call back like yeah. I know earlier today we heard someone on stage say no I don't want the ace I don't want the ace we need to win the round and I think that's really funny but also shows hey you know what at the end of the day you want to win and I think it's not all about individual play individual plays happen of course you have your moments you'll pop off here and there good good or bad but at the end of the day of course it's like okay well we want to end we want to win at the end of the day i don't care if I, so. you know i'm not the one popping off but if i do whatever my job is and help them out so yeah i really like the word feedback there kind yeah. of it, it's amplified yeah. you can't just take your headset off of course if you have a rough round um timeouts are just totally different uh here versus yeah you know back where your keyboard's already tilted. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, they are back there with the laser levels and all their compasses, getting the keyboards on just the right tilt, getting the mouse pads yeah. and just I, right. I, it's really funny because I think when it comes to esports and stuff like that, like every game has their setups. Like mm -hmm. I've, known ver I've known friends who literally – what they would do at their desk is they would literally line out. They would, like, take a par permanent marker or, like, you know, some sort of knife and just kind of, like, get that thing. And so whenever they move their keyboard, they could bring it back to their desk and have it perfectly aligned. And it was just a huge thing. Like, it has to be there. It has to be there. So I've always seen people also, like, I think myself as well. I, I can play anywhere. So it's, like, you're kind of sure. just used to that. Okay, well, let's pop up. What do we got here? Okay, let's go. But, you know, I think as you kind of get more comfortable with games, you start getting your setup fine-tuned, you're like, I like this spot. No, I like this spot. So I think, you know, being able to warm up, get that comfort comfortability and be able to adapt today is going to be a big thing we got going on here. Definitely so. Uh, you are next to all your uh, teammates as well up there, too. That's a different energy. You get feedback from yeah, your teammates, exactly. which is absolutely huge, too. That's it, because you can kind of look at them and be like, yo, fist bump, boom, mm -hmm. right there on stage. You know, you're there. You're ready to go. And I think that's a big thing, too, is, like, having feedback in person. So overall, it's I think it's pretty sick to go on. Mm-hmm. But of course, I think we'll go into game here, not you know, semi soon here. But uh, Ascent overall, we talked about it earlier. It's the first map of the day. We saw it earlier as well. So I think, like I said, Ascent's kind of like a linear, I guess, map in terms of you know this kind of play, where we're going to see either mid control or no mid control. We'll see a A rush or we'll see a B rush. And I think teams done a pretty good job of like, okay, we'll do four A main. We'll have one little lurker to cat. So yeah, it's interesting because you can change your mind halfway through, but moving, th you know from catwalk onto something halfway through is just about as strong as moving yeah. through the main halfway mm -hmm. through. They're both kind of from one side. Yeah. So the only real change is right at the beginning, are you going mid or not? And then once you've kind of passed it up, it's are you going B or not? Yeah. And uh, it, still though, still though, there's still small changes you can make and still play style changes you can make, um, whether or not you're playing a lot of verticality or not. Yeah. So I, I, every time we see um, a map twice in a day, mm. um, we get to see four different yeah, teams play on top of the map. I would love to see some different play styles. Yeah, I think what we can really get that's into. what's so fun about Valorant, right? You can play the same map, and you can, have the same, you can even have the same agents in the same map. Yeah. But the game is going to be completely different Definitely. from team to team. We'll see really aggressive teams, really slow teams. I mean, like I said, we've seen Boise State in the past when mm -hmm. we play Valorant. We, we play this really methodically. We play it's pretty slow, kind of bait out, see where we go. Because, like, you know, Ascent, you can just rotate pretty easily. Because for them, if you're on A site, that's a long rotate for them as well. Definitely. So I think the biggest thing is kind of a lot of teams have either gone to this rush side or, you know, we'll play a little slow mid. So I think it's really fun to kind of see what... Uh, adaptations that these teams make and what they're feeling and stuff like that because you know sometimes it's like well we can't go in because you know that guy's there or something like that yeah. so I think the biggest thing is kind of realizing what works for you what doesn't yeah and everybody has their own strats we saw somebody back here um, bringing out a lot of the Bucky earlier yeah. a lot of the Bucky strat and we had some people that are absolutely just going to town with the ops with a lot of double opping from both teams yeah. back there so I'd love to see you know more of a little bit of everything uh, so I think ops definitely kind of play that part of when a defensive team has an op, you really have to communicate about it too. You gotta have your flash ready to go. You gotta have your smokes ready to go because if you just have no smoke, no flash, them holding the angle, you're gonna lose probably 90% of the time unless you just have an insane one tap with a vandal. But I think at the end of the day, it's like you gotta really communicate. Okay, this guy's opping here, but you know if it's a jet that's you know ready to go, they're gonna play different angles. They'll play A main one round, A short, A you know B main, B short. Like there's gonna be so many different things you can play. So I think the biggest thing is. Well, if we're going to peek it blind, we just got to make sure we have a flash or a smoke or something like that so you can kind of narrow those angles down. I think that's what, you know, Valorant's all about. It's about giving you the highest ch ex uh, chance of success. And I think that's so. the big thing that's kind of different because, like, you'll watch these pro players and you're like, well, why do they do that? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. why do they do this? And it's because that's going to be their highest chance. And a lot yep. of the time, sometimes your highest chance is by playing some weird play. 
some jump peak randomly, some yep. really wide peak, some really short peak. Like the biggest thing is, well, what is the enemy expecting, and what can I either do that's you know not by the book, or what can I do that's you know by the book? So it's a lot of different, you know, yeah, skill yeah. expression. Off angles definitely take a lot more Absolutely, strength yeah. when people are expecting you to not be in the off angle. Mm -hmm. uh, at lower elo, it's a mess, but here when we're serious about it, every angle matters of and course. every pick matters. Uh, we're ready to jump into it. Um, what do you – you were talking about, like, flashes and smokes yeah. and having certain – we haven't talked about the loadout at all. What kind of picks do you want to see on Ascent? I know we discussed it earlier with the map. Yeah. Um, I think, like I said, last time there wasn't really that Sentinel I think you need. I think Chamber is really good on this map. I think mm -hmm. Sova is really good on this map. Even post-nerf Sova I think is yep. just – He's so good in this map. He has way too many lineups in this map with his darts, his you know his drone, his shock darts. That it's just so hard to like actually, you know, really play against sometimes. Like you know, yeah. you can retake uh, A with just that one little. There's so many like different beams that you see Sova's hit back sides, things like that. Because his dart still stays the same. Definitely. I think that's the one thing that people don't realize. Or oh well, Sova's gone. But it's like he still does everything that you can. It's just that you even have a higher skill expression now because mm -hmm. of you know how people play it. So I'd love to see a Sova uh, get some usage out of that. And the one thing. Regardless of, I would say, picks from either team, the one thing I do want to see is more utility sync synchronization. Yeah. And that's just more so, okay, well, when KO flashes, my team's going to go in. Mm -hmm. Or when we're going in, I want the Reign of Flash to go up. So it's like things like that that it's pretty minor, but I think that kind of plays a big role in games like this of, you know, setting up correctly, right? So I think that's going to be what I'm really looking out for. Ooh. Oh, they're ready to go. They even got a chant. Love that. Love the chance right here. Yeah, yeah we got ready to go. Got a lot of energy here. Here in the audience, got the rolly chairs coming to back up the stadium seating. It is packed today. Packed indeed. It is great to have an audience here for these players. They are ready for the attention. That yeah, feedback. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm saying. About. Yeah, we heard earlier. You know, sometimes goes off. You hear cheering and mm -hmm. you know loud stuff like that. Of course, I don't know. It's just it's just hype. Like, you know, yeah. when you're at home and, you, yeah, you're in Discord call, and sure, you can get hyped at home very well. I'm not saying you can't, but when it's you're in person, you look, at your, you, know, you look at your friend, your teammate, and you're both like, let's go. Like, you, you know, that, that really helps a lot. Yeah. I think, you know, just experience of that is always fun. Yeah, the fog machine is out. The laser lights are up. That's true. Like, just the atmosphere, the mm. ambiance. Ambiance, even. Yeah. Well, here it is. Ascent. Start to get into these picks here. Oh, that Killjoy. Yeah, and I'll killjoy. say I Killjoy love is a great pick on this map. We, we see it all the time everywhere. Yep. I mean, the, and that goes back to what I was saying with utility. I think the biggest thing about Killjoy is, hey, you can you can kind of be that force when you have your ult. You may, hey, team, we're going to play off my ult. Once I ult, then we'll go in. And the biggest thing is obviously not, you don't wait your time. You don't want to just go put ult down and push because if you do that, they're going to be in the same spots ready for you. And well, pretty good. I would say that's a really good comp there. We nice see comp. We see Brimstone, which is a big pick on this map. You know, the Rays, the Reyna, the Killjoy, you have the KO, of course, you got to have that Initiator ready to go. And I, I do like Rays because she actually has a lot of lineups that can stop you. So, like, if you have an opera on Cat, Rays can actually nade it from tiles without being seen and mm -hmm. completely push you off that. And hey, there, there we go. We got, we yeah. got back and forth. We got the Blackfoot. We got the Middleton. You know, so I'm ready for that. And we're yeah. going to game one here for a set. It seems like both fans are ready to see a good game here. Whew. And that's what we're looking for, too. Oh, definitely. No, hype in the house is all coming from us as well. Oh, I'm yeah. looking for a fantastic game. Um, I'm going to see sextuple overtime, game three, everything. Maybe not. Maybe not. Not many overtimes, <laughs> but. <laughs> it's not hurt anybody, but. Uh, <laughs> we got games to play today. We got stuff after this. Oh, you know? yeah. Plenty lined up for you guys. We have days after this. Tomorrow, it's coming back for plenty I'll say, more. We got, we got two straight days of action mm -hmm. here at the Boise State Esports Game Pants Arena here. We got. Valorant today, we got, you know, Rocket League today, and then tomorrow we got three different games. We got Smash tomorrow, Overwatch tomorrow, League tomorrow. So if you, you know, hey, stay tuned for all today and tomorrow for yeah. some great games today. Yep, if and you are tired of watching <laughs> streams to get that Overwatch 2 drop key, of course. swing on by. Okay, and honestly, we have the pretty same comps here. The biggest thing is that Blackfoot Ooh. is opting into two duelists. Yes. Whereas Milton is going to go for that one duelist and Sova and KO, which is very standard on this map. Yep, two initiator, two duelist. Very heard of. I love that omen. I was going to tease for it. I was going to ask for it. I'm so glad that it's here. We see a quick push on the A. That Leer goes in. Only one person follows in. Okay, they're starting to walk back. Ooh. A nice smoke really keeping it dark here. First gunshots finally take Nate one right kill. through the smoke. An easy kill on the mullah wall. GB taking the first. Green Kid looking to make it through there. Kid making it into Garden. Oh, a oh. nice. And now we're playing retake here. 
Northrend picks it up. They can't play. Ooh. No angle. They go right into it. Marmalade gets two kills. Marmalade takes two of them and just camps the spike. Ready for this nice thin angle on the sofa. If he dares walk it, he goes for it. Ooh. Eye contacts me. Marmalade doesn't like it. He knows he can play for time. Yes, yeah, a very Wicon. smart play right there. You want to peek that so head. bad, but he just sits there. Exactly. Oh, and the turret goes down. An easy turret take. 1v2. He does not have that much time left, though. Oh, right there. All HP. Field. Just poke. Just poke. Great shot. He's going to jump peek it. Oh, the nice turnaround. Almost had him. Goes for the fake. Is caught behind. GB moving on to Day for an 0-2 finish in and the I'm first round. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be a loud game. Oh, yeah. Both teams it. are really excited, and that's what we love to see here. Great job by both teams. They're getting the plant down. So not, you know, at the very least, that's great. But they won the round there as well. Almost a good retake. So it was a really close try there. Ooh. But now we're going to this bonus that we always talk about. Usually, like I said, the bonus kind of, that pistol round is very important. I mean, it kind of gives you that, I guess, momentum that you need going to the second round. Oh, and looks like, we, let's say we're looking like a force kind of Ooh. here coming from Middleton, but it looks like they're going to, actually, they're going to go with it. They're going to force it up. And what it means by that is if they lose this round, they actually have to save another round after that, which yeah. is potential for that. Ooh, oh, a hit quick Marshall does right. And that super sternal notch just takes him in the neck. Oh, that's a huge silence. Oh, still looking for Day. Sees that elbow. He he's wants got a dangerous it. game. Oh, there's no reason to fiddle with that. Oh. Takes one down in Garden. Deaded opens up the space. They move right through. The smokes are coming down. Kid has got to be able to reply to that. He's absolutely swarmed. The Lyra and the Boombox comes out. Great angle. Oh, Ooh. this great transfer. He does so much damage and so little kills. Wow, Marmalade gets another one. Oh, Day's Ooh. so close. Marmalade. Backstab 2, looking for another, not going to happen. Gets Gerda. 2. 15 HP, though. He's probably trying to play for that Spectre here, yeah. Ooh. I say he has 15 HP, though, so literally one tap, and he's down here. Rudia looking for oh, one, takes a flash. quick one. Right through the flash. Rudia needs two more. We make it out of here alive. Oh. That Leer is just too good. Dead end with two on the assist. I would say Middleton definitely kind of made a gamble there. They went for the force, which means that they're going to have to save ultimately this round, so they're not going to have the Vandals or Vandals this round. But the biggest thing that I'm seeing is Blackfoot had some really good timing there. I mean, M Middleton had a great kind of KO set up in that tree room. He flashed, but the, fr the problem was is he flashed the guy in front of him. The guy who peeked right after had a great angle and unfortunately went down with, you know, dry peeking that as well. Now, Middleton, their buy didn't go wasted. They yeah. did a lot of damage onto the bonus of Blackfoot. So Blackfoot here, if they do buy, they kind of stagger the econ. They're going to have to spread Absolutely. it out a little bit, communicate on how they want to run that. So Blackfoot is definitely looking for another win here so they don't get staggered too hard. And Middleton is looking for a save, just trying to do as much damage as they can to Blackfoot's econ. Maybe take a win home if they can. Oh, the Lear coming Didi out. Didi looking Marina. to follow that Lear in. Yep. Ooh, oh, wow. wow. Nice headshot one. there. Oh, so many angles open. Didi just not in a comfortable spot. Wow, gets two with the classic. Spike Korean. Unfortunately, doesn't had to dismiss there, though, so has no health. Great yep. kill is what I'm talking about. Using that, you know, utility in sync here, getting them all off site. They do have the bomb there. They still haven't planted it yet, no, though. they haven't. So, Milton's actually getting an opportunity here to kind of play that, you know, post-plant. Where they're going to have one planning. They have the numbers. It's a 5v3 here. And now they're going to hear the plant. Salty finally takes it. Okay, the plant is going to go down. They're waiting for the Sova maybe. Oh, great. Shock dart. Ooh, does a little bit of damage. Just a tiny bit off the top. Two people on Recon drone. Gets one. Recon. He jumps down. One wow, remaining. great retake here from oh Middleton. And that's an eco round. Wow, yeah, that was a flawless eco round. Kid being the catalyst for that. Taking a quick one and moving on the... And, and, and this is what we're kind of talking about in the pregame of, oh, what does it mean to play together? What does it mean to play that utility? Right there, we see the Sova Dart go out. As soon as the Sova Dart comes out, they push through heaven. But at the same time, they're pushing through tree rooms. So they have the dope both angles. And I think that's the biggest thing is having those multiple angles to play against is so hard to defend against. Yep. I think going up to Middleton there, that's some great communication there and great teamwork show being shown. Yeah, in, in the same way that there's a small difference between feeding someone, walking in one at a time, yeah. and swinging off contact and catching Absolutely. them already, there, there's the same energy comes from the entire team when you're taken to yeah. sight and being able to swing off the contact of that utility there is what totally gave them a flawless oh, eco. Absolutely here. Looking to back it up again. Blackfoot moving right in. A quick leer just to clear this area. A second one to go all the way in. All oh, utility. A little turret fight. Just clearing out that utility and streamlining in. Oh wow, Ooh. that's a good little combo there. Quick combo. Oh back side. Oh, back side. oh wow. That backside almost got away the with that. Ghost hole. too. He got the ghost. Spike planted. Okay, Blackfoot has now planted once again here, but can Middleton have another retake? It is now a 3v5 here for Middleton for retake. Ooh. Great Molly. Oh, just clear bricks. Go one for one, though. Last player standing. Not quite there. GB taking that oh. one. GB taking his second. 
onto Mula Wall. And just like that, Blackfoot goes up 3-1 here. Middleton is going to have a, I think, buy round here that saved that round. So they should have a full kind of on-pace buy. The one thing that's really going to also play a difference here is, I think, is how these teams eco. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is you got you can't really get into the habit of just forcing every round or having one off or, you know, hero vandals and stuff like that. I think you really got to play together here with these, you know, full buy vandals and fandoms for the whole team. Definitely so. All right. Let's see how they can change this up. Wow. It is a strong B posture from both sides. Hopefully they don't read it wrong and rotate out of there because holding this site could give them a lot. Oh, it looks like, like the turret's close here. I don't know if they hear it. That's actually their turret. My bad. And now he's got the smoke. So make sure you always got to smoke that CT in market. Ooh, has a little lineup here from KO. Oh, the Leer is ready. It's going to go there at the is. same time the knife does. Oh, they're they in shoot tune. It the smoke's come out. They've already got one in the hole there. They can push out from this, though. It's safe. It's been checked. Wow, an Odin kill, actually. That turret. Oh, great Ooh. shock there. I think that was a double. It, it must have it been. It sounded like it. Dropping the 57. Clash themselves. It happens. That's Goes okay. Another one. Next one. One hit oh, right there in the corner. Nice push there by Day. Kid. Great. The oh, a good flick. A nice dismiss to the info. And wow. Hands it over. And I do want to say, I, I do like Milton's approach here. They're like, okay, well, you know what? Blackfoot's rushing. Yep. Let's take them, let them take sight. They use their smokes. They use their your, their nades. They use a lot of their utility. So let's play together in this retake. And they're doing a great job of that. Yeah, a little unfortunate there. But I had the second one. And overall, just like I said, there's some great retakes here from Middleton. I think that's going to be the name of the game here. And some great job by uh, Korean Kid here, just shooting through the, the spammable thing, because we got to make sure that no one gets away by playing behind that, you know? Yep, definitely so. And of course, we're going to see it playing around here. Wow. Now, it looks like Blackfoot's definitely on the, the side of, we're just going to run at them, and we're going to make them play this retake. Because, you know, they're doing a great job. I think they can, okay, we just got to play a little bit better post play, you know? Okay, oh, nice to go off. Doesn't find him. He did a great job of, I think Blackfoot definitely communicated that, hey, we got to make sure we buy out that KO nade. KJ kind of planting up, watching that mid, making sure they don't got a nice flank. Focus angles flank. You know the rules. The fight's really slow here. Yeah, nice and slow. Lots of listening. I kind of like this, too, because Blackfoot knows that, okay, we've rushed the last four rounds or whatever. Let's play a little slow. Let's have him, let's have him get a little, you know, antsy. Okay, we're going to see one mid. Ooh. Get a little one show off. He Day. does back off here. He does, and that's the sign to push. They've yep. been spread out. You see one in mid, you know he's not A. There's the KO ult. Oh, they got to make sure they check. Oh, wow. oh that hit for low. They timed it. Oh, Green Kid gets two. Oh, K Kid going crazy. Takes two before he goes down. Salty is the one to take him. So Some great angles being played here. Defense. Yeah. Yeah. Lapis getting that spike down is good. Setting up a nice crossfire. He's his back to the wall here. Mulawal and Day looking to push out. Wow, he's getting a lot of utility big. here. And he's pinched. I mean, he got found by Recon Dar, found by the Paranoia Blind from Omen. But ultimately, Middleton taking another retake here. And it's a great job holding, too. They had a great, you know, through, this, through the smoke kill for one of those. Korean Kid goes through two for one. That's exactly what you kind of need there. That's always worth right there. And I'm really enjoying how both these are playing because Blackfoot's not kind of letting off the gas. I think they know, okay, well, we're, we're doing something right. We're getting planned down, right? But at the same time, okay, we're losing post-plant. What can we do post-plant to really, you know, change the outcome of this game? I think that's what's kind of the difference here. It definitely seems like it's a post-plant centered match. Yeah. It's not really about taking it all and then pushing back in mm -hmm. to the spawn, seeking yeah. out those. Can't be greedy. Everybody is walking to... Yeah. We have a lot of ults available here, Greg. We got Killjoy ult for attack. We have the Reyna Empress. We got Showstopper. We got the Orbital Strike from Brimstone. And same thing for Middleton. They have a lot of retake opportunities Ooh, here. That Hunter's Fury goes down fast. Can't use that on the post plant. A shame. That is it's an a easy way to clear this fight. Ooh. It is a fight in market. This Big is wide. the most shallow. Oh. oh. No, it was a bit high. Warmint's not able to capitalize on that. A good pop flash totally catches Yurida. He's being pinned. He might take this one, wow, but he's got he one on the side. Goes down one for one, though. And Blackfoot has the numbers advantage. Now 3-1. They do have the KO ult for retake, but I don't know if they want to commit that much. But This is a 3-2. to two. Yeah, I say. Same thing happens for Blackfoot, though. They got a lot of ults available here to stall them. Smoke's oh, down. look at this. They're playing backside boat. Did they actually clear it? They usually do. Let's see if they can make it. Oh, he isn't cleared it just yet. Yeah, he has an angle. Moving in, Mokwal takes it. Oh, oh no, he doesn't. Marmalade. 
cleans it up and that's a that's a big kill right there. It is because the the site's empty. Yeah. Just now have we turned around from walking A to now walking B. Now it's a they've got so much space to clear. As long as Black kind of holds these angles, smokes it off, makes sure that they have nothing really going on here. Korean kind of coming in. I don't, I, he has. It looks like he has at least one Leer. Throws one out. Clears corners. It is smoked though. Does he actually th shoot through the spamble wall here? Oh, he's gonna play the really slow. Going for Leer. Right Leer. Got so much to multitask here. Takes oh. one. No marmalade. Finishes him off. Oh, he had it lined up, but the Leer was too shallow. And I, that's a great job by Blackfoot there, just making sure you get the first pick, but not playing greedy. They yes. know that they gotta play that post play, even though it's one v three. You gotta play this just one. Watch there. your, yeah, watch your spot. It's okay if you lose two of you. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, trying to take the Leer onto that is kind of difficult. You oh. really open yourself up to all of it at once. Mm -hmm. Kind of have to be standing right underneath the Leer for a I'll say, yeah, a little worth it. Maybe. And he wasn't that spammable wall, but you know, sometimes it's, you never know. You do. They, I don't think you want to give away his position there because you no. want to kind of stay anonymous there. So. Definitely. That's all right, though. 3-4. Blackfoot takes that round. Still, this ult economy through the roof. See if we can get out some early ults to really secure this round. It's going to be a nice cat walk down. Nobody really and holding that spot. They're changing spot. up here. They're walking all the way across cat here. Okay, great kid flash. might be ready for him. Getting the angle. Good positioning, yeah. but they saw him. Lappy's at a great inch right there. They take his gun skin. Flash, nice then crouch peak. rest. Doesn't see anything. That's free space. They're going pretty deep here into tree. They do have the kill trail. Oh, that's kind of a hard spot, though. It is. They that's totally through. bangable. You've got to have a guy posted on top of that kind of the whole time. And sure enough, Blackfoot yeah, destroyed really yeah. And wow, Blackfoot really just kind of came in on that one. I think that was right play, wrong place. Yeah. I'll say right there, I think the retake option is good, but I think you honestly just have to give them sight there and then play the kill trail to retake. Because they don't have a Hunter's Fury to stop it there. No. But they have a lot of tools. They even have Ray's Showstopper, Ray's Grenade. They got, you know, Satchels. They got a lot of stuff they got going on there. Yeah. But, but I'll say, I will say, though, Blackfoot, I mean, Blackfoot's playing so aggressive. I mean, they are. we see them just run up cat, flash out, keep going, you know, go, go, go. So, and look at that. I mean, Marmalade has 10 kills right now. Doing a great job there. And both killed at the top. Really making use of their kit here on these uh, Sentinels. The kid. Posted with a marshal, not going to see very much. All the actions on B side. We see that Omen in back ready for that smoke like he always is on first contact, which is going to be this Leer. Oh. Sure enough, the strategy is understood. They do have a Hunter's Fury to actually get it down, though. They do, but I don't know what you want to do when it's so shallow. Oh, Showstopper coming in. Got to be careful out here. Ooh, Mulu Wally might have a huge one right here. Doesn't get, doesn't find anyone. But GB's actually go back here. Does get silence, but doesn't matter. Just have any utility left. Low health. Oh! It's Killjoy. Finds the gun kill. Flash, works for the gun. Open ult coming out as well. A good pop flash. No one's there though. Lupus. Clears that right side corner. Oh. No one is at least. Oh, great shot Ooh. there. Oh, it's Saint Paragonia! Two! Remain. One last one. Eight! Eight. What a position! Wow, Woo. and we have an ace brought to you by Boise State here. What an insane play for Moai, but I, will, I do want to highlight one thing. Moai did get the ace, but I do want to pinpoint Omen's paranoia blind is what set that up. If 100%. you look at it, he peeks the corner. They're completely blind right here. He gets those two kills due to that Omen blind. So that's a great utility usage by both teams. I think just kind of using that in sync with the peek there did a great job. I do want to highlight that more than anything because that really won the round there. Yeah, and that is our second of the day. Quick switch, like sidearm ace, yeah. all on site. Overtake Absolutely. three in a row. Got to be ready for that pistol. High energy. I love Absolutely. it. Got to be ready for that pistol. And great positioning there too. Uh -huh. Understand the paranoia. Understand all the peak spots. Absolutely. Move behind shiny. Ooh, we got to play an aggressive on the A. No one is ever taking A. If they get this info, they got to quick rotate. Sure enough, we're seeing a nice pinch right on the mid. If Blackfoot doesn't move quickly, they could get hurt by this one. Yeah, and Blackfoot's really playing as a unit here. You're, you're usually always playing as five here. Mm hmm. Okay, Day does see one. He has the Hunter's Fury available, but he just shot dart first. I don't know if he found anyone there, oh, but I don't think so. And we might get some beautiful oh, eyes on the mid too. here. Oh. Just out of smoke. Oh, killing that turret is a rough one. That turret is such a great block on the back. Oh wow, he's an op now too. Gets a pick. Is that an attack op for KO? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it is. Spice and it's down. holding one. It's holding B. That is such a shallow angle. Oh. Ooh, Wormich is going to be oh, playing against wow, an op. No, flank. Marmalade beats him to it. 
it is flanks all over the board. Mulawai, he's got to he's got to bring it up. Oh, I don't know if they saw him though. I don't think they saw him. I think Rudy is still alive here. Might have a good read on to Lapis. Okay, if he checks the other side, he could get the plant. They are so low. Oh, great come to him. Get one. Oh one my goodness. Remaining. He runs back in the storm. The three K. Just absolutely lacing the utility there. Absolutely. And the funny thing is, he was the, the K was blind, so he just had to walk backwards. He walks just straight into the molly. And this is just a, a crazy game wow. we got going on, Greg. Yeah. We got that five, was five. replay ready. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have a lot going back and forth here. Like I said, I mean, these teams are both working in sync. I mean, we have great retakes from Middleton. We have great attacks from Blackfoot. But the thing is, it's going to take a, just a little bit to really pry away here. You got to get kind of that lead if you can. 7-5 is huge at this point in the game. Get a set up here as well, and I guess it, both teams are doing a great job and just having a great utility as well. Yeah, the rinse and repeat is surreal here. I mean, yeah. watch this. We should have a Leer coming in. That's suppressed because they know that they're moving here. We always see the Omen smoke far. There the it is. silence is huge for the Killjoy because now she can't activate any utility, so the Arm Lock Bot's not going to go off. Okay, now they have the entire site. They do have ults available. Actually, they have Orbital Strike here from Black, but that means they can play Post Plant, or they can maybe get him stuck in that little B corner here that we see him coming through. Ooh, yes. Oh, an Orbital Strike right here yeah, would counter, be counter KO as well. Huge. Oh, big paranoia, but nothing actually it's swing not like that. Start to swing full force in onto site. Trying to go all the way around. Urd has got a lot to watch here. Huge flank. Oh, he's gonna watch the normal spots, but he's taken. Leaving too many angles. Oh, great full flash. time flash. Day is able to back it up a little bit. Has Dart and Hunter's Fury available though. Ooh, he's up against yeah, quite a bit are. here. They haven't gone for the. Ooh. Can he take this one? Oh. He gets one. Last one. Oh. So close. Lapis taking barely the last one on a day. And Lapis making some big work last happen here. And now it's 6 5 here, but Blackfoot, like I said, you know, if they can win this next round, 7 5 is pretty good for them going on the half. It really is. Yep. And even half is not a fair half, especially considering the comps we've got on this map. And I'll say, anything can happen on this side too. It's gonna be a lot of just kind of sheer willpower and stuff like that. You gotta keep playing together. Make sure you don't go for any hero plays or anything like that. Definitely. Just gotta keep working together here. Yeah, working together is what's getting everyone everything right yep. now. This is such a caliber gameplay. Yep, and we still have the Orbital Strike ready for Blackfoot on that attack here, as well as the KJ ult and Hunter's Fury available. I'd love to see that from Middleton. We haven't seen this half yet. Finally an A push, and it's gonna be under guarded, so this slow walk is definitely in the move. Oh, they're gonna hear them. Ooh, they are. That doesn't set off a rotation though, does it? Ooh, they're gonna get silence, Ooh. I think. I think Four, three, that or four the of them. Check. Yep, they're considering. And look at that, look that on rotate the from Middleton. Literally, all five members oh, are so on this fast. A. On that, top means of they it. Can, that means they can take mid that to B here. A little bit of last ditch utility could really be the bait here. It doesn't look like it's going to happen though, and the noises are off. So we see Middleton start to send a rotate back. Just the flank guard, just the sentinel, considering Ooh, it. Say KJ was looking Ooh, to kind of rotate there, but unfortunately like doesn't commit. Mid yeah, walk. might catch him here if they're not ready. Here comes Does the smokes. Market. Smoke's coming out. You gotta have one on the market. You gotta have one back site. They can walk right in. Beautiful defensive smokes, right just barely in the edge. Oh, great KJ here. Oh, oh no, caught in mid. Utility in hand. Oh, now Molly has ult. That was the ult kill to actually have it, so you know, be the difference. Yep. That is the third KJ ult coming from him this round, like this half. And that's gonna buy a lot of time here. So that means that the retake is gonna be even faster than usual. We have the Hunter's Fury up as well. Will he use it? We'll see. Could be a big retake tool. There it is. Oh, pops it. Oh, great orbital strike on top of it though. That's gonna be even more time wasted. And he has to ditch that last Hunter's Fury shot. And Middleton has to go this really fast here. They do not have that much time no, left. They have to play so sloppy. All Blackfoot has to do is play for time. They don't need to see anybody's eyes. One before goes down. Deaded with the last one on the day. Blackfoot, four people alive. They're doing well, keeping the creds moving. And just like that, it's going to be 7-5 for Blackfoot. But now it's time for the swap here. Blackfoot was really aggressive, and now we're going to see if they can kind of adapt to that defensive style of, you know, playing discipline and stuff like that. Because I think the moment that you get a little too antsy on that defense, they're going to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. But we've also seen that, you know, Milton had some really good post plants. So they can kind of use that into how they're going to attack as well. So that retake. GB does have the boom bot ready. GB, uh, would you play that aggro with a ghost? Yeah. 
Why not? Okay. Yeah, no, I love it. Love the energy. Let's see it. You got, you got, I mean, you have your nade. You got your boom bot. Definitely I mean, so. you can just hold that angle. It, it allows you to get a better angle here, if anything. GB, let's see it. But it seems like Milton's going to kind of do a little split here. They're going to have a main push as well, maybe for the bait. Ooh, they let that boom bot and look die at, it's naturally. Working. Look at Blackfoot on the map. You see literally all three members going towards that A. Wow. And just no. like that, they're going to defense. The that one thing that's crazy. going to hit them is that, uh, that alarm bot. The alarm bot will go off once they go to A main or B main here. But they're all gone. No, they can sprint. They can just sprint, and they know it. Look, sight is clean. Oh, no. my gosh. Oh, two. Whoa. That was not allowed. The boom button wasn't, wasn't shot by anyone. Oh, my gosh. Alarm bot taking two? Yeah, with the, the what's it called, hive grenades. Oh, ah. nice, it's one. That's what they need, though. Well, looking for a second, is kind of pinched. That's okay, Middleton. He's got spiked oh. down. Oh. Wow, Middleton had a great take. What a start. Yeah. I, I, wow. And they had a great, you know, kind of flank there, but the thing is, they weren't ready for the mollies or the boom. I mean, the boom, uh, the, what's it called? The bot wasn't even shot. No, Sentinel, Sentinel position there was used all the way to the max and really, really brought that in because it gave them the information that they had moved and it wasn't a slow push on an air. And they got two. It got two. Off site. He wasn't even there. Wasn't even there. Yeah. Could have been dead. <laughs> you yeah. could have not queued KJ that. All right. Now it's 5-8 here. Blackfoot kind of getting a, you know, a little bit of a lead now. Spectres across the board. We should see Blackfoot. Yeah, Milton, we see like two, three forcing here. Yep. I'm not the biggest fan of kind of a split like this where you have two saving because it means next round you're going to be off. Stagger off it goes utility. well. I'm never, yeah. I always grimace at, but if they're confident, then it's, ooh, trendy. Might be in a good position. Kind of gives it up to get a better angle. Still going to hold it. Setting up a nice crossfire for Marmalade if Marmalade needs to move in. Start to see the defenders come around. It's real slow, though. They're waiting for the smoke to dissipate. No reason to push that. Yeah, absolutely. Trending card is kind of holding this corner here. Could not be cleared. You know, this is kind of a cheeky corner because you're not really on the top of those. So you're around the corner where they can't see Middleton you Middleton right now taking the, the Boise State. Um, yeah, wait till wait till 50. Wait till 50, and the mid round here uh, it is. They're, they're taking right though. They do get one. Trade one for one though. It is now still 4v3, not 3v3. Looking for guns. Does have specters now. Getting those comfortable positions. Spike planted. One help one on shiny. I'm ready to kind of look. He's peeking. They do have the retake available. They have a lot of different positions. A good smoke. Might be able to jump that. Not looking like it. Good. Kid just ready for this. For yeah, he's got down. Okay, Marmalade actually has a great push from Tree. Gets one. Kid finds it. He's got a really Gets two. Okay. Good one. Looking for the third. Standing. Not quite there. Marmalade. 1v1 here. Bringing it to a 1v1. Wormich, does he know where he is? I think it is I planted for him. He does. Oh, pro stick. Pro so he's so close. Oh! And gets the kill from the stand-up. Wormich, a full commit, walks right hand out in space. Blackfoot. Wow. Punishes. I'm surprised he won that. Oh, I mean, me he, too. he had to get off the bomb and then still shoot him. So what, what a stone cold to just stick that. Yeah, I mean, half at least. But he he wasn't even stopping a half. He was going the whole thing. Just kept, just kept driving. Yeah. If you're, I, I guess if you're deep into grapes and you think it's a fake, then you <laughs> call it. But wow. Yeah. I mean, and Crinkin had a great kind of hold here. He got two. And that, I mean, that's, hey, you got your two for the round. You see that one. Yeah. But unfortunately, just great job there. So. And now we have a little bit of a tech pause tech here. Pause. No audio, it seems, which happens. Well, it happens. It happens with LAN tournaments. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't complain about ping, but when your yeah. mouse really isn't working, they're like, all right, let's get you well, some Well, sometimes tech pause aren't really tech pause. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But no, you know, here, here yes. I, I, yeah, I fully definitely... believe that these guys are having tech problems. So. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, this match has been pretty good so far. I think, you know, it's like, what, 9-5 now, I think, because they won the last round. But... Overall, it's really close. I mean, it I think is. Blackfoot is winning these rounds, at least in the second half, but, like, they're literally one-on-ones or, you know, one big mistake is kind of the big thing. Like, like I said, two going down that first round was really pivotal in yep. terms of that win there. But, I mean, Middleton's having great attacks. I think the biggest thing here is kind of playing that post plant. You're getting you're, you got to play those off angles a little mm -hmm. bit, maybe a little more crossfires, a little more communication. Definitely. I think stuff like that's going to be the biggest difference here. You just got to really 
you know, play discipline in terms of stuff like that. Discipline indeed, especially considering at yeah. this high of a rank, it is it is no longer uh, seeing who's the most skilled. Yeah. It's who's going to make the least mistakes. It is down to consistency and performance under pressure, under fire. Yeah, and I, I, we can look back at that ace, right? That ace, yeah, it was a, oh, you know, he got all five kills. Yep. But the biggest thing where he got the kills was from his team's utility. 100%. Like when you have the paranoia come out with the blind and then you peek, that's huge. But instead of, you know, what I've seen a little bit lately is, okay, paranoia is thrown. He blinds too. But the it's team like isn't cool. in there. They're waiting. No. And now at this point, by the time they push in, the flash or smoke didn't do anything. And it's pressure, too. Yeah. Like, he didn't have to sprint across the map for that. They oh, were absolutely. corralled up for him. He got one basically on accident doing the twofer. It, it was really the team pressure that set it there. Yeah. And then one last snap on the mousetrap to let it all happen. And it's that teamwork that we just love seeing. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it's not just, you know, okay, well, he played better than them. It's, it's at right. the same time, it's you got to keep communicating. Valorant is a game of constant communication. You can't just be like, oh, well, I thought you were going to flash that. Or, you know, I thought you can't do that. you got to really call for that and make sure you're on the same page. Count cards and call abilities. GB looking for a quick one. Doesn't happen. Now it's 3 3 Bringing it to a 3v3. Spike still in hand for the KO on Middleton. Looking for that plant here after a quick kill. <laughs> Lap is doing the checks. Getting the mouse ready. Considering the gun, he likes the skin he's got, though. He's going to be playing against a Phantom right here, and kid, in the pit with Mulawai. But look where Sova is. Sova is so far away from the side of Milton. They do have a 3v2 oh. at the moment. He's like lineup distance. And here we go. They're actually going to have a 3v2 right here instead. Oh, kid, with oh, a quick great. run. You cannot slow walk when you don't have the angle advantage. Oh, wow. Lapis going crazy. I think they hurt him. Trenny card looking to play day. Oh, oh, he has the lineup. He had the pre fire, but Trenny card was just not as quick. And there it is. Wow. I, I mean, I will say Blackfoot has had some clutch moments here. I mean, it's down to the wire with these 1v1s, and they're coming out on top right now. Clutch But it's so close. I mean, like you said, these every rounds time. are literally 1v1s that they get every round. And at that point, it's just, okay, well, it comes down to this one. How did we get mm -hmm. here? What do we do, you know? And that, that makes you think, like, it's not just the last kill that matters so much. Yeah. Because if they were down another person any time earlier, that would have been a fix. Exactly. It, every kill matters. Exactly. Right? You're talking about 20% of the team every time you take a kill. You can't be Say. making mistakes. That's true. I, don't, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. That's some good math. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, it did take us, like, what, three years to pump that stat, <laughs> <laughs> that stat out for you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Milton actually has a save here or an eco, so they're not going to have the biggest buy. I don't know if they're forcing or not here. A nice one on to B. Not looking like a, the kind of utility noise bait B, but more of a check and Okay, mode. trendy card. Sure enough. The Empress. But he's going to need someone to push in from to actually reset it here. Yeah. No one. It's not going to happen. They've got one walking catwalk, but why push into an Empress? You've got time. They have they a kill drill too. They just dropped the turret right there. And they're probably looking to kill drill on the site here. And by the time they actually get it, ooh, ooh, actually goes down. down. But they still have a kill drill here. Wow, dead it got. A quick one on a day, getting a little bit greedy. Drops the spike in inconvenient place. Lapis knows he can play oh. right onto that. Wow, they were on top of it though, and he was ready. A good spike, or a good knife onto the spike. Oh, great peek. Ooh, this spike is a good placement here. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. D dead going kind of crazy here. Just says, I'll get them all. And yeah, and Dead, that was a, a nice uh, stim pack spot. Yeah. When they commit a turret to it, they kind of say, okay, we're moving, we're moving Ooh, the Korean the kid gets one as well. Still 2v4. They do have bomb. This. They actually go and get bomb from these two, then get on the side. Oh, Middleton has pushed themselves into a pinch, trying to be sneaky. That's all it is. Blackfoot takes another one. Another 4K. We've seen... Crazy. We've seen so many different 3Ks, 4Ks, 3Ks, 4Ks, Ace, Ace, mm. 4. Like, there's just so many times where at least one person that's on each team is kind of popping off here, and I think that's what's kind of showing up who's ready to go today, you know? Definitely. And I think a lot of that actually comes from having your team all in one spot and yeah. then having one person be like, I'm going in, spearheading, yeah. and then that just go crazy. That was dated last round. Yes. I mean, he literally was like, okay, well, KO's next to me. He's not peeking. Fine, I'll peek. Mm -hmm. Peeks one, gets one. Peeks one again, gets another one. Peeks a third one. He wasn't even like, okay, if he's not going to flash, I'll just dry peek it. Definitely. And sometimes, like, I don't know, you kind of get in that zone in Valorant. What, what I mean by that is, like, sometimes you get that first kill, and you're like, okay, I'm feeling good. And mm -hmm. then you can, like, either, you know, you, you feel it, so you go for more. And sometimes that's a bad thing. Sometimes it definitely backfires. But when you're really feeling it and you can keep going, Man, you feel like you're on top of the world. Yeah, yeah. You can, if you stay cool, yeah. you can really take a whole trail there. And confidence is key. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you're not playing with confidence, you're going to play different. I think sometimes a lot of the time that you, when you're playing confident and valorant, you're unpredictable. 
because no one thinks you're just gonna you know ego peek you wide and just like okay well you're feeling it though so it's like well it makes sense to me because if i'm knowing i'm aiming better than them let's just give it a go and so it's just kind of like well i'm gonna keep going until i'm punished confidence yeah. indeed we've now got a lot of noise in the, the house here blackfoot has got lots of backers here. And it is Middleton's now 12 Blackfoot on this defense has really been shutting down Middleton. And it's not that Middleton can't get on the site. It's that he really can't get to site without, you know, bleeding too much. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is he, you know, they might be planning the spike every round, but they're, they're going down a couple members and doing so. Two, yeah. People. Yep. You've got to have a strong push in. Don't let the map change too much. Middleton looking for a nice push right here. A lot of utility they're going to have to be facing off as well as I'm surprised that Boombot actually didn't go out. Here comes the KO. Oh wow, another nade kill too. Oh man, those have been dirty. GB. Why with a little bit of self flash can't get a whole lot of ground off that. It's okay, keeps playing. There's typical shoot spot. Oh, gets wow. him though. Does get him. That's a lot. That's the only person back to sight. Kid. Takes oh. a quick one. Wow. Look at that activity feed. Wow. Okay, Korean Kid has Dempers going still. Oh, great job there. Ooh, he is cornered. Takes it. And Korean said, hey, it's not over yet. I'm still oh, going. Man. Great Empress got like four, three kills there. So that's Definitely huge. Definitely did some real cheeky ones. But once your position is known and it's in the corner, yeah. that's uncomfortable. I mean, this was a little Insane bit of a angle. cheese here. But that this next one is just awkward. He tries to leave. He sees a free one. Has to move back into cover because he knows this guy's watching. And great job. Way to use your Ooh, utility yeah. there. He had the Empress going. So that means he has the dismiss. He uses it to peek and then go back into safety. So he at least knows that he's close. Mm -hmm. Oh, and barely reached around for that yeah. dismiss. That oh, is yeah, scary. Was, yeah. To be like cross their lined on someone's forehead and to know like, no, I've got to keep myself safe first. Okay, here we go. It's now game point for Blackfoot. Middleton has to win six rounds in a row to go to overtime. That's not even the win. That's overtime. Wow, all the free fire here. Kid is letting them know. They I mean, if I see this, I'm thinking, wow, this is a flank opportunity. Sure enough, Ray's moving in, takes a quick Ooh. one. Ray wow. takes a second. Ray knows where Spike is and is hungry for this third warm. He's got to really take himself undercover here. They're on him. Oh, big flash. Ooh, the nades pulling up after. Oh, wow, last pack's on top of him. And now it's 5v1 one. One here. Can Korean Kid do it? This is for the first game. If Blackfoot wins this, they win it all. And he goes oh. down, and Blackfoot takes game one. And they're really pumped up. Oh, yeah. Go. Hype in the house. That is win one. You back that up with a similar looking one. And oh, yeah. game on to Grand Finals. Grand Finals. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do want to say, like, you know, I don't want to say just, I'm not saying it just to say it, but I mean, the end score was 13 5. Mm -hmm. But the first half was 7 5. I mean, and yeah. the thing is, is Milton, I think, really got. Kind of taken off guard there. They had a great attack. The problem was, like I said, we just, they were bleeding a little bit too much on that attack. Yeah. Every time they go and plant the spike, they would go down two, go down one, go down two. You know, So they did a great job. I think they have a great plan going for them. But I think they, they just need a little bit of adjust, and mm -hmm. then they're right there. Honestly, I mean, there's a great game overall. Totally agree. Yeah, especially when you have one half down, and it's the other one's not quite there. You can honestly chalk that up to team comp. Oh, yeah. I mean... Uh, the biggest thing also is I think uh, sometimes you just got to use a little bit more utility. I'd love to see mm -hmm. a little bit of that Sova drone kind of go with it. We didn't see that Sova drone too much. Uh, a little bit more, you know, recon darts to play yeah. with. Uh, just a little bit more to play with your initiator. I it's think all lineup it, initiator. it just takes a little bit more uh, confidence here. And of course, they will be going into a game two here, right close in the semifinals match here between Blackfoot and Milton. But don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure.
Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Welcome to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena, and you're watching our coverage of the Idaho High School Esports Showdown as top Idaho high school's gamers compete to see who has the stuff this year. My name is Brandon Redhots Kozigansik, and I am joined by Greg Old Soul Smith. And Greg, we just saw a Blackfoot had a pretty dominating performance in that second half of that game. Their first half, they're up 7 5, but second half, they really ended the game at 13 5. So it's a pretty big statement to make there. And as we kind of go on to the second map, uh, what do you think the changes are kind of need to be made there? Because Milton had a pretty close there, but, you know, just a little couple factors are missing. Yeah, I think that's really it. Just change those little tiny factors that are the difference between that first half and that second yeah. half, right? You can give up a little bit of that first half advantage and kind of just play through it to get that second half secured to make sure that you don't have that, that imbalance between attack and defense. Yeah. And it's interesting because you could have a comp that's totally balanced. You could have a comp that's two attack for one and two defense for the other uh, because we've been this is kind of in the theme of the day um, talking about comfort characters comfort yeah. picks comfort agents comfort maps I would say yeah play yeah play to yourself um, we saw team comps today that would work for no other team yeah so you, you have to understand you and your team and build around that. Just make the small change. Be more be yeah, a little bit more balanced. Yeah, I, I think the biggest change that we kind of need to see here is definitely be on the lookout. For, you be wary of the enemy team's agents. Definitely. What I mean by that is, like, okay, enemy has a Killjoy, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that, okay, well, if no one's on site, we have to be careful about where is Killjoy set up. Where's the Mollies? Where's the Alarm Bot? Where's the other Molly? Because like we saw last time, the Alarm Bot Molly combo will just instantly tick you down. Right. And so you've got to be really ready for that. And I think that's the biggest thing is being aware of what the enemy has as a utility. Make sure you're going to count that out, right? Do they have Sova Drone? Do they have Sova Dart? You know, stuff like that. KO Flash, KO, you know, Silence. I think just even keeping tracking of those makes it go pretty long in the distance because then you're ready for it when it happens. Definitely so. I mean, Doc's keys to the game. Exactly. Count those cards. Call Absolutely. those abilities that are your own, but call your enemy abilities as well. Right? Yeah. It can't all be gunplay. There's no gunplay answer when three of you are lined up and the paranoia hits. Exactly. And I think the biggest thing comes with that is just don't be too rushed, Fraser. Mm -hmm. You can rush a site, but what, what does it mean by that? It means like you go there fast, mm -hmm. but then you methodically take the site, check all the corners, check all the utility, make sure you can't get you know stuck in a corner, stuff like that. So I think that's what it really comes down to is, okay, like we said, we just keep talking about it, counting those abilities. Okay, what do they have? Do they have Killjoy? Okay, do they have Mollies? Do they have a, you know, a KO? So I think that will actually help you kind of break it down more. But overall, I think both teams are using uh, teamwork very efficiently. We saw a lot of really great retakes from Milton in the first half. We saw a, little, a lot of great takes there from Blackfoot as well. Playing together. I like Blackfoot's kind of plan of sometimes they're just going to play five. They're not yeah. afraid to just, okay, no. well, we're going to play five, and we're going to win as five, or we're going to lose as five. Mm -hmm. And then they you know, they adapt. Sometimes, okay, we'll have one lurker. Yes. We'll have one, okay, we'll go A main, we'll bait them A main, and we'll go B main. So I think, you know... It's all over the place, and I think that's just kind of what's good. I think both these teams have what it takes to win this game, and it's going to be whoever shows up once again. Last game was Blackfoot, but it's a new game, new map here. So can you know Blackfoot keep it going, or will Milton, Milton bring it back? It is, and you have to treat every game as a game to one, right? Exactly, because, really, yeah. It, especially here, we're on match point. It really is. Yeah. You, you've got to respect this one differently. I don't think we have the uh, pick ban yet in. Do you have, before we do, have any theories? Would you recommend a map to certain play styles? Um, 
I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of maps on the table that are ready to go. I'd love to see some Haven just to see how these teams kind of play it. Right. Uh, you know, Split's always a good one as well. Mm -hmm. Split's kind of a fun one because a lot of teams play Split very differently. Mm -hmm. We've seen, you know, a lot of mid play in Split. Or we've just seen rushes and sometimes it's kind of like, okay, well, you're going to have to adapt on Split. Split's yeah. a lot of mind games, yeah. okay? Do we fake A? Do we fake B? Do we just go mid? Do we go mid to B? Like, you know, I think there's so many things going on. Even a bind, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited. And we are going to bind. Ooh, so I will mean, yeah. be bind. But uh, really exciting map. I, I know you. I don't think you like it like as much as yeah, I do. Yeah, it's not my favorite. I think uh, bind has a lot of cool little cheeky spots. It Jet it has does. a lot of really cool dash spots. Mm -hmm. Chamber, I think, is really good in this map because you can play utilities from so far away. Mm -hmm. And this is a big Viper map. And I, I, we have seen in the past uh, double controllers in this map. We've seen Viper kind of... Hold it down, B, have that, you know, that lineup from A site, and then you go over to B after that. And then we've mm -hmm. seen, you know, controllers like the Brimstone, the Omen, or, you know, an Astra even. But uh, I'm really excited to kind of see. What we, obviously, we've seen Rays. Rays is always fun on this map as well. Yeah. No, I mean, Astra has huge pick rates on this map. Yep. Um, so does Rays. We don't see those two characters very many other places nowadays. So I have to kind of yeah, I have to kind of go out on a limb and say that because there very recently was a time where Astra was picked everywhere. Oh always. yeah, and hey, thankful that it's not anymore. Yeah, don't like yeah. that. No, the Agent, balances I'm good. are <laughs> the balances are doing well, bringing things out. I think we could use another Omen buff. That's just me. I just like Omen. Well, he still picked a lot, so <laughs> he still picked a lot. <laughs> I do like that, and of course, you know, I'm I'm pretty excited about the map overall. Yeah, I think you know these teams had very kind of similar team comps. Uh, they do both play KO very well. They do. I do want to say that they have great pop flashes, great silences. Uh, they have great ult usage. Mm -hmm. I saw the KOs both times using that ult on cooldown for that attack, that oh, offense. Yeah. So really excited about that, of course. So. Really excited. I hope we do see another KO because I think both teams played KO very well here. Yeah, and you have to, it takes a special amount of skill to treat KO as an initiator and not as kind of a distance duelist. Yeah. Because, yeah, he has, a, you know, a lot of aggressive AoEs, and yeah, his only information gatherer, which is the knife, is active immediately and is best played off of. But yeah, if you're close and you're ready to take that gamble, you know, either pop flash that. Pop flash that. Yeah, they've done a great job of that. There's been a lot of pop flashes. We've seen a lot of kills off of KO flashes. Yes. Or, at the very least, creating space for that. That You flash it, okay, they're backed off. Flash to good reposition. Yeah, like on this map. If you flash, then they're all, they're staying in U-Haul. Okay, then you get free reign into mm -hmm. that site, you know. I think it's, that is where Sky's flash really comes in. Really? You think Sky will be picked here? No, I don't. It's one of my favorites because there's some really windy parts of the map, mm -hmm. and uh, that the Trailblazer dog is so good for 50/50s. He's do we'll check one way, and then run the other way. In things like Hookah, where it's you know they might be standing to one side, but you're only going to send the dog one way. Or Bath, where they might be standing off to the shower side, but then you're going to check the rest of the way. So the I feel like the Trailblazer is huge right here. I also that um, there are big open sites that I think the flash is helpful for, yeah. and like you're saying, you can flash and kind of hold them back and it's such a variable distance as well yeah i i like sky just as a, a player in general for this map she's good but there are better options yeah and that's we're gonna see we see kind of the same thing here which is that raise killjoy chamber as well gonna go with the double sentinel here looking for a little bit of defense like here it. in terms of that which i actually like i think having that raise and ko is probably gonna be enough for you at least mm -hmm. at the moment i think the biggest thing here that we've seen is really being able to play that defense is gonna make the difference here Let's see what the reply I is. I see a lot of hovers here. Yeah. They still have about 50 seconds left. I do like um, I like Sage a lot in terms of, you know, yep. th this pick on this map because she has a lot of versatility. S she can kind of play when she needs to. She can wall hookah if she's there. Yes. She can wall long. She can wall, you know, a short. So even bathrooms. You can, as, you can yeah, watch bathrooms. As, so. as, as big as and open as this map feels, there are so many little pinch points that Sage's wall just comes absolutely in clutch for. And it, make, uh, it changes attack too, mm -hmm. right? Because we can kind of see that, uh, that B side in terms of uh, you can wall all over the place. And even mm -hmm. A site, right? You can have yep. that little cheeky wall from bathrooms if you need a plant for that money. So. And as we see more and more um, AOE damage yeah. uh, utility, mm. Sage's ult orb, or ult orb, Sage's slow. slow orb becomes more and more powerful. Yeah. So if you have a molly on your team, that, that slow orb is worth so much more. Absolutely. Now we're into game here. Game two of this series. Uh, if Blackfoot does win it, they will go on to this, the grand finals versus Twin Falls. So, But Middleton can bring it back and go to a game three. And that's always the possibility here. And Middleton? Just, yeah. 
Sporting a, this this comfort comp. If it was a comp that I was going to build, it'd look something like this. I like the sky. I like the only yeah, light yep. stage. Yeah. I think they'll be fun to watch. Um, they have to be comfortable on these characters to make it a good build. I'll say both teams rocking the double sentinels here. So it looks like I they're like ready it. for defense. I like that. Yeah. Um, I think we had too much problem with um, retake. Yeah. And that's, and that's a good adaptation. I like to see adaptations. Good TP Ooh, right away. Kid with a quick TP. Yeah, it's not going to be anything on A, so this headhunter is not going to see very much. Lapis clearing up the 50 50, getting ready to move into Hookah. A good knife. Really sets That's fine too, though. Ooh, that is nice. Can't really play off that when you hear the other utility. You know that's not the only ones. So I saw they had a great game on that KO last game, though, so very excited to see him again. That Marmalade did too. Oh, Marmalade going deep. It's going to totally catch Mullawai. Oh, it takes so much damage and falls. Mulawai had a backup for swing as well. Good positioning. Sees the trendy card. Takes one before going down to Warminch. It is a 4v2 and low health at that. A That's quick a heal very from low. for Sage. TP go down. Remaining. Doubles on Urta. One left. Oh. Nice little dink, but it's not quite enough. Urta takes on Dead End, and that's a first one for Middleton. And that, that's kind of what you need to get started here, for sure. I mean, I think, like you said, Milton, you got to be ready to go. You got to be ready to go win these rounds, especially. These first rounds, these pistol rounds are very important here. You want to make sure that you kind of get that momentum going on forward. You get the first one. You get the bonus. And the one, I also, one thing I did kind of uh, not touch on a little bit during the break and stuff is I, I want to see better econ. And I think what I, mean, what I mean by that is a lot of these teams sometimes are just like three buys, two force, saves. Force, force. Yeah, like, and it's okay to force, but just force together. Be on the same page for it. Don't have three people force, two people yeah, save, or two people force, three save. Like, you want to be on the same page. Definitely. And the thing about a force is it's a reach. You're really trying to just yeah. take this when you're not supposed to. If half your people are reaching and the other half aren't, then you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. You, it, a force has to be together. Absolutely. More than a buy or a save, even. Absolutely. Ooh, Ooh, silence here. That the silence can't can come yeah. on in just the right spot. Plays off of it. He's absolutely cornered here. He can move up, but he doesn't have a lot of options until now. That teleport is finally here, but it's not set. He's going to be moving around against a lot of angles, a lot of verticality. He can't Ooh, move up quite fast. So DD takes on a kid. They own that site. They're coming in. Aurelia, no. They go for the rotate. They take a quick kill. They attract all that. All, all the footwork is on A. Oh, and they're going to fake B, actually. We're to see it's if they the kind run of, and walk. Yeah. Slowly walking here into market. Yeah, the retap. It, it basically brought them from a 4v3 to a 4v2, right? Yep, All they did smoke. was get yep. rid of that heaven. They're oh. playing a shorter game here. Why knows it. Yeah, has a paranoia lined up. Right for that paranoia. Great paranoia. Oh, nice lineup Swing. to take one. one Spray, remaining. transfer, huge. Right to the skull. Mullawai taking his third. Game three. And that's it. Middleton ramping up for three. Bonus in that Spectre right in. And that's a great job overall. I mean, they, they, they played the mind games right there. They did. They act like they were going B. They go straight back to A. They make sure they have the smoke. They have everything ready to go. But, but... They were ready for it. I mean, Blackboard had a, or sorry, Milton had a great paranoia there and double swing from showers as well because they didn't go that split there. They were all in a short. No, the response was good. Mm. I mean, and Omen saw, oh, they're repoking. They're going to be going slow, and they already walled. They already smoked off the back. Yeah. I can play short here. I can send that paranoia in and go and go deep, go hard, like go yeah. melee. And really, really pulled it in. Yeah, I just liked the uh, the the communication there with the paranoia then swing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, nice slow orb right to get out here. We've got a few coming in. Oh, they're going to get free ground. Paranoia goes down. Ooh. Ooh. He stood his ground so long, though, that there was no spray transfer, and they only took a one-for-one. -one. It was worth it. K-Kid goes down to Dated. Orange trying to take one. There's so much screen time, so many body shots here. He does get it, though, on to GB. They've got to try to follow up. Dated going crazy. Blackfoot, low health, but there's only one player to play against. Spike is down. Time's on their side. They don't need to peek. They just need to listen. Yeah, they Marlon's at seeing a third ball. Loose they're crossfire both. here, yeah, ready see. to swing. Warmish gets one. one on turnaround. Oh, the heal. He, he has wall. wall he here. Has, he has wall. Oh, that wall could be absolutely huge. We'll Nobody see if he goes for it. Marmalade, a well-timed. Oh, oh he didn't no. Know he doesn't know. It's not the move. He's on the wrong side. He tries to force it, loses some health. Can't defuse from that side. He doesn't have an option. He's watching the wall. Yeah. He takes it to the ear. Marmalade. Great clutch. 
That was really well played. I mean, he took the time of, okay, well, he has clear sight here. I'm going to play a little cheeky here. I'm going to get all the way to elbow. Play an elbow. He thinks I'm long. He walls it. And the next thing you know, he's there from elbow. So great job playing that 1v1 and playing smart. Just playing that time. You don't have to worry about too much else. And now it's 2-1 to one here. Milton is now in the lead. And now, I say, I don't, I think they tried to force last round. Okay, now they have a, basically a full buy except for one. Almost. So that's, that's as close as you can get, I guess. And we'll take that, that one, that one's rough. That was light armor, too. You think yeah. they're going for an off? No, I think I it's just having, I don't think it, low it was low creds. Okay. He, just, he was just forcing with his team. Rudy you just watch the out. zone. Ooh, a quick trade. See if Blackfoot's got any mind games in store. Absolutely. Call -outs. I don't think so. Looks like they're going to try to force through this Luka smoke. Gets one. Uh oh, that was very uh -oh. vertical. It was fun to watch, but I don't think it got him a whole lot. That trampoline. Wow, three heads. Catches a quick one. Is shot down. Girl behind her takes quite a bit of damage. Two day. Can you take any? Oh, those two get out. He's still watching Nuka. It's not going to be there. Trinity card takes on a day. There's only one Middleton left. He's fighting so much. Ooh, he hears this reload. He's watching that. Even going to send a Paranoia for one man, but that smoke is too good. He tries to play into it because the Paranoia himself, and they're just assailing him with all the utility here. Jebby firing right through the smoke. Bulawai is on oh. so much, but he cool-headed. Takes one out. Looking to force in, trying to grab an extra one. Has another nice smoke. Outro. Has TP as well. Doesn't have time, but he can get greedy. He can take another one. Oh, there it wow. is. Well, why crazy goes oh, oh, absolutely horrendous for another wow. one. Wow. Ooh, Didi finally puts an end to the slaughter by taking Molawai off the table, but wow, he was hungry for I more. almost had that fourth. I that would have been crazy. Would have saved. Oh, I would have yeah. saved, honestly. That's a different breed. Wow, I, I mean, him taking three there is big because the eco as well. I mean, that you got to do as much as you can to the eco. Yeah, and now Middleton, Blackfoot, 2-2 two, two again. These guys' first halves, just like last game, are right neck and neck here. They are, and it is so tight. It's not just neck and neck in points where yeah. they take turns, you know, wiping the other one out. They are, like, down to mind games on the in. Yeah. They barely take sight. There's still people there. The retake is so, it's, like, just neck and neck every, every step of the way. Yep. Pushing on to A. Ooh. A deep read on the B. Crazy angle. TP's out. Quick information with Omen's play. deep read on the B and a play. lot of touch onto that. Headhunter means we get a quick rotation onto A. And the tour de force coming out here. Oh, wow. Sure Day gets a pick onto him with the frenzy. That's huge. Starting to set that so extra utility out. With this save, you want to get as many as you can. It doesn't really matter, you know, if you win or not. Just get as many as you can. Marble does take down Worminch. Worminch. A nice one-way smoke. Let's see if that headhunter can catch one. Jebby doesn't want to push on that. He's smart. Oh. That's two four oh. oh, no. Made contact, but uh, headhunter versus tour de force. Ooh. Oh, gets one of the marshal. Rudy with the Gets two with the marshal. Oh. I would say, uh, more wise. Kind of going crazy here a little bit. Has a lot of, getting a lot of kills. I mean, got two with the marshal there. Oh, I mean. Wild. Bring it to a 3-2 for Blackfoot. Yeah, so close to that edge right there. Oh, too. my god, So close. And it's going to be 3-2 now, but they have to remember that you're, it's going to be back to buying again. So, you're going to have those guns. Should be a little bit more even playing field with everything that in considered. Yeah, we have 3-2 now. And like I said, these rounds are going back and forth here. Very close game. I don't know if he's trying to go a little farther than that or not, but he does clear all of hookah regardless. They didn't. No one's hookah here, but we still gotta check it. Some Nap, discipline there. Nat slow orb, just a little bit shy. Deaded might be able to play off of this pretty well. Ooh, Wormich is not looking the right way. If they jump right now, all the rotation is coming to be. They are low on time. Attacker Killjoy is down. It's gonna keep him off site for a little bit without any kind. Oh, Ooh. really cool play right here. Omen is actually TPing off site here. Okay, he actually did TP. Oh, he full TP? Yeah, you can okay. cancel that as well and actually not get detained. Oh, one to get detained, though. It might have been the Omen. Oh, do you think he was just bad timing? Yeah. Okay, well, it's a f oh, good paranoia. No one peeks off it, though, unfortunately. Yeah. 5v2. It's just watching take. this hole. Playing for time. He doesn't need the kill. He just needs noise. He's doing great. Going to check it one more time. Gave a little bit of space. K-Kid now owns that. Doorway. Oh, good trip to the flash. Comes out on, not to make it. One for one. One for one's worth it. Middleton's only got one left. It's a lot to go against. 
Kick hits kind of being moved up on, oh. takes one, but the side, it's the swing off the contact. And just like that, Blackfoot goes up 4-2. The first kind of the two, you know, rounds, you know, I guess, sway of the game here. So definitely have to be a little bit careful of that for sure. But a lot to go off of still. There's still a lot going on here. Oh, definitely. And I think at any moment, these teams play a lot off of, you know, energy and momentum here. So I think the biggest thing is you got to keep keep coming back. Keep going back on the round. Can't give them too many rounds in a row here so you don't get kind of caught in that slump of too many rounds in a row. Don't let it snowball. That's true. That's a better word for it. <laughs> there it is, the KO coming out. Usually a quick push. I Means all the silence are going to be happening. Not ever, too much silence. Sage playing pretty far back, though. Those distant smokes are still utilizable there. We see the waves start Ooh. coming over from A. Blackfoot's got to play fast wow. if they want to make this a retake. Oh, wow. It's going kind of a crazy. A chance to play against Sage here. A lot of contact. Wow, three people shooting onto that. Catch one not looking. Starting to push up on this guy. They're able to take a Rudy at DD going crazy. Looking for another one. Doesn't happen. Wormage takes him instead. Trendy card's got to play up against that. Ooh. Does get the scare away from there. He's got to be careful about Wormage. Wormage is just being in pain right now. Yeah. Just little pokes. Little Maybe pokes. three and then distracted. He's Double there for peak. the pinch, not for the play. Oh, so much screen time. But Lapis finally clutches it up against Day. K-Kid's the last one here. He's got to play against three. Again, in awkward position. This time he's got better gun in hand, though. Can he make it happen? Oh, you no. No. he goes down, though. He does go down, but that clears out that free yeah. off. You just can't take a, a Phantom on at that range. Yes, yeah, so that silence was really big because he, he only had a Spectre. Oh, well so. played silence. Yeah. Worth the death. Worth Absolutely. the gun. And now it's 5-2 Blackfoot. Blackfoot. They're kind of getting a little bit of momentum here, kind of getting that lead that's kind of increasing. So they got to be kind of careful about that. It is very close, though. Milton has it going. He's going to make a little couple of changes, and it could change everything going on here. And now we have the ults. Got a decent amount of ults up here. We have the showstopper here from GB. Got the seekers from Sky, the res from Sage. Resurrection. We also have, we have two showstoppers up. I'd love to see a little showstopper play here. Yeah, mm, that wall Ooh, is just Green nice. gets to pick right away. That's what they need to get going here. Jimmy breaking that wall is gonna kind of move the attention. Hopefully it gives our Blackfoot friends, in short, a chance to push this hard. It's going to be a rewalk. They're going to go the long way, but they've got one on this flank. Oh, goes Those down. Do come out Spike at the right time, a. though. Okay, Omino coming Ooh. out. Grenade. Yep, that sure enough, that flank Omen Willow Eye takes one. They got to know that he's there now. Anyway, he just planted B. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh unfortunately. It was close. Ooh. A good little probe. Quite a bit going on on the other side. Can't quite jump in here. Goes for it. Ooh, contact. Oh, gets a lot of damage. Reloading. There's already defusing happening deep in. Yeah. There's no chance to get that far. Yeah, so he, Middleton. the only problem with that Omen TP is it allows him to basically have a 1v4 over there because, you yeah, know, his teammates, so, yeah, look how far back he is. Yeah. And so, even at the very least, it's a one, yeah, it's a, really a 1v4 while the other one can just play a 1v1 in this little angle here for TP. Now, that Omen, hop in, put all their attention right in the middle, kind of have them kind of swarm in. It's dangerous for you, but it is, it's the absolute setup for an orbital strike. Yeah. So, that's, it's not... It's a good play, but it has to be done in the right place. I'll say it's unfortunate they don't have any brimstones either. Yeah, so no, it's like, at yeah. all. So, I mean, your, your best call after that is to... Hopefully you can get some picks. Ooh, if if that if that showstopper had been sooner. Or, That's true. Or, I mean, or if, closer. Uh, if he does clear that guy in hookah, it makes it a lot different. Because then you can yes. play from hookah as well. No, but it was good positioning by Middleton. Yeah, it was a great defense flawless. there as well. That's what they need. They keep these picks mm -hmm. right away to really mm -hmm. stop Blackfoot's kind of momentum. Oh, he oh. the gun. He saw both of them. Mullawai calls for backup. This is a good spot good for smoke. smoke. Yep. Yeah, man. A little bit, a little bit of... Uh, Ooh, Marmalade gets one, too. That's Ooh, Mullawai under pressure here. Takes it out. No problem. I'm starting to see that utility come in for damage. Little White's got two right up against him. Cover He's got to be careful. Dark cover a second one. They've got to flee off that. They're too low health. Oh, Showstopper coming out here. Showstopper not going to get I a lot of I think they utility. were just... You... Hmm. Just, just testing. Using it for defense. Oh. Get out of hookah. Okay. You know, he's barking on him. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. No, that's... Uh, 
I forgot about that stat. Okay, here we go. You should run. Okay, good kill drill here. Indeed. Gonna and stall them a bit here. Gonna push him back just a <laughs> tiny bit. It's gonna push him back a physical distance, but Kid Kid still has a nice view onto what's going on. Right, he can't defuse. It's still wasting a lot of time. Makes the melee game more difficult, but uh, Kid Kid's got the range right here against Marmalade. That one way's not quite gonna fall in the right way, but it's still a decent smoke. Has a TP play really aggressive here. Kid gets very oh, accurate the here. Smoke. Absolute muzzle wow. berry. Oh my goodness, in a marmalade Ooh. day, Mulwai do their ones. And what an insane retake from Middleton. They just won literally every single fight simultaneously. That was nice. Parallel processing to the max. Literally, yeah. Everyone got their one there. I mean, look at this activity feed. Yeah, they were like, hold on, 4v4, easy. We all just take one of them. I mean, we saw Korean could go into the smoke, and he actually just gets his one, and then everyone else at the same time is yeah. like, well, I got my one, you. <laughs> you. Hey, one reports, ones. And that's what we, that's what Middle Team needs. I mean, like I said, they, they're they bringing it back now, and it's now 5-4. to four. Now, the one thing I do have to say is this defense Definitely. is going to be a little spooky on the side of Middleton here. Uh, Blackfoot is definitely kind of defense-oriented with that Killjoy and, uh, you know, Chamber for the double Sentinel action. They, uh, they definitely are. It's interesting to see, you know, a Sentinel isn't always, a, a, like, a Sentinel. Yeah. Uh, you, there's, you have a defense double Sentinel stack here yeah. and an offense Like Sage is, yeah, say, yeah. Sage yeah. is a little different. Okay, Ooh, paranoia a good coming paranoia. through. Not gonna get a lot of action. Reverse paranoia. Reverse. Oh, Uno them. What a what a matchup. A lot of dark cover out here. They're gonna start to dissipate. Ah. The attack and defensive smoke yep. back to back. No one's getting through hookah. But that's where the spike is. They know one's in the corner now. They have a nade. That's a huge they opportunity. Do. Ooh, so, so much eyes. Yeah. Oh. Good blast pack though. Rudy was yeah that blast pack. The Rudy spike keeps going pretty down, vertical beat. with those blast packs. And Milton's really holding it down here. Might be able to blast on a shiny here, maybe get some better angles. They're just all holding back sight. Ooh, might run in to steal the spike. What a position. Um, trades the Oni for the glitch pop. Holding on that spike, they Ooh, check it. Wow, great job that I was shooting through that. Does trade though. He does, one which does take Lapis. They're gonna keep just playing right headshots on that oh, spike. Good blast it's back. a good scare, but they get out of there left. with it. 30 seconds to sprint through market and plant. Now, with all that sprinting, um, they've already got someone just absolutely posted up right on top, looking down that truck. Absolutely, it is now. This guy still can take a few. Four, yeah. One yes. enemy remains. They don't have much time right now. Oh Day, yeah. Quick one, K Kid with the follow up. Jebby's one in the middle is nice, but hardly a consolation as the defenders take their fifth one, bringing it to a break. And Korean Kid ties it up. Yeah. I mean, now it's five five. Definitely. Also. And uh, Middleton's doing a great job of defense. It seems like Blackfoot really can't get anything going. And if they do get a pick, it looks like Middleton returns it too. All right. I think, in. yeah, honestly, some great gameplay either way. They do have the two to force up here for this type of attack, but Korean Kid is definitely doing a great job of kind of holding this A site down. You want to play? And there it is. Play. Korean Kid is one point off of that two to force, mm -hmm. so. Okay, here we go. A nice little parallel push through both sides of A. They've got nice crossfire, but they weren't looking forward. A good one-way smoke. It's hard to push that without any decent utility. Goes for it anyways, Ooh. takes the death. Oh, here's the KO ult again. Ooh, the KO ult on the reply. Wow, they gun him down. That cross angle on Bath is ruthless. The plant might get out, but now they know where you're at. Kick him pushing up on that does get punished. And just Rudy like that. Took theirs, and Moai took theirs. And Milton's just doing a great job of defense. I mean, it seems like every time that they go down one, they go up two. So the biggest thing is, you know, they're definitely sticking to their angles. They're not letting, you know, even though one goes down, they're not letting it get to them. They're really playing in terms of that, I guess, defense side here, holding those angles more than anything else and not letting anything ha happen. Now, they've been doing fine here. They're looking to beat this fair half, this even half. If Middleton can take this round, they go to 7-5. Yep. We're looking very similar to last, last game. Last game, If yep. they can ramp that up, mm. bring it to a best of three yeah. third match. Yep. A lot's on the line That is round. a lot of line. And, and, uh, these teams are so close to each other. And, yes. and what, like, 
it's just back and forth and back and forth. It's just whoever has, okay, this guy had a better round, or this guy had a better round. They had better defense this round. I think what comes down to it, though, is like this teamwork, right? Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that we're seeing now in Milton in terms of last game, Milton on defense last time definitely bled a little more and wouldn't trade back. And I think right now what the biggest thing is, is they'll go down one, and they'll come back with two. Like I said, you know, three times now, but that, that's really what's happening at the end of the day is they're, they're really trading back and forth there, and I think Milton's holding good angles and also ready to rotate. Yeah. They're not rotating too early or too late. They're going to wait, let them take sight. Okay, now we'll play retake. Not, not, you're not just like, okay, we're going to keep holding. But you can't hold when they're already on site, you know? So mm -hmm. they did a great job there. I think it comes down to individual skills sometimes in terms of, okay, well, your job is to really hold it down. If you're anchoring, you got to make sure that you hold the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes just a big... Big thing. All now it's things, six five. Yeah, all things to think about at that timeout. Quick little water break. We're back into it. A minute forty back on the clock. We're looking for a smooth push in. Oh, the close knife. Just eject this fifty for you. They are playing one step at a time, just taking what they can get. Backing up off that nade. Oh, he went really wide there. With good the, nade. Oh. And oh, a good and paranoia at yeah. the same time. It's this. Oh, another one. The paranoia is just trying to stay with off. actually his own teammate not there, though. Ooh. Not a good look Ooh. for the line. A lot of faces on screen. Oh. Wow. wow. Nice shot there by GB. And they keep pushing. They're holding that back. Oh, they don't just want the win. They want the kills. Do you the res up? And Seekers. I'd love to see some Seekers. Oh, great nade. You just saw a lot of time there. Salty Lap is just getting that free fire in. Those Seekers do come out. It's a good spot, but they weren't quite followed fast enough, so they're shot down. One left. Oh, no nice. Heal. Wow. Lapis, the laser sights, just the heat vision. Two shots right on a body. Switching sides. And that's a side switch in an even 6-6 six, six half. And yeah, I mean, I guess it's going to come down to this defense and offense side. I think at the moment here, Blackfoot had a really aggressive offense there, and Milton had a great defense there, but you know, now it's time to switch gears. Yep. Gonna yep. be able to attack, and I think Milton is definitely gonna have to use their utility a little bit better here for that for that offense to take. We're gonna have to see some good sky flashes, you know, and paired with the uh, what am I even trying to say? <laughs> the rays, you know, the rays going in and stuff like that. Yes. So and the paranoia. The paranoia's been a big factor here. We've seen some really good ones as well. So we've seen a lot of paranoias that have the two different uses of paranoia. One is just to kind of hold that well, I'll say one is to actually play off of, and then one is to prevent the other team from playing off of their utility. Yeah. And I like that. It's like I a like counter flash. Respecting the counter flash, yeah. exactly. The counter paranoia. <laughs> Ooh. You're scared. No, you. <laughs> no, you. And now we're seeing a nice oh, fan great here. Wow, there. look at oh, this. Oh, so close. Is deep in the ranks. He TP My here, though. Two. So he doesn't have much space. No, there's not a real good escape route here. And they're going to hold it. Oh, look at the flank, though. Yeah, the flank is oh, big. Oh, he gets Takes two. Takes a free two. That's his third, actually. Ready to fight for more. It's not going to happen. Mullawai finally sucks him down. But still. Insane play there. They might have spike, but they've only got, they've got one person. They're going to try to make an A? No? Is it? Is it time to push to A? A is empty. Oh. Ooh, a free kill. It just walks into A. And no one's holding this. Nobody. Nobody. They, it's emptier than my DMs. That place is wide open. Death matches. Death match. <laughs> See, Lapis, can coming. you get Ooh. it? You hear him. Oh, the plant. Oh, gets greedy. Oh, he wants. Oh, he wants the two. No. One gets one. Screen time. Okay, there we go. Great crossfire there. That was scary. Was. I thought for sure they were going to stop the plant, take him from the side, and then just continue on. I know. I was like, wow, he's shot a lot of bullets. Yes. But Blackfoot starts off the half, winning the pistol round, which is important here. Biggest thing is we've seen a lot of kind of eco differences here. So I think, you know, that first round win into that buy with the Spectres and stuff like that is actually proving to be even more valuable than normal. It is. It's really important today. Yeah. I mean, it's a Marshall. It's really important. That, yeah, that's I will a, say Marshall a, has been doing some work. A change in game pace. I remember when the Marshall was basically a never pick. Right? And now we see it. It is so... It, it's important to the force on round two. Well, and it's the always. calls. They're lit 101. The what? They're, oh, they're lit 101. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I love when you just hit the wall and it doesn't actually do anything. Though. You're like, dude, they're lit 101. Yeah. Like, they're one. Like, it's just funny. Okay, great grenade here, though. Does have a alarm bot right there. Maybe it's like kind of a spray angle. 
Yeah, here comes wow, the defense. They are all up there. Ooh, look at that, look at that nade Molly. It looks like it's in the wall it's there. It's interesting. Oh, great shot there. Yeah, don't want that no one. No free mollies. No free mollies. Oh, oh, a good one that flashes nice. Wow. Prevents them from getting any more. A little 360 in there. I don't know if you saw that, but wow, they were playing hard. I would love that on replay. Did you see that 360? Yeah, I mean, they were ready to go. Those little style oh, points yeah. there. And what a great defense from Blackfoot. They were ready for this, oh, too. Look at the stone look at the difference. They have four on site, and they have one over at A. This three-way crossfire is ridiculous. Yeah, and they just take everyone down. Oh, it's shut downs. They gave them, like, one kill. Oh, yeah. And now Milton sh should be able to buy here. I say should. Mm-hmm. I can't actually see their guns yet. 6-8, Middleton should be able to buy. Blackfoot should be able to bonus right out of here. Yeah. A nice quick Say Blackfoot knife. Say a big bonus. Big bonus. Knife is destroyed right away. It gives you some information of, okay, they might be over there. It does, yeah. And if there's any Ooh, utility huge. that's put out on B, wow, this flank. You've got to always Ooh. be watching this flank. Salty Blue, but takes spike one. Down, Gets spiked down. That just changes the win con. Yeah. You don't have to worry about anyone else. Oh, great attack there from A Short, though. Look at the flank. Ormish takes one onto DD. Yeah, that flank. We'll see here. They're kind of holding it, though. Ooh, Paranoia is available. We do see really greedy. Marmalade points. gets one. Trendy card. Watching his spot. He's got two zones to watch here. He knows Malawal and Co. are helping on the other side. Hopefully, Day can watch their spot, but his job is here. It's bad. Oh. oh he takes a lot, but Cake hits. Lot of damage. Sees him from the side. Marmalade. For the Ooh. hero play. Oh, Jebby taking some. Oh, he TP's the bathrooms, actually. That's a cheeky one. That's a good one. Gets a nice crossfire against uh, GV trying to move in here. Didn't get a lot off that. Great look away. We'd hoped. A good look away. A good run away. He's got to be ready for the next one. Day Ooh. sees a little bit of that shoulder. Knows the repeat's coming out. Ooh, doesn't want to feel it. Doesn't want to play that game. Probably looking for a nice, uh, a nice outro. Yeah, cue the music. Yeah. <laughs> the outro music. No. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna say. That's what I'm saying. Just outro kills. He should on the probably save. go down here because this is a bonus from Blackfoot, mm -hmm. and you really want to go down here for that extra money for next round. So you buy that boom box. If he takes a kill and then dies to the storm, it could have been he, – right, he, he could have had it. He could have had the ult next round on Q. Yeah. If he had taken a kill and then gone down to the – I mean, even going down, though, I mean, right, it gives you that one step closer to the showstopper. Mm -hmm. But now you're at 25 armor and a specter when you have full buy and you saved last round. So whatever works out. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Now we should have a full buy here from Blackfoot. Honestly, really good uh, bonus there from Blackfoot. They took two down. So that's going to make it so, you know, two buys are kind of skewed here for the side of Milton. 7-8, though, really close game here. Both teams playing with a lot of passion. Oh, passion indeed. Look at this aggression. Ooh, the dark cover does go far back, but it's enough to back KO off after that knife, and a good knife to be sure. A lot of suppression came off that one. Ooh, dead it in a good spot. Doesn't quite have a crossfire with Loop. Lapis. Paranoia's gone. It's in the Jeff, corner. Oh, take yeah. Mullawai with a quick sweep. Oh, oh, keeps rolling through. Oh, gets two. Spike Trendy doesn't down, have a hey. lot of great options. Yeah, he got rid of his paranoia. He can push back up. Now this is nice. Oh, oh. Great shot there. Just Gets checking, three. Checking all the corners. Yeah. Salty has just gotten them down. Okay. He knows last one is. Lapis looking for one more. Sees just oh that gun. Oh, my God. That's all he needs. Salty is... That was an insane round from him. He gets oh. a 4K and just holds all of them. Like they went to U-Haul. They're like, okay, well, maybe we can get something here. They get one in U-Haul, but guess what? They still had Salty watching that main. No one was getting past him. And just honestly, a great kind of finish out there, too. Little boop. Ooh. That's what we call a bump to disrupt. Uh, uh, okay, I would say, yeah. No, we called it that, yeah. No, we got we got that. It's a Rocket League. Yeah. It's 7 9. Okay, sounds me looking. They're ready thin. for it this time. Didn't walk into it. Ooh, TP's yeah. away. I'm not a big fan of that TP. No. Okay. Ooh, Marie gets has one good pick. position oh, here. An easy one walking away. Oh, they faked it. Oh, no, it's oh. defender, 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 defender. Okay, makes sense, actually. Crazy. Mullawai absolutely owning the site here. That paranoia goes nowhere. That killjoy just is not the spot. Ooh, they own this site all the way to the neck, all the way to the back. It's going to be hard to push through this, especially with that smoke. Smoke finally dissipated up on him, and Deadit has got the chance here, swinging around. Oh, Sees one at bat, Sees one's mid. 
hard to push on that when there's so many paint shells in your face. Oh, Marmalade gets one. Still 3v4. Very winnable zone last one. Oh, not quite there. Oh, Middleton is so good at just playing for time. They don't need the kill, so they don't need to die for anything. Just hang out. Whoa. Going aggressive with that. Oh, so close. Stopper. Honestly, oh. I, I like the save here. Yes. I think that's a good I think it's a good save here. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, keep the glitch pop vandal. Middleton, especially when you've got a player that's so low health. Yep. I mean not so low, he's like fifty, but <laughs> Yeah. It is eight nine though. I mean it is pretty close here in terms of, you know back and forth once again. This time it's a lot different second half than last time, right? The last second time second half, half was literally eight. Like the first half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that I mean, just means that, you know, Middleton's ready to go this time. They are definitely like, hey, we are not going to let that happen again. But the biggest thing is, I, I don't know, I think the biggest thing about Chamber is using your TP to play different angles on the same site. When you use it as a kind of a rotate tool, you can't play those aggression angles. That's fair. And then you're just kind of stuck, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, you Especially if you go the other way around, you don't too. Have, you don't have a jet dash. Exactly. Okay, one for one. And granted, you can't rotate fast, though. It is nice. Trinity card getting ready. A good paranoia. Er, doesn't really get much. Boombot doesn't find any either. Yeah, both teams not committing too much. Nope. Oh my gosh, look at B. Look at B right there. Long, <laughs> Long is... Oh, he teamed back. Okay, there's one there. Ooh, oh, he actually, I'll say he goes, goes down. Goes down. That 1v1 won. Big pick Black there. Okay. Black put up 4-3 now. It is tight here. This is going to be a rough plan. You gotta have one protecting the plant on either side. They do come through though. Day does his one. They get the plant down. They were able to get that was a little bit sketchy, but now they own the site. GB an uncomfortable smoke here. It does dissipate. Oh, oh yeah. Man, that would have been a rough one. Oh great cross right there. there though. A 3v1. Great oh, flash. No it's way. Way. It's two. Oh, oh no, so close. What a turnaround that would have been. Great flash too. It was it was just trying to make it past that chamber to really put pressure on the raise there that went wrong. And I'm surprised that they were able to pull this out and try to send it the other I, way. I would say I just don't think Sky was ready for that third chamber. I mean, he got no. all two of them, but that third one on the corner was a little bit too much. But overall, an incredible try there. No, Deaded was definitely the one to take that round. A lot of support from GB. Absolutely. And we got a game on our hands. Yeah, Deaded, good work. Uh, not peeking mm -hmm. and not getting anything out of it and then having to go back into shadow, but actually waiting right for that reload and jumping when the crosshair was in the wrong spot. And now 10-8. Blackfoot has a two lead. They're now three rounds away. Far. But Milton is definitely not giving up. It is very close. Oh, wow. That's a cool little lineup there. You see how it kind of went good. across. He was not ready for that. that oh, and the ult. Suppress. They don't have a lot of options. They're just going to use yeah, this suppress away. time to rotate. Yeah, I they're, hear they're it. Run away. Yeah, but Blackfoot oh, sees it coming. No, they're no. already sending that chamber back to the other side. Maybe. Oh, didn't have the gun out. Was no. not ready. Made a little bit too much noise, too. They definitely hurt him. Yeah, fast one on a Jevy. Okay, they're Marmalade. moving to sight, and they're just... Marmalade definitely has gone a couple so of these. Strong. Good seekers. Definitely so. They don't oh, really play wow. off the seekers. Oh my goodness! The collateral! And oh. comes in for the third. Mowal gets one in the middle, but it's not enough when Deaded replies. One left. Can he get the ace? Does he want it? Ooh, people are chaining ace in the house. Oh, he beat it. Okay, it's going to be 1v1 here. Oh, oh no! King Kid says not the today. King Slayer. My King Kid doesn't one. want it. Ooh. A second one. It's his turn. It's a 1v1. He Can does he not make have spike. it over. He doesn't have spike, but he has time. 40 seconds styling. Oh, the smoke okay. comes up. That's Gotta a big, that's a big smoke. Cover. Yeah. It's scary. He's got lots of utility, though, and he knows he does. Ooh, that's a tricky one. Can he risk that? Oh, huge, oh, Orly. No, it was so he close. He got the paranoia. He got the paranoia, though. It doesn't matter. He does not have the flash anymore. The smoke goes doesn't out. Have the spike. Oh, oh, the lineup was so close. But Blackfoot takes another one. And that was an incredibly close round, going from ace almost to reverse clutch. Oh, reverse clutch, ace what? Great job there. And now I think Blackfoot's at 11, 11-8 11, here. They have a three round lead. What, what looking a, to close it out. What a play right there with the, the rendezvous, the little spike drop. I, that was yeah, that was a little that was a little teary eyed for sure. Cause I mean that was 
incredible play because then he get rotated out. But the problem was he did, you have to press F there. You have to actually you like actively play, pick, it pick it up. That's a lot of that's a lot of key switching. That's like nine brain though if you can get it. Well, if you play WoW, you're ready. But yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, of course, uh, popped here from Milton. That's yeah. uh, that. Kick it. Okay, Showmaker getting really aggressive. Ooh. A little too much height. Yeah. Doesn't get anyone. Actually it did more damage to himself. Damage. I think? Actually, was that just AoE on himself? I think it was. Or he got shot a little bit. I don't know. Unlucky. Ooh, spike down in Hookah. Down. What a game changer. Yeah, I was going to say, those paint shells would be nice if people were looking to grab the spike. They backed off of it, though. A good call. Mm, playing off that noise, Mulawai. You sound like only you said that. But, mm. <laughs> Ooh, did Oh, oh that's one. No, the turnaround. He doesn't get it. Oh, he, he goes down. His teammate's gone. Ooh, Mulawai. Now, where's the. Okay, they have the spike. I'll say they Omen do. can have the spike. Omen's considering ulting. Yeah, I think he realized that they, they're they going to be able to take site anyways together, so better, yeah. might as well play together. They've got to move quick, though. It is a sight It's race. a 2v4. Dead in makes left. it and is. Ooh. Can he time this? He's not going to worry about it. He sees. He's hoping for the stand up. The dark covers are always in the right spot, though. Ooh, I don't think oh, he saw no, he didn't. Did not see that beanie. Now he is. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, pulls the toward of force. Ramps back up, but there's one right to yeah, his side. So he can peek he's if not he ready. Oh, he's right he's there. He's playing time. He's playing time. No idea. This is a huge play from Day if it happens. Oh, absolutely massive. Day, can you catch Great one? Great paranoia. He takes one. He's just sticking. Takes a second. Mulawai. Oh, oh. Hey, no, but this is an ace for either one. Oh, the four. The four fours. The four fours. All he has to do is play for time, though. Day he does have dogs as well. Dead it's halved. He stops. Oh, oh. Ace. And Day with the ace. Brought to you by Boise State from Middleton. Goes to the storm. And the crazy thing is, if he would have just stuck it, he would have won. He would have had it. But he, he got in his head a little bit too much. Oh. He thought about it a little too much. Mind games. Look at this. Wow. Unreal. This was an ace for either one of them. That is great. Like, like I said, these, these rounds are oh. insane. I mean, both of them having four. That is ridiculous. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Now, and I it's not over yet. I can't speak for Middleton, but I do know that uh, Deadit is the IGL for Blackfoot there. And then being able to take that stance, just go in and wipe most of the team out. Then bring it down to, like, last second defuse. It's crazy. Right off the flank. What a round. Oh, so I'll take it to pick right away. That's just what they needed to get going. Middleton looking for two rounds to bring it to a tie. Blackfoot looking for two rounds to send him home. And Blackfoot's also just looking for that one. Just getting that one really kind of yeah. at least puts your mind a little bit at Puts ease. Middleton on a different. Oh, Blackfoot's instead of playing forward, actually tries to walk back past the. Uh, oh wow! Actually, get the there. paranoia He's off that. That's huge. A lot going in on him. Absolutely tear apart Warmish up there. A punishment for pushing in alone. Lapis. Oh. Almost oh, wow. He gets two. Not quick. Mulawai is crazy. Oh, the boom bot. Taken with the boom bot. Spike A well-placed boom bot. Deaded so low on health. Look at, I mean, look at the members of Blackfoot. Though. They have two Lydia. At one, like, oh, one hit. is so oh. low. And there's that one hit onto Jibi. Erd has got their location known, this though. This is an insane Deaded angle. Lined up. Uh, look you at gotta this hit laser the pin. Okay, I'll say, you got to hit the craziest shot ever oh, to hit this. I'm surprised there's not ADS for this. Yeah, there's no, like, wow. This man is definitely if keyboard you hit behind this, the I monitor. If you hit this, sense time, I'll say, they're just, they're just oh, tiny. Oh, bro, that's a knife out. Oh. oh, no. It was not called there. Oh, he has a blank. Oh! Oh, oh it's all about the bait and switch. Blackfoot. Puts him to a 12, and Middleton only has one mistake Match left point. in the bank. Yeah, and these rounds are so close. I mean, you see one-on-one. -on -one, you see three-on-one -on -one to one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it, that's three rounds in a row of just who's going to be the last one to win. Absolutely ridiculous. And it just comes out of sheer gunplay. And, the, and those tracer rounds going right over the shoulders. Yeah, you're, you're like, whoo! It's so intense. And now it is game point here for Blackfoot. Milton has to win three rounds in a row to go to overtime, not to win, to overtime. And now we will see. Okay, does find at least one. Salty Lapis has had some really good entries. That's kind of what they need here. Dead it gives up that spot to kind of go around the truck. Milton playing slow. They're kind of just seeing what they can get out of mm. Blackfoot. Maybe bait some util. They, like I said, they've only got one mistake left. That's right. This, this is it. Ooh, the back-to-back 50-50 -back checks. I love them. They made the TP moves. 
Oh, the pressure is on Spike and Spike down. is down Ooh. in Hookah. That changes the game. We see the rotations both sides. Oh, ooh, a nice little 1v1. He's cut off from the teleporter. You can't go much further back. He makes the right call. Oh, he doesn't know he's, he's there. too slow. Oh, just barely. Lapis takes one on a worm. It's bringing it to a 2v4. Oh, it's not going to find him, though. They're on the hunt. Day looking Seekers for Lapis available. Right I'll say this is a big secret moment. Oh, definitely so. He's got so much to fight at. You've got to stay right online with the Seekers. Doesn't flash. Him. They get the info from where he's at, but they don't oh, get big that. Flash. 30 oh. seconds left. The Seekers didn't get the crosshair move, and that flash wasn't played off of. It is down to the last piece here. Oh, big flash. Oh, the funny oh. move. He gives him his life, but he turns around. And just Lapis. like that. They did it with a 4K again. And Blackfoot take it down 2 0. Ridiculous. And that was the closest 2 0 I've oh, ever seen in my easily, life. Easily. Easily. Like, that was ridiculous. Wow. That same game was back and forth every round. 1v3, 1v1, down to it, the wire there. Just such a close game. And 4K Duloff. Oh, well played right there. And of course, Idaho Army National Guard is a proud supporter of Boise State Esports. Top plays are presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impre impressive critical thinking skills in the real time. With more than 10 jobs offering you 20k bonus and your degree of choice paid for, the Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out at twitch.tv slash iGuardGaming, and they've helped us so much at this event as well, so shout out to them. We love everything about them, and wow. I mean, wow, indeed. Is there I, anything there, else to I say? I don't even know. I mean, like I said, even though that was a 2-0, that second game was so neck and neck. I mean, back and forth all the time within like two to three rounds. I mean, Blackfoot really just came on top, and Milton has nothing to be ashamed of there. They did a really great job out there. Mm -hmm. Fought back at every type moment and did, a, you know, so many good clutches moments there as well. So Definitely. just fantastic. Just crazy play. Yeah. So and much solid play from both sides. So much. And I, I'm like, wow. Oh, that was, wow. that was that was so exciting to watch. Yeah. That's one to watch again. Uh, yeah, they get so hyped, too. I mean, not going to lie, the crowd is getting hyped, too. Yeah. You're like, woo! You know, like, you're ready yeah, to go. Yeah, I mean, just checklist all the crazy things we yeah. saw. The, the 4K duel. Uh. We saw so many great flanks. There was so many 4Ks. There was a 360 in yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Today in, in this high school Valorant tournament, oh we have literally gosh. seen... This is top of the head. No stats or anything. But yeah. I think we've literally seen seven 4Ks. I think more than that. Maybe, yeah, honestly, more than that. And, of course... Yeah. But he next did thing, the best. yeah, I would say, I, I, I mean, that game went crazy. Oh my goodness! But there was, like, there was so many people. I I'm, mean, there I'm, was literally so many people who just had the rounds. I'm taking my guess for uh, Deddy and Deaded, Deed, Deaded, 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 Deaded. One two. That's my, that's my bet. Yeah. Hopefully, we see a top performer. I don't know. So we get, Salty like, a nice went feel. pretty, did really well in that entries. His KO was phenomenal. Definitely was. Always was, had those entries. That knife gave utility. so much utility yeah. always. And he, he always had the utility going. Yeah. It was always there. Yep. There, uh, was, there was no, there was always flashes. He always had flashes for right occasions. Like on cooldown. Silences, uh, nades to stop them. Great job there. I mean, there's. Both omens, though. The dark covers were yeah, always yeah. on point. They were always right there. Mm. They always got all the good spots. And like, Hookah was never available. Yeah. Long was, or uh, Heaven was never available. And Marmalade. Marmalade and that kill oh, game yeah. just really, you know, went crazy. And Some great ones. Just great teams here. And it was Molly. Yeah, that was another one I was going to say. Molly Y oh. did really well. I mean, Molly overall. Had a lot of good clutches. A lot of great plays. And that KO the first game had a lot of insane plays Definitely there as well. This so. one right here, this ace was, this was insane. A fun one. Like I said, that blind comes in, gets a 5K. That was just insane. Overall, just great play from each team, though. The player of the game is brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes a team more successful, just like Idaho Central's helping members achieve financial success. Molly Way is the Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game, which is deserved. There were so many key players overall there. And I think everyone, there were so many ones that could have got it, too. Like, you know. Oh, yes. Just. Wow, I am so overwhelmed. That was a fantastic. So now, now, mm -hmm. the Blackfoot will now play Twin Falls in the grand finals of Valorant, which will be after the Rocket League finals, which is next. So definitely so. looking forward to that one, mm -hmm. of course. And just insane. Oh, yeah. Overall. Easily. Like, it's just so much. I can't believe it. And so, as you know, we kind of get ready for the next match. Let's share the top five plays presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time with more than 10 jobs, offering 20K bonus and your degrees of choice pay for. Uh, the Idaho Nar Army National Guard is the best team out there. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll have more after this break.
welcome into the very full Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. You are currently watching our coverage of the Idaho High School Esports Showdown. We are getting ready to go into the Rocket League Finals of this showdown. That will be Middleton versus Nampa. These are two teams that we have seen fight hard all day to get here, and we're going to cover their action in a best of five grand finals. I'm your host, Colby D'Angelo Alloway, and joining me to call all of the action is already Nerdy Bird Rain. And because you've been casting most of these games all day, what are you expecting to see these teams improve on? Well, I really hope that A, no one goes into this exhausted. They had an extended break thanks to the Valorant game going so long. That was a fantastic series we just got to witness. But overall, I really want to see focus on punishing a lot of the double commits that we've seen coming out today so far. And definitely focusing on not over committing on goal scoring opportunities because those ended up being the Achilles heel for a lot of players. And then how are these teams going to be responding to the speed and aggression that both of them come out with at the start of the game? What is the easiest solution to stopping and punishing those double commits? Uh, it's definitely focusing on your rotations and making sure you're applying pressure to players without being bunched up. Those definitely help take away their momentum as well as recognize when a double commit's happening because you'll see you have two players on you and then you'll see when your teammates is free. And just as a reminder, this is a 3v3, 3v3 soccer, best of five competitive maps, golden goal, sudden death. And this is the grand final, so sudden death actually isn't too unlikely. So we'll see how Nerdy Bird's advice compares to Doc's keys to the game, which in Rocket League is a set play style, understand your rotations, play, the, play to follow up, and sweaty comms. And Doc's keys to the game are brought to us by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming is the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your competitive gaming journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. So just like you were talking about, those sweaty comms and you need to know and understand your rotations. I mean, there it is. You heard it from Nerdy. You heard it from Doc. Middleton and Nampa will be looking to take this advice into the grand finals. Very interesting enough, we heard both of the coaches discussing under and over amounts for overtime since we kicked off this day with back-to-back -back games having overtime already. Would not be surprised if we ended up seeing that again. Yep. My voice will suffer, but it'll be worth it. 100% <laughs> worth it. I mean, the close games are always the most interesting ones to cast, and we have a lot of people in the arena, as you can see, to get excited about these games going into overtime and having these super evenly matched teams just coming out of it on top. Yeah, so hopefully they, they stay as loud as they were earlier. It is quite warm. People are definitely starting to feel the exhaustion. I mean, these guys, it was early in the morning when we had our first series of the day, and they played phenomenally. So now that they're fully awake, I can only imagine how well they'll be playing. You can also, <laughs> also see our lovely Koba up there on stage making sure everything is organized and ready to go. you got to acknowledge the people that make all this work. I mean, that's our production. That's all the people, the coaches you see running around. Koba, one of our own coaches. Are there any specific players that you're looking to see make some big plays in this matchup? Um, honestly, I really want to keep an eye out on, oh my goodness, my, his name is escaping me right now. <sighs> it's the one that starts with an F or a P. My, I am very tired. My apologies. No, that's totally fine. Um, so Middleton or Nampa, what it's specifically other than... Okay, so the Nampa squad, their advantage going into a lot of this is the amount of speed that they come out with. Mm -hmm. That is their play style, but it also, as I was bringing up earlier, the key that I was bringing up about not overcommitting is definitely referencing them because <laughs> they are guilty of overcommitting on some of their plays because of how quickly they're moving, and that comes down to understanding your core mechanics and your rotations and making sure they're on time despite the amount of momentum you have. And then responding to that aggression is really what I want to see coming out from Middleton. And we're right in game here. Both teams are tossing it back and forth. It looks like things are on now Nampa's side of the field. It currently is Phantom that has... Bluey, that's who, actually, who I was talking about. Also our ICC player of the game from earlier today. That's the one I want to keep an eye on for this game in particular to see how they perform because they also suffered a lot of demos earlier today. And you know what? I mean, you're keeping an eye on them and they just scored the first goal of the series within the first 20 seconds, no less, as we head on to this next 50-50. And it does look like... It is going to be Runo who gets the better touch on that one, followed up by Elite Striker. It will be pushed across the midfield stripe, though, by Pluey yet again in the corner. Now we've got Middleton looking to dig this one out and try to send it to the midfield stripe. Pluey gets a shot on goal, turned away by Elite Striker, heading to the back third on the side of Nampa's side of the field. And it looks like 
that goal is going to be circumvented. They are still kind of passing it around to see if anybody can have an opportunity, but Middleton is doing a valiant effort at defending their goal. Or, excuse me, Nampa. Yes, Clue got a great save off of Runo's shot on goal. Phantom off the back wall, trying to send it to a teammate. Gets disrupted. Getting in those passing lanes can be quintessential to making sure you can facilitate clears. Pluey gets a great shot on goal. Runo, though, gonna stop it. Immediately sniping that one as it's heading in. Runo now at the midfield, trying to grab this off the wall. Possibly looking to dunk it to Phantom. Dunks it too late. So Dragon is gonna be able to send it to the corner. And now Elite Striker is trying to set up a goal, a goal on the Nampa side of the field. But instead, it will stay on Middleton's side of the field here. Pluey shooting, shooting for the goal. Elite Striker is just barely gonna get there in time to defend. Cheats it over to the side, but cannot get control. Phantom's gonna spike it up. Runo's gonna elevate. Neither one of the players went after it and got a touch. Pluey, though, sends it back into the corner. Elite Striker stealing it away, playing it around one. Can they play it around Dragonism? They cannot. Dragon now off the ceiling. It hits off that top ceiling, dunking down onto Phantom. Neither one get possession, but Elite Striker yet again here in the corner, ready to take this ball away, sends it to the side. Can they beat out? GDOT for that possession, they will, but the ball is dead in front of the goal, finally finding a clear to Elite Striker at the midfield. It, Middleton is, has a little bit of breathing room here. Nampa's aggression has finally a, a briefly abated here. Elite Striker is going to try to take that and score on goal. Now it is Middleton on the aggressive side here. Actually, no, it's just going to be completely circumvented. Nampa is back on it. Pluey with that fantastic shot on goal, saved by Fathom. Ball still on the back third of Milton's side of the field. GDOT not giving up on this opportunity just yet. Fathom dunking it down to Elite Striker. Pluey comes in, gets a touch on it, saved at the last minute by Fathom. Elite Striker elevates, can't get a touch on it. Fathom pushing it across midfield stripe. It's in the corner. Pluey looking to get a touch on it, leaves it for GDOT. GDOT, though, only gets a slight tap on it. Runo, with very little pressure, has Dragonism soar over and take that ball away. Already in the back third of Milton's side of the field again. And it feels Feels like this is the way it's been for the past three minutes. Most of this game has been played in Middleton's side of the court, and right as I say that, things are going to flick over to Nampa. But very briefly, as Dragonism is going to take a shot on goal, miss just barely going wide. G dot now has possession, but pops it a little too high above themselves. So Lee Striker gets a shot on goal, saved by Dragonism. And you are very right; there is quite a lot of side control coming out from Nampa. However, it's very low scoring, and it feels like there's a lot of passing going back and forth. So these situations that are being set up, being set up are intentional. They're looking for clean goal opportunities, not just half-hazard shots on goal that are just going in by fate alone. So hopefully we can see some of these start connecting as we're ticking down to that one minute and 30 second mark. And Nampa, again, has been super aggressive this entire time, but Middleton's defense has been insane. Again, most of this game has been played in Middleton's side of the court, and they've only scored one. We had a slight double commit Ooh. there that turned around immediately allowing Middleton to fight goal number one for themselves. Nicely done. Pluey did get a touch on it when it was too far, but then the follow-up from Elite Striker was just unstoppable. The over-rotation and just not rotating back fast enough. Once again, coming back to rear its ugly head, and we are at the It's Complicated Tide one aside. And with only a minute and 25 seconds remaining, both of these teams definitely have the opportunity to score. This is still anybody's game. <gasps> Bruno is just gonna go ahead and do it within five seconds of that 50-50 there. Fantastic job. We love to see that goal go in. It just goes sailing through the net. There was nobody available to stop it. Still plenty of time for Namba to bring this one back. They're looking for that equalizer goal, while Middleton is looking for that extra security goal to make sure they are sitting in a comfortable position for the remainder of this one and one minute and 20 second series. Ball stagnating a little bit here in the corner. Fathom's gonna spike it into the wall. Dragonism off that back wall, does send it across the map, but Elite Striker dragging it down, dropping it to Runo. Runo passing it back up to Elite Striker. They're playing it around Namba, whose aerials can just not reach that ball. Pluey finally gets a touch on it. It's immediately volleyed across the midfield strike by Elite Striker. And now at this point, Dragonism has possession of the ball, passing it back and forth between their teammates here. Still a nose inside of the court. It's going to go over there and back to Nampa. Nampa really needs to turn on that aggression that they had the rest of the match. That is barely going to go wide. We've got 32 seconds left for Nampa to find that equalizer. They're so desperately looking for Dragonism, playing it off the wall to themselves multiple times. Too many touches allows Runo to get in there. Pass it to Fathom. 
of them. Elite Striker comes in for a shot on goal. Pluey turns it away. Elite Striker tries to get the secondary, but cannot find it for themselves. Pluey bringing it to the back third of Middleton's side of the field. Now we have GDOT trying to keep this opportunity alive. Finally, volleyed by Elite Striker. And as we set up here into the final oh! 10 seconds, Elite Striker is going to score, and that seals at least this first round for Nampa. Yeah, nine seconds to score two goals. Pretty gosh darn hard to do in a series that is this close. You might be able to get one just for a morality boost and to close that gap a little bit, but this one might be a GG go next for Nampa. After all, it is a best of five series. And so they can afford to drop the map, and at this point, I think keeping their mentality, keeping their spirits up is going to be the most important thing because two is definitely circumventable. Not in the last, like, 10 seconds, but it's definitely circumventable here. And we, as we see, Middleton actually made 67% of the overall shots. What does this stat sheet tell you, Nerdy? Honestly, it feels like Dragonism and GDOT are something is not clicking for them right now. They typically are very good at facilita facilitating one another. Pluey has most of the shots on goal with Dragonism coming in with one for themselves. So there needs to be the recognition that there's three people on that field. You can utilize one another to facilitate those goal scoring opportunities. You can see how many assists that Middleton had on those shots on goal. And that's important. It's a 3v3 game at the end of the day. and those two extra people on the field are your resources. You need to use them to the best of your ability. And you can't just have Pluey carry. I mean, he's definitely out there trying his best and it's still a close game. So they really just need to focus on the team play. What is the most important part of that? Well, other than understanding your core mechanics and your rotations, it's keeping those comms open. Doc's uh, key of sweaty comms is, <laughs> I know it sounds like a joke, but it's very real no matter what eSport you are playing. If you are not calling that you are ready to rotate to the back post or that you are going to be pushing forward and committing to a goal scoring opportunity, that could be leaving your goal open completely or it could be p removing pressure from a player and leaving them open for the other team so they're able to connect those passes and get those goal scoring opportunities. And you need to have teammates that are gonna follow up on that and rotate back when you're going forward. So let's see if these rotations and those commit team trust and commitments come through here for Nampa. We have Runo once again sending the ball to the back corner. GDOT trying to dunk it down. It ends up with Fathom. So the control here is still with Middleton. Ball going to the back corner on the back third of the side of Nampa. Dragonism trying to play it over Fathom. Can they do it? They will not. Fathom read that one well. Drop it, spiking it up. Now it is with a lead striker, but GDOT finally takes it away. And as we go back in here, Pluey looking to maybe get the ball passed to them by Dragonism here, but no, Phantom is just gonna intercept that right in the middle. They're still on Nampa's side of the field. Pluey is actually on defense here, gonna take that shot on goal. And no, Elite Striker is gonna take it right back. And it feels like Middleton now is the aggressor. Lots of car-on-car -car physical aggression here. Not so much demoing, but just pushing players out of position or bumping them enough to make them lose possession of the ball can be a huge disruption play. You need to learn, learn and recognize when that is happening and learn how to play around it. We did have a double commit there between Runo and Elite Striker. Pluey pushes the ball forward. GDOT dumps it down in front of the net. Is there a tertiary touch from Dragonism? It's going to be a little bit too late. They're going to have to look to center this one back up for a teammate, but unfortunately the pressure's already been put on them. Double commit onto Pluey allows Fathom to find the clear into the back third on the side of the field. Louis is looking to set this up, and actually it's Dragonism that's going to take things into Middleton's side of the court. Middleton is, they are rotating back here, but Run Rune is gonna try to take that over, and right now it's just a volley back and forth between these two teams. Volleys, I understand going for the clears, but you need to have the intent behind it, and that's where having midfield presence and control is important. Connecting those passes, ensuring that, that clear has something that follows it up is also important if you're gonna just be trying to go snipe shots. We've got Runa now taking too many touches, resulting in the ball getting spiked back towards Fathom. Thankfully, their teammate was there. GDOT tries to take it away, overdrives, and we have Dragonism send it to the back corner where Runo calculatingly waited Ooh. for an elite, takes out Pluey in the process. There's our first demo with two minutes and 58 seconds remaining, and Nobody has scored a goal yet. Elite Striker is definitely trying for this, though, at least getting it off Middleton's side of the field here. No, they're gonna, Nampa's gonna send it right back, and this feels like the Nampa we saw more first round, keeping things dominantly in Middleton's side of the field. We are almost at that back half of the game, something I refer to as the back half boost. So that's possible what Nampa was waiting for, is just trying to 
so to speak, gas Middleton a little bit and then come full throttle for the remainder of the second series. Pluey dunking this ball down. Can they get it past the lead striker and Fathom? They will not be able to. Dragonism, though, goes for the assist. It ju goes just a little too high. GDOT, though, able to reconcile and save this one. Can they get it past the lead striker? Just barely, but all three members of Middleton are there. So this is something Namba needs to take advantage of right now. And it looks like they're definitely trying. Dragonism is coming in from the backfield there, seeing what he can do, but there's not a lot that he can do himself. So Pluey's going to come over and hopefully get the pass in there as well. That is all three members of Nampa on Middleton's side of the field. We have a lead striker now looking to take this one up off the wall. They have Runo to help them out. They played around Pluey. They cannot get it past Dragonism, though. With the help Ooh. of Runo, they do manage to keep this opportunity alive. They do take out the goalkeeper as well. Fathom is going to send to a lead striker, but there wasn't enough speed to get it off that back wall to go for the setup they were looking for, so they got to reset that one. Dragonism sending it across the midfield stripe. And the final minute and 35 seconds remaining. What are you expecting from this back half boost that you mentioned earlier? Honestly, that is where things start to get a little bit messy. Ooh, just like you were talking we about. We got a clutch play from Dragonism, but at this point, we haven't seen a lot of demos. You mentioned that, but back half boost typically is when people start to get a little bit shaky. It's when they start, you know, collecting as much resource as possible, hitting full throttle and going supersonic and taking out people on the field to just open it up as much as possible but that can result in you know bad positioning as well so it comes with me needing to meter your aggression so let's see if that happens here Middleton looking for that extra that one goal here to equalize with Nampa they have a minute and 20 seconds to do it and we just saw Nampa do it it took them almost five minutes here to get this first score but Middleton definitely has time to turn it around we have Dragonism having all three members group up onto them, having to lose possession on that ball. Fathom, Fathom at the mid, jumps up, sends it towards the goal. Dragonism saves it, has to play it around Rune Can't The 50-50 spikes up, and it does look like GDOT's gonna come in to help them out. It's in the midfield right now. Elite Striker takes a shot on goal Ooh. from mid, saved by Dragonism. Will Fathom be able to have the follow-up? They're gonna center it off the backboard. Elite Striker can't get a nose on it. And Fathom, to just keep the pressure off of their backside, is going to take out Dragonism. So this opportunity here might shut down or slow down a little bit for Nampa. And it looks like Middleton is maybe setting up for their own push on Nampa here because of that demo. It gave them the space to do so, and they're really pushing this. And in the final 27 seconds, Middleton's got to do something. The time is now or never. Here is where Nampa really needs to make sure they are playing clean Rocket League. Do not overcommit. Make sure you are putting, applying proper pressure and not putting yourselves in bad positions positioning and leaving your goal wide open. We have a shot on goal from Dragonism, turned away by Runo. Runo now looking to turn that into an opportunity to get into a goal scoring position. As this clock ticks down, Nampa's looking to walk away with a Series 2 victory here for themselves. Ball must stay in the air. Middleton's looking to find that equalizer, but it's no. not going to stay alive. Just not quite. And that is one to one. Both of these teams are even so far in a best of five. So this third match, I think, will be really determinant here. What does this stat sheet tell you? Honestly, this tells me that this is very good Rocket League. I mean, yes there's very little accolades across the board for both teams it was mainly a lot of midfield passing and then a lot of volleys i understand just wanting to go for the clear but again it comes with that what is the intent behind that is there someone ready to follow that up as you mentioned earlier those are two very important things and that comes down to communication your rotation and positioning and you know being the proactive team versus the reactive team and for most of that game it felt like both teams were reacting to one another rather than making plans and actually executing those plans and what are some of the plans to make as you go into the final minute 30 seconds when we saw once that first goal was scored? So when you're trying to like commit on a goal scoring opportunity, one of the things that we definitely saw was double and triple commits on someone mm -hmm. who's going for that shot on goal. And something that you'll hear brought up by some of our own Rocket League players is when that happens, that puts all three of those defenders out of position because all three of them just tried to go for that save. So that means yep. that follow up touch is the thing that's going to instigate that goal to happen because now they're, they're not going to be able to, to stop that second touch from going in so having that follow-up and planning for that making sure that someone is ready to be there so there's someone waiting at the mid and that push person pushes forward and someone else rotates back and they take that second touch sometimes it'll take a third touch but having the follow-up is what you need and follow-up is very important and is what's going to enable you to counter a goal if you get a successful defense here as we set up on Middleton's side of the field we have a lead striker dunking the ball down here to GDOT. Fathom's going to go in and challenge them. It's going to get spiked up. Runo can't touch the ball before Dragonism gets their nose on it. Unfortunately, some awkward ricocheting will happen. A lead striker takes the ball all the way to the back third of Nampa's side of the field. GDOT off the wall. 
Sends it forward just a little bit. Can't find the clear. Bluey looking for it now themselves. Takes a couple touches in the air. Dragonism comes over them, dragging it down. It's right with the lead striker, though. They take it away immediately off the ceiling. Bluey has very little pressure on them. They have the opportunity to send it to a teammate, but Elite Striker disrupts that opportunity as it forms. And as Phantom now has possession of the ball, we'll see if their Middleton... If, and no! The ball's just going to get stolen, even as Middleton takes things over in the Nampa side of the fort. Bluey looking for that defense on... or shot on goal there. Excuse me. J.Dot seeing what he can do, but with two members in net, this is going to be a hard goal to get. We have a lead striker pop the ball up. Louis looking to center out to Dragonism. They find the connection, but Fathom reads it well. Redirects it to the side. G Dot going off the wall, looking to redo that opportunity, but it drops down right on top of the lead striker. But right now, ooh, multiple middle to members members will stack on top of each other. Instead, they'll take out Pluey, slowing down the assault coming out from Nampa. It feels like most of this is a giant like mosh pit of Rocket League players as all six members tend to be in the same place at roughly the same time. And that it really impacts your ability to control the field and fact and it's happening a little more frequently than we'd like to see it so spreading out and getting those rotations is very important at this point can't control the field if everybody's in the same spot right definitely let's see if that starts to clean up here we have Pluie over on their own back third they have very little pressure they've got time but they give the ball too far forward and it allows elite striker to pass it to runo runo spikes it up to give it back to elite elite can't get the better touch on it though gdot trying to get possession of it has fathom Spike it off the wall. Fluid plays it around one, but cannot play it around Elite Striker. And then it's sent back in, but Middleton is again shooting into all members. Actually, no, Nampa is coming out of their goal now as all three members of Middleton fall back to try to defend there, just like you were talking about earlier. GDOT shot on goal was turned away by Fathom, Ooh. and then Dragonism goes for another shot. The follow-up so from close. GDOT, though, was just a little bit too late, so the reposition was able to happen now. Pluey saving that goal scoring opportunity from Fathom immediately volleys it to the back there to Milton side of the field. And it looks like Elite Striker is just going to send that over into Nampa's side of the court. Dragonism says no, immediately blocks that. And now the ball is just getting passed back and forth in midfield. Not really close to either team's goal right now. Lots of midfield passing. I'm seeing a lot of give and goes from Middleton. They're definitely trying to make sure that they are avoiding getting pressure on themselves. But in doing so, it does not seem like they're setting up quite, uh, setting up opportunities fast enough. So they're still being taken away by Nampa. Fathom, though, finally saying that's enough. Artie, shut up. I'm going to try and score a goal. They do, but Bluey takes that one away. We have all three members of Nampa stacked up here in the goal. This could be ugly. One goes for the challenge. It's spiked up high. Bluey is looking for a clear here. Runo gets the touch on her line. Elite striker to follow up. And as we go here, Fathom is trying to see what they can do after that off the sideboard there. Seeing what we get. Elite Striker is the pass. They will not be able to follow it up and get that shot on the goal. So they have to set up for another one here. And it looks like Dragonism is just going to completely subvert that. But Fathom gets the ball again. Fathom's going to shoot. Whoa. It goes just barely wide as it sends careening back into middles inside of the court. Elite Striker off the wall. Sunders it up for Runo, who dunks it down in front of the net. It is saved by Dragonism, though. Runo not giving up on this opportunity. Pluey rotating back towards the net to allow Dragonism to just barely poke that one off the wall. Fathom looking to set this up for a teammate off that backboard, but the momentum wasn't quite there, so Elite Striker has to reset up. Runo looking to do it again. Dragonism just goes up Ooh. for the save. It's so close. That was definitely anxiety-inducing. Oh, my God, God there, there it is. is. And that is Middleton with the final goal scored in the last 58 seconds here. Now, at this point, if you're Nampa, you are in a very uncomfortable position. It's winnable, but with the amount of time all of these goals have been taking, Nampa has to completely adjust their strategy, and they only have 57 seconds to do it. You are 100% correct. Honestly, Pluie is a great shot score. <laughs> As I mentioned, there it is. Pluie. Thank you. All right, so now we are at the It's Complicated 0-0. Zero, zero. Both teams have one goal. Might as well be none on the board. Yes, I understand it took a while. It took a lot of work. But uh, it'll all be for naught if no one scores another one and we end up into overtime. So let's see who can do it. They've got 51 seconds to make magic happen. That was that hat trick there. And I mean, I don't know what more magic you're asking for other than that goal up to 50-50 immediately after that will not be the case this time as we are reset back into midfield passing. Pluey off the wall, sends it back to GDOT. Unfortunately, GDOT got there a little bit too late, so Fathom's able to push it forward. Dragonism's gonna go for the challenge against them. Fathom above him, looking to set it up for a teammate, but the teammate oh, went a little bit too high. GDOT trying to spike it down away from Runo. Pluey now bringing it up the side, has multiple members of Middleton <gasps> on them. Goal, shot on goal from Fathom, saved by Dragonism. GDOT now has the opportunity to bring it up the side, is going to pass it back, but does not communicate it fast enough. Oh, oh my gosh, there it is! Middleton, 14 seconds. 
minutes left on the clock. Two goal lead right now for Middleton. This looks like and this is definitely a difficult task or, and situation for Nampa to overcome. Dragonism just barely couldn't get back there fast enough. Nampa at this point is going to need to get another goal off of the 50-50. I mean, we saw GDOT do it once in this game and they did it earlier today in another one. However, ball is on their side of the field, not a situation they want to be in. GDOT forces it forward. It's in the back third of Middleton's side of the field. Ball needs to stay in the air if they're just even going to look for that extra nope. goal. Oh, oh no! no. Flutie! Okay, all right. That almost ended up three to one there if Flutie didn't come in there and save that. That is Middleton up two, or up one, two to one in a best of five. Nampa still has time to turn this around. What does this stat sheet tell you? Honestly, it, it's saying the same story that I saw earlier, which is they are not utilizing one another as much as they could be. I'm not seeing as nearly as much give and goes happening from Nampa as we are seeing coming out from Middleton. You would see opportunities where a player could have just easily gone for a solo play, and instead they would just give it a slight tap or tap it back to a teammate, and you would recognize when that would happen because someone would immediately come forward and get possession of that ball. So making sure that you're facilitating one another and not just trying to be the solo star is very important right now because that scoreboard and those stats are reflecting the fact that they are not utilizing one another enough. And the fact that everybody tends to be more or less grouped in the same place, it's a little bit unfortunate in terms of field control, but the benefit it gives you is that there's always somebody there to follow you up if your whole team is in the same place. Yeah, so hopefully <laughs> they, they start to spread out a little bit. I understand the urge to want to be all bunched up, but if you think about it, if all three members of the enemy team are together, they are applying a pressure to either one person or two people. Someone can break away. You can be the opportunity to open up the field for your team. You can be that cherry picker. And being in a cherry picking position can be very powerful in this game. So let's see if Nampa starts pulling out some different strategies, starts working on that spacing and rotating, rotating in this game. Because now this is match point. It's all or nothing. Match point for Middleton. Nampa has to win this if they want to stay in this best of five. And, I mean, it's been pretty back and forth between these two teams. So they're definitely still in it but uncomfortable. We have GDOT go for a goal scoring opportunity off the backboard, but there was not a fast enough follow up. Dra Dragonism sending it towards the goal shot on, saved just barely by Fathom. Honestly, I thought that one was just barely gonna squeak by. Now we have Pluey sending it to the, Ooh. all right, Pluey. All right, now do it again. Pluey's gonna get it for Nampa. That is Middleton down nothing to Nampa's one. Within the first 30 seconds, it feels like if Nampa doesn't score within the first minute or minute 30 seconds, they're going to wait until, like, the final 30 seconds. Nampa is very much not a middle of the game. They are, bef they are beginning or they are end. Yeah, that typically comes with the we either play defense or offense style gameplay, and Nampa is definitely the offensive team. However, that does mean that they need to keep the ball off their side of the field. And side control has been dominated by Middleton in the last two series. Let's see if they can start using their speed to their advantage and using the field to their advantage to gain that control they need. They're doing a little bit of passing back and forth in midfield. No shots on goal have been made so far within the last little bit. Dragonism is going to try to break that, take it away. Fluey cannot do the same thing. He passes it directly to Elite Striker, who's going to intercept that and send it to Runo. But things are still on Middleton's side of the field. Runo no. unfortunately missed their touch on it. Shot on goal from Fluey. Did get saved by Elite Striker. Elite Striker and Fathom now here in the corner. You can see Elite leaving the ball for Fathom right there. Dragonism does come in though and apply pressure 50-50 between Elite and Dragonism does result in, in GDOT having to come in and help out. Ball is going above Pluey. Is there going to be follow-up from Dragonism? There will not before Elite Striker brings this ball onto the back there to Nampa's side of the field. Phantom and Dragonism are going back and forth here. Elite Striker with a shot on goal. It's going to score. Tying up this game with three minutes and 23 seconds remaining. This is still anybody's match in the grand finals. Best of five. This is match point for Middleton. So if they get another couple goals, they can cinch this against Nampa, but Nampa is not going to take that lying down. We have some fantastic playmakers coming out from the side of Nampa. However, as I mentioned earlier, it's just communicating when you're going for that. So someone's ready for the follow-up is very important. We have Dragonism going to make a great play. Pluey was actually there this time, but then just getting in the passing lane is Middleton anticipating, being calculating about what is going to happen. Nampa is still forced to respond. And it looks like things are in Middleton's side of the court, which is great if you're a Nampa fan and want them to win today. Jada is going to get that shot on goal, unable to make it. It will be saved by Bruno as things are still in Middleton's side of the court. No, pass back to midfield. Fathom slowing down a little bit here. Has GDOT apply pressure? 
Runo's going to come in and get the ball across that midfield stripe. Dragonism looking to find where this ball is going to land. But before they do that, we have the shot on goal from Runo. Pluey trying to send this one to the side. Leaves it for Dragonism. Dragonism now taking it off the wall. Going to do some fancy aerial Ooh, play. Fancy. Are they going to go for that flip reset into the goal? Before they hit the ground, though, they collide with two Middleton members. You could hear the arena starting to go wild oh, as no. Dragonism. Oh. No. There's nobody there. Dragonism's going to get there, though which is huge. Runo just went barely wide to the right and Dragonism was able to get there in time and get the demo on the Runo. Runo has respawned now and Blue is just gonna take out a lead striker in the process. Can, can Runo take this ball away? They apply enough pressure, but GDOT gets it into the back corner over here on Milton's side of the field. Elite striker trying to center it up for a teammate. GDOT though, in that trade picking position, almost gets a touch on the ball. Pluey comes in to follow it up. It's gonna be a little Ooh. bit too high. Is there a secondary touch? There was almost, but Elite striker just barely beat Dragon to that ball. Crossy best defender there. I think that's a very good example of that back wall and crossbar subverting a goal here as Dragonism is going to pass thing di directly to Fathom actually as this midfield pass is just still the thing we've been locked in this whole best of five it's still happening. We have crossed past that last what could be Ooh. 100 seconds of this series. We are still tied one aside. Pluey looking to find a goal here. No. Almost oh, got the no. crossbar. Are they gonna? No. Oh, that was very nice. You see. Barely there. Are, is that save going to come out? You can hear the crowd feel the oh, no. dragon. I'm still going to get it anyway. Oh, Nampa no. wants this. They are not just going to let Middleton take this at match point here. Oh, they want it real no. bad. And that is Nampa up one in this back half of the game with a minute and 11 seconds remaining. All right, Middleton, I know you saw what I just saw. Shake it off, keep going. I understand it happens. It's Rocket League. If you weren't there, it was gonna go in. You being there just made it happen a little bit faster. Gotta keep working for that second goal now. You guys have a minute to do it. Fathom is gonna push this ball forward to the midfield stripe. It goes over Pluey. They just have to beat out Dragon and possibly go for the demo, but Dragon's gonna grab it off that backboard before any of the Middleton members can touch that ball. And it looks like things are still in Nampa's side of the court, so Middleton is still in this. Elite Trekker passing it over to Runo, who's going to pass it back to Elite Trekker. But no, Blue's just going to intercept that and take it on to Middleton's side of the field. No, it's back into midfield. Middleton's got to come up with something clever within the next 33 seconds if they want to score just to take it into overtime. We Ooh. have Bluey go for Oh, Ooh. no! This is not what Middleton wants if they want to take this round and win the grand finals. Yeah, that, that was just anxiety inducing. We, uh, I am thankful it did not roll in. Ball though is still over here on Milton's side of the field. Dragonism looking to get this ball to Oh, there it in. is. Finds a pin drop right down into that net. Nampa currently in the lead, three to one, and the clock is ticking away. If they win this one, they too are at match point. We have 10 seconds remaining. So it looks like Nampa is gonna take this round, Milton. Kind of got a GG reset for this next round. Nampa's not going to let them do their reverse sweep. And this is a best of five that looks like it's going to go all five rounds here as Nampa's going to take this. And clock strikes zero. Nampa has their second game in their back pocket. And ooh, definitely telling a different story than what we saw earlier. Talk to me about that story, the role reversal. I mean, you called it out. There was a lot more passing happening from Nampa, and there, early on at the beginning of that series, we could see where goals were being set up and the follow-up was being set up as well, but they were recognizing that they were just doing it too slow because someone else from the side of Middleton was just getting in for that rebound and preventing them from being able to follow up on that second touch, and in some cases, the tertiary touch. So they rectified that and managed to find an extra goal. One of them, yes, was from Middleton, and we'll just disregard that. And and this is still very much so anybody's game. Yeah, I really genuinely hope that everyone on that stage is taking a moment to just take a deep breath and treat this one as though it's 0-0 zero, zero and just play the best game of Rocket League that they have had thus far in their high school Rocket League career. What about Dragonism, though, doing some amazing clutch individual play that let Nampa win that last round? 
you, I mean, I, you are 100% correct. They did pop off, as, as did Bluey. But when you are in that position, it can also put a target on your back, and you could spend a That's lot true. of time on the respawn screen. So at that point, you got to have a lot of trust and faith in your teammates to do exactly what you just did. And honestly, you got to hope that they do it better so that more goals are <laughs> scored. Absolutely, Here's Things are still in Middleton's side of the goal. Nampa with that initial aggression. Things will transition on the Nampa side of the court here. Dragonism does not want that to stay in the red for very long. So put get a pass it to Plutie, who has almost a shot on goal here. Elite Striker is going to subvert that, but oh. just barely save. Ooh, and get the demo on the Jada. They have respawned just in time. The ball is being corralled here in the corner. Dragonism is going to bring it off the wall. It's going to go immediately, though, to Elite Striker. They need to spread out a little bit in order to take this ball away from Fathom. GDOT collides with them, forcing them to just leave the ball for a few moments. Ooh. Oh, oh. Goes for the shot on goal. Elite Striker goes for the shot on goal. No. He's looking for the pitch down. And the nose on the ball finds the perfect angle. Middleton's finally going to get it after not one, not two, but three shots on that goal. Plutie was just unable, just went too far forward, and the ball goes right behind them there. And that is Middleton up one in this final round of the best of five. Both teams are tied, and with three minutes and 49 seconds remaining, Nampa can easily turn this around. I mean, when you have three shots on goal, how can you expect one person to block all three? Oh, so yeah. hats off to Bluey for blocking the first two. And, you know, hats off to Middleton for finding that third touch. Now, ball at the midfield. Dragonism is going to play it off the wall to GDOT. And it's going to be a 50-50 between them and Runo. Fathom trying to play it around two members of Nampa, but it's going to get spiked over them all the way towards the goal on Middleton's side of the field. Dragonism going forward again as the ball is played directly to him. He's going to teardrop oh, down no, into the net. No way that makes it. That was from midfield. There were two members in net on paper. That looks impossible. But Dragonism is going to pull it out anyway, tying this, f this round five in our grand finals. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I, I swear that every single Rocket League player is like a physics genius in disguise because <laughs> I too agree that that should not have gone in, but Dragonism's gonna be like, no, no, I'm telling you, that was calculated. Come to college, major in physics, just play better at Rocket League. That's the long con here. <laughs> yes. Elite Striker is going to get the demo uh, demolition on the Plutie. Elite Striker's taking it over in the Nampa side of the field. Ooh. No, they will be forced to defend. And this is that passing that you were talking about back and forth between the two teams. Oh my Except gosh. it's not in midfield. So the risk of those goals are constantly there and Nampa wants to score. I mean, yes, do, do the passing, but... Not in front of the goal. Please, no, not in your back third of the field. Passing in front of your own goal is like stressful. Dang it's dangling the carrot in front of someone, and it's, it's oh, oh. And the demo on a dragon is to stop that. Is it going to be enough? It might be. The pressure slowed down. The clear at the mid is there, but Adam doesn't rotate forward fast enough. Shot's going to go off the backboard. And there's going to be a secondary touch. Is it going to be enough? No, it does get cleared all the way back over to Nampa's side of the field. If there was not a demo, Dragonism would have scored for Nampa there. So that was a huge demo that came out here. As we're still on Nampa's side of the field here, no, they're going to pass it over to Middleton. But Fathom is right there to pass it back. But Jadon is going to intercept oh. that. But then Runo's going to be right there to stop that shot on goal. And things are back on Nampa's side of the court. They have to reset and try to get a good push. Oh, oh. it's Fine. in. It's good. Phantom's going to score that goal, taking Middleton up one in the map five of the grand finals. Fathom, this is a beautiful flick into that goal. Oh, yeah. Louis did the best that they could. They went for it. Mis miscalculation. We still got two minutes left, though. Nampa can bring this back. She's so still got to play very clean Rocket League. They were all there, and Fathom oh just shot. Oh, my gosh. It right oh in exactly gosh. like that. That's what you want to see. Fathom with the sh movement going past all three members, and then immediately after that gets the goal off of the 50-50. Fathom. Fathom says, get in the backpack, and let's go, guys. I want to win this. Going into the next kickoff, GDOT does get the better touch. Bluey is there, but is a little too slow responding to a Dragonism off the back wall now trying to play it around. Runo can't find it. Ooh. Shot on goal going to be a little bit too wide. GDOT is going to get pushed away by Runo, leaving Bluey to take care of Fathom. It's going to be passed over to GDOT. Now there's a lot of space here. They have opportunity to actually find connections, but GDOT, unfortunately, will have to challenge Elite Striker. Dragonism comes in to help them out. Runo immediately sends the ball right back to Dragonism. 
Elite Striker now pushing forward. There's no one in that goal for Nam, but thankfully they've rotated back in time. J Dot just barely gets there in time to take it away. We see Dragonism rotating back all the way to net as Elite Striker and Fathom are trying to set up the passes to get that goal. Runo still in Middleton's own goal, stopping the push there. And it looks like this is just passed back and forth. Nampos really needs to score this right now. No! Oh, 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 they oh, get oh, it! Yes. That is Sampa! Two to Middleton's three. But that's what they need. If they want to tie this and take it into overtime, they just need one more. And you can see that Runa just got bullied in that corner, pushed around, so that that goal just went sailing right in. It's doable. A goal in Winnable. 55 seconds is very doable. Is it easy? No, by no means is it easy. We do have Dragonism looking to create that opportunity very quickly, though. Bring it across midfield. It's going to drop it down right by Fathom, though. It's choosing to push him away. Oh, no! Oh, oh, no! There it is. is. That's the tie. That's the tie up in the final 44 seconds here. The teams are tied in our final best of five. This is match point for both teams. What is? What do we need? to win this? What does either team need? 100% you need to remember your core mechanics and not let this timer nor the score or anything else get to you. Focus on clean Rocket League. The other team will create the mistakes for you if you are playing the best and most clean you possibly can be as we have Fluey take out Fathom, mm, dragging him in the corner. So, uh, the respawn has happened. GDOT, though, not giving up on this opportunity. Pushes it too high. Elite Striker finds a clear. Pluey trying to stop it. It goes right over them. Thankfully, Dragonism's there to push the ball right back forward. And it looks like this is a lot of that midfield passing that we've seen a lot of both teams do. No, it's transitioned to just to shots on Middleton's goal here. But Runo is there to subvert that first one. Subverts the second shot. And then Dragonism gets back in. Oh, no. he goes in. Then you got it. There are five seconds remaining. If they want to win, they have to get this. If they want to even take it into overtime, Middleton needs to take this goal off the 50-50. Off the 50-50, Runo gets the better touch. Fathom's there to follow it up. Now this ball needs to stay, stay in, in the, the air. air. But Dragon is going to suck it down. Suck it down. And that is Zampa, the winner of our Idaho High School Esports Showdown, doing a fantastic job. That was a close have got to feel great about everything that happened there. That took us all the way to map five, and Nampa was actually, they come they came out our victor, but they were down maps before they were able to tie it up and win the Idaho High School Esports Showdown. And the Idaho and the Idaho Army National Guard is a proud supporter of Boise State Esports. Top plays are presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. With more than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for, the Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out on Twitch at iGuardGaming. And you know, they're sponsoring a super hyped event. I mean, you can see the arena right now. Like, that was great. Everybody's feeling great. That was an amazing match. This is peak high school Rocket League that we had the honor of casting together tonight. And with that, are there any specific players that you'd like to highlight for player of the game? Um, and mine's going to go to Dragoni because, I mean, in the earlier series, I didn't give it to him. So, so this time, I got to give it to him. That's fair. What are the specific plays that you really thought made him come through here? I mean, I'm not the hugest fan of the Hail Mary plays, but you know they work out. This is that's a, fair. In these series, you got to go for them, and you know if you feel it, if you feel like you're in the groove and you you do those opportunities and they pay off, which they did, you know, I, I can't argue with it. And Dragonism is your Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game. The player of the game is brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes a team more successful, just like Idaho Central's helping members achieve financial success. Dragonism is the Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game. And just like you were talking about, they were we had our award ceremony last night. They were the clutch player for this Idaho High School Esports Nampa team. They did a fantastic job. They were always there when you needed somebody to pull through. Dragonism's got you. For sure. And honestly, congratulations to every team that we got to see here tonight. You guys all did a fantastic job. Hopefully you continue to love this game as much as those of us here in, in the eSports program at Boise State do. Keep doing what you do. Keep playing. Keep having fun at the end of the day. And also, just a quick note, 
Nate, the Nampa coach, hopefully you can take this, go to your principal, go to your district, go to the head of your district, be like, look what we can do. Please give us varsity status now. I hope this is the last, you know, keystone piece that you need for your guys' program to go that far. I mean, winning always helps. When you're trying to advance a program, winning definitely is always one of those things that will help you do exactly that. So hopefully we'll see even more great things from Nampa and all of these amazing high school players. Do you have any final thoughts after our Rocket League? Grand Finals Idaho High School Esports Showdown. My final thoughts are really what pulled through here was great passing midfield play and playing to your teammates' strengths. Facilitating one another is one of the biggest things you can do. I mean, it pays to be the silent player on the team, just fitting in to make sure that, you know, if someone's really good at taking shots, you allow them to do that. So you yep. fill in the role of making sure you're rotating back. Being that missing piece can do so much for a team. So honestly, play to your strengths and help facilitate the strengths of your teammates. And that is exactly what we did. Dragonism's team set them up all night. And as we get as we get ready to as for our next match, because we've still got more high, more Idaho High School esports showdown. And the Valorant Grand Finals are immediately after this. As we get ready for the next match, let's share our top five Rocket League plays presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. With more than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for, the Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. We're going to take a short break and enjoy these top plays.
Sports Arena. We are still packed. We are still hyped here. We have the Valorant semifinals. Er, we have the Valorant grand finals, excuse me, after this. But first, we have third place Wood River versus Jerome in the Idaho High School Rocket League showdown. Tonight, these are Wood River and Jerome. These are teams that have been fighting hard all day. I am still your host, Colby D'Angelo Alloway, and still joining me to call all of the action is already Nerdy Bird Rain. And so you've been there before as a player. What does it take after losing a semifinal match to come back and play for third? I, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record because I know I say this all the time. It's a complete mental reset. You definitely need to kind of center yourself all over again. If you've been sitting down for a really long period of time, stand up, go drink some water, even walk outside if you have to, reset your mindset, because at the end of the day, you're still going into this and fighting for a championship title. It may not be gold, it may not be silver, but you're still going in for a title. This is something that Doc has taught us here. It's referred to as silver medal syndrome, perspective bias. Yes, you want that gold, but you're gonna get something a little bit less. However, that is above what everyone else that you faced up until this point was able to attain and achieve, and you also are not just just winning this last game for yourselves, you're winning it for all of those teams you defeated so that they can say they at least lost to one of the best teams here at this tournament and in general here in the state of Idaho. So make sure that you are treating this as it is every other game and it's just as important. This is the first game of the day. It's the first game of the series. It is tied 0-0. No one's in the lead, and you're, you play like it is, honestly, you play fresh, you play clean, and you make sure you don't walk away feeling like you underperformed because of your mental mindset. You leave everything on that virtual field. And you talked a little bit about it, just like going and getting some water or something like that, but like humans don't come with a reset. So what specifically have you had success with in resetting that? Well, for me, it's definitely been the standing up and walking away from my desk. I take my headset off. I have told my coaches or my teammates like, hey, I need a minute. And I just completely walk out of the room. I close my eyes for a second. I like one of the things that I'm pretty sure everyone in this room who's played competitive games can relate to is yep. you step away from the computer and your hands are literally like shaking. You're vibrating. You are just, your heart's going a thousand miles an hour. It's important to calm yourself back down and just trust in your own skill and ability because you deserve to be here. You deserve to be fighting for every single one of these titles and you need to try your hardest no matter what the outcome of these matches are to know that you gave it your all. Absolutely, got to reset, go back to game one and Doc's keys to the game. This is more mechanical in Rocket League, set play style, understand rotations, play to follow up and sweaty comms. And Doc's keys to the game are brought to us by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming is a premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your competitive gaming journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. And more mechanically, what would you like to add to Doc's keys to the game to help these players succeed and get that championship title? Um, definitely focusing on ensuring that you are connecting passes, that you are not slowing down and taking too many touches because that gives the other team time to respond and make you respond to them attacking you. And the ultimate goal of Rocket League and most esports is to be the proactive team rather than be the one caught on the back foot having to respond because you're picking up the pieces in that case. You're not the one making the plan. Have a plan when you go in and know what you want to do and be ready to adapt your plan if necessary. And so a lots of outward aggression, lots of planned outward aggression is what's going to get these teams that title that they're so after here. We do see Halo Thief is the first one with the ball, is going to pass it to Astronic, actually. And actually, no, <gasps> Bubbles V8 is just going to score round one for Wood River within the first couple seconds of the game. 
Bubbles earlier today scored a few spicy goals, and I think they're going to put quite a few up on the board this one during this game as well. But for the side of High, uh, Highland, I'd also like to point out that we have Snap put in immediately, where Snap was rotated in later in the series earlier today. So possibly having them in is going to be their key to victory here. One goal deficit, not that hard to overcome. Especially with four minutes and 36 seconds remaining here, and with Snappy and Jizz in control of the ball here. Bubbles is going to find the clear. It's going to go across the midfield, though. Snap was waiting for it. Astronic does take out Halo Thief. We have a shot on goal. Turned away by Bubbles. The secondary touch from Cheez Uts is going to be turned away as well. Astronic going for another one. All three members of Wood River are bunched up. Not something they want to be doing when they're getting a clear like this because the follow up's not going to be there fast enough. You got to spread out, control field space. Halo Thief goes in, pops it to the side. It's going to be their own follow up, but overdrives, tries to get another touch on it, but it does not have the momentum. So Astronic finds the clear, sending it to the back third of Wood River side. It seems like most of these Wood River shots on goal have been single players attempting to do something rather than coordinated team efforts. And if they want to continue to win this and keep scoring goals, they're going to have to get the rest of their team involved in their scoring efforts. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. That follow-up is very important. Having trust and faith in your teammates to be your follow-up is also important. Yes, you want to be a, you want to get flashy plays. You want the highlight reel. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it won't win you a game. And we do have actually uh, our UI is incorrect currently. Apologies to those of uh, you, those of you watching on Twitch. That is Jerome. They have found their equalizer goal. So both teams now looking for two. One to bring them in the lead and one to have them in a security position for the remainder of the series. And with three minutes and 33 seconds, this is still anybody's game. It did take Jerome a little bit longer to score that first goal, but the game is still tied. And anybody's match as Astronic is in possession of the ball. Astronic plays it around one. Bubbles dunks it over them, though. It's going to be in the back third on drum side of the field. Snap is going to manage to push it forward a little bit, but does not have enough follow-up. Chizitz will finally get the clear. It goes immediately to Bubbles, though. It's going to play it off the wall. Can they play it around? The onslaught coming out from Jerome. They managed to. Halo Thief at the midfield, though, has the ball turned away from the snap will elevate. It rolls over them. Bubbles Ooh. goes for the clear. It looks like it's not going to go quite far enough. So Halo Thief is going to have to try to get another touch. But a double commit there is going to take away this goal scoring opportunity for the side of Jerome. It looks like Jerome is going around here. Halo Thief is going to try to. Actually, it's Bubbles V8 that's going to try to get the clear into the red side of the field here. Cheez-Its doesn't want that to happen, though, and Snap now has possession of the ball. He's taken it after a failed attempt at scoring by... No! It's not a failed attempt! I've been jabated! That is Wood River up one, two to one, in this, in this best of five for third place championship title. Jerome is only down by one. We are almost at that halfway point of the game one series. It is still best of five, as you mentioned. So even if they lose this one, they have plenty of opportunities to bring it back. Just focus on playing that clean Rocket League. Just got a great shot on goal. It's just Bubbles read it well, was right there. Dunked down from tries. It will not oh, find no. way in, but the follow-up from Snap will find goal number two. So now we are tied to a side. That was some fantastic follow-up from these players. That is what you need to get these goal-scoring opportunities solidified in the back of the net. Go sailing right over Bubbles, who had previously the save, and then Snap just came out of nowhere, conceivably, and it looks like they are gonna make that, they're not gonna make that shot on goal. It will be turned away by Bubbles. Again, Astronic is just gonna go ahead and take that, though. Wood River is now down one, where they started the series at an advantage. This was absolutely beautiful. Both the defenders and a third one who came in, just none of them were prepared for that shot. Also high right corner, very difficult to block. One goal lead, more than two minutes left on the clock. Wood River has an opportunity to bring this one back and find that equalizer goal for themselves. Let's see if Bubbles can do it and possibly find themselves a second goal. Halo Thief's gonna spike the ball up here, still on the side of Jerome, dunked down by Chizitz. Uh, it is going to be returned by Bubbles, but a slight miscommunication from Halo Thief means the ball gets cleared by their own teammate onto their own side of the field. And it looks like Jesus has the ball there. Bubbles is gonna clear it, send things over into Jerome's side of the court here. Bubbles V8 is gonna Bubbles. get that goal there, tying it up. That was absolutely beautiful getting the secondary touch for yourself bubbles i mean it's great to be a triple threat to get the clear the shot and the rebound shot for yourself sometimes you just got to do all three at once it's okay now off the 50 50 it looks like 
Astronic's gonna dunk it down to the midfield where Halo Thief is waiting, but it goes over them. So now Astronic has the opportunity to center this up for a teammate, but Snaps comes in just a little bit too late. And it looks like now things are over on the red side of the field here as Astronic is just in the defender position, is going to try to get the clear. Doesn't quite go as far as he wants, actually just hands it right to Wood, Wood River. They barely missed that goal. They are able to defend here in the red, and it looks like things head over onto Wood River's side of the field as Halo Thief has possession of the ball. He's going to pass it to his team member. Bubbles looking for a clear, manages to get it past Astronic. They have Snap though right in front of them. Snap does not get a touch on it. However, they decide to take out Bubbles instead. That's gonna completely swing the momentum in the other direction. Astronic now in front of the goal. Tries to play it off that back wall, but Halo Thief gets the chip on it in time. So she's looking for a centering opportunity. Halo Thief though takes it away, taking too many touches, means that the other team is going to take advantage. And it looks like Cheezots has control of the button. No, Ooh. they're gonna get that demo on the Asteroid and the shot on goal in the same time, but it will not end up making it. But that one's gonna make it for Halo Thief. Wood River going up another one, four to three. Unfortunately, that was a case of just over committing on a goal scoring opportunity, not having someone waiting at the mid ready to rotate to that back post. I mean, you can only rely on the crossbar so much. It don't move. It does feel like Wood River's Players have been a little bit more one-sided here. Astroy has fewer Alkalots, but the one Alkalot they do have is the save, which is one of the really big ones that you're looking for. But man, Red Team is just coming out with all of those demos. I said it earlier, it's okay to be that silent player. You don't have to be the one to make the plays. You just have to yep. be the one to ensure your team, your teammates are able to do that for themselves. And Honestly, Asteroid is doing that quite well. We've got Halo Thief now looking to try to play it around Snaps. We also have Bubbles come in to help them out. Snaps rotating back. Shot on goal from Jesus is going to go a little bit too far to the left, allowing Astroy to push it forward. Astronic, though, at the midfield is going to get a touch on it. It's still here at the mid. Shot on goal is going to be spiked up. We have no time left on the clock. Ball hits the ground, this round is over. Will we see a buzzer beater or is it Wood River with the 4-3 victory? But you know, they're doing a really good job of kicking in, in the air. This is the longest we've seen it in the air all day, but it will end up being all for naught there. A valiant effort, but Wood River is gonna go ahead and take map one. However, there's still four other maps. So you mentioned it earlier, the accolades. Yes, we could see the Demolition Derby expert. Basically, <laughs> all three members of the side of Jerome had it. But it's important to understand that those demos, yes, they can create an advantage, but it seems like most of the time, Astronic especially had a bunch of those demos happen within the first minute. I didn't even see them on screen, meaning he was not in the play, and he was going out of position to do those demos. And putting yourself out of position to take someone else out of play is not worth it, because that means your team can no longer utilize you because you're not going to be able to help out you might have taken someone out of midfield but the ball is all the way on their side uh, all the way by in the back third of the field so what good did that do they respawn closer to the ball than you are going to be the whole point of a demo is to get somebody out of position if you yourself are out of the position to get the demo it defeats the whole purpose because now there's two people that are just completely lost on rotations and the ideal scenario is you go up one so that everybody on your side is in position but not everybody on their side is in position and that's not what's happening if you're going out of your way to just get those constant demos. My favorite thing personally is demoing the goalkeeper at the last possible second when your team is going <laughs> for that goal scoring opportunity so they have no chance of blocking it. dirty. It. It's dirty, but it works so well. I mean, that would be why it's dirty. The guaranteed work is in there. I mean, because if you demo the goalie, who's going to stop you? And it does look like Astronic's going to choose to rotate back. Halo Thief does not have a lot of pressure on them. Double commit there from the side of Jerome is going to allow them to push forward and Ooh. land, rotating back in for snap. Similar rotation from what we saw earlier, just in reverse, is going to get the first goal of this second game. And it looks like this Wood River is now in the position of they have to play catch up. They won first map, but now they're playing catch up in the second map and maybe even beyond if they keep up this pressure. 50-50 goes in favor. Oh, Jerome, and it just waterfalls into the net. Oh my gosh, that was clean. That was straight from midfield, just going flying through. There was nobody that could do anything. And Shizots is just gonna score that clean. You saw the two members of Wood River going in there to try to stop that goal, and it did not happen for them. 
up by two, not impossible, especially with four minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. But if they keep up this tempo with goal scoring, it might become impossible to close the gap. So Wood River needs to start being the reactive, well, being the, the proactive team here and doing something first as opposed to just racing back towards their own goal. Instead, Bubbles gets a touch on it. Follow up from Halo Thief will not be in time, but Ooh. Bubbles gets a shot on goal. Saved by Astronic at the last second. Oh, that sorry, Lamp. There were two people actually that went in there. Astronic was the first save, and then immediately it went to land, and that was Bubbles with a clean shot that is not going to go into the net. And honestly, Wood River could use the score. They could, but ultimately you need the follow up there. Astronic was their own, though. That was absolutely beautiful. You can see the initial shot's gonna happen. It's gonna hit that crossbar. Sometimes it's your enemy, sometimes it's your friend. But then they are there for the follow up, perfectly angling themselves, nose diving towards that net finding the back of it. It feels like Jerome is almost a completely different team than what we witnessed map one. I mean, this is a three nothing lead and we're not even in the back half of the game yet. Well, when you rotate players like that, the play styles change and shift. Understanding how each player plays is very important and it can create hiccups and make it hard to respond. Wood River though, looks like they're starting to find their traction, finding goal number one. Here's still plenty of time left on the clock to find those two extra they need to tie us up at three aside. And especially with how many of these goals are being scored super, super early in the matchup, Wood River definitely has the time to turn it around. Going in the next kickoff, it does look like it's going to stagnate a little bit, but Lan will get a better touch on it. Astroy, though, back at the net. Unfortunately, ooh, Astronic's going to get that. It, this is going to look a little bit awkward. This is, I believe, just a missed touch, and then the second elevation was not high enough, and Astronic had no one else to worry about at that point. That was a little bit unfortunate. There were two members of Wood River, but it just went. But, uh, but I mean, you just got to reset yourself and try not to make those little missed touches again as we go out over into high or Jerome's side of the field. Excuse me. Bubbles with the ball at the mid, tries to play it around Astronic, can't quite do so. It's now on the back third of Wood, of Wood River's side of the field. Treezitz unfortunately will lose possession. Astronic though, with a little help from Lance, slight, slight collision happening at the midfield. Bubbles is gonna take advantage of it, bring the ball to the back third on the side of the room side of the field. Cheez-Its now looking to play it around Halo Thief. It goes to Astronic off the wall. Astronic cannot maintain possession though. It goes too far forward. Bubbles takes a shot too high to even be credited. He's gonna try to go for that second shot though, but will be unable to because all three members are in the defending net and Astronic's just gonna break away and take a shot on Wood River's net. Oh, cheez is there to follow up on it, but just barely hits the crossbar. But Land's not done yet. That is three shots on the Wood River goal that have been made in the past 30 seconds. None of them have gone in. This might be the one. This is stressful. All members of Wood River have come back to defense and they will be unable to stop Cheez-Its from scoring. I'm trying to do some quick math in my head because we're down by four. Two minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. That leaves, what, roughly... 37 seconds per goal. Which we've seen teams do more with less. We've seen plenty of goals scored tonight just off the 50-50, which is uh, truly insane. Astronic here at the mid. It's gonna end up going back to land. He's gonna play it off the wall to themselves. They don't have pressure coming onto them fast enough, so they have a lot of free time to play with. Off the back wall, Bubbles, though, stops them from getting that rebound. Shot on goal from Cheese. It's gonna be turned a little bit too far to one side as one of the Wood River players did manage to get a touch on it. Astronic now looking to center it up for a teammate. It does finally get cleared. Ooh, oh, another shot on goal, Bubble though, saved by Bubbles. Can't save it the second time. And that is a perfect setup, being ready for that follow-up as the defenders are now out of position after making that initial save. There's nothing else they could have done. They did their best, and you just came back swinging. There were two touches there, and Bubbles can only block the one. At that point, you got to rely on your team members. Jerome has a pretty dominating lead. Wood River might be in the position to take your reset advice this next map. At this point, because this is a best of five series, it can be a little bit exhausting, exhausting especially with how long we have been here today in particular. Most of these players have been here since 9 a.m. When the score is this, the differential is this big, Yes, you want to look for a couple morality boost goals, but honestly, say GG, go next, and start focusing on recentering yourself, looking at how the other team likes to play. What are the cracks in the armor? What can you take advantage of? That is what you can use this time to do, because this will put them at match point, but the reverse sweep is still possible. Are there any, some, are there any specific things that 
you're noticing that could be taken advantage of. There's a lot of double commits, especially when that ball is in the air. That tells me that the side of Jerome does not have a lot of faith in their own and each other's aerial control. Ooh. When they initiate the aerial control themselves, yes, they're great with it, but when they're responding to someone else's, it's not in their favor. We have a shot on goal from Astronic, though, getting them that fancy hat trick and bringing their score to seven. And it looks like at this point, they're gonna have to get one goal every five to 10 seconds. So we're gonna go to this next matchup, but they've already won one map. So Jerome is scoring all of these goals to tie the best of five right now. So Wood River is definitely still in this, even though this map is a little one side. I mean, the question also then stands, are they completely gassing themselves out on this one? Are they giving it all of the mental stamina that they have to come out on top of this? Are they pre prepared to have to go the distance, the full five game series, if they are, do not manage to take away the victory again uh, on, in, in the next game from Wood River, but it looks like they're gonna score an eighth goal. Running away with the scoreboard, I do believe that the side of Wood River has decided to just start calculating and anticipating what they need to do in the next match to overcome the Goliath right now that they are facing. Which is completely understandable. And just like you were talking about, some of the things that, that, are, that they're gonna need to focus on, Jerome is doing wrong. You're gonna have to go for those double commits in the air or potentially subvert their aerial control. We have Halo Thief setting up a great opportunity, but the 50-50 goes in favor of Jerome. Volley to the back side of Wood River side of the field. Bubbles goes, gets the save, sending it to the side. They're gonna have to take on two members of Jerome. Chizitz is gonna bring it over. Asteroid will dunk it down to Bubbles. Bubbles trying to leave it for Halo Thief. Between the give and the goes, they're managing to bring it to the back side of Jerome side of the field. They have the opportunity to find a follow-up touch here. The Halo is going to backtrack a little bit, trying to get it to a straight. Cheez-Its is going to backpedal and back pass it as well. Lots of passing, not a lot of playmaking happening just yet, but Ooh, there it is. Rashonic will find goal number nine. And that's the best play you can possibly hope to ask for is a play that results in a goal. There's Jerome, nine to Wood River's one. I think Jerome really wants this reverse sweep. I think they actually took the reset. Of, they lost map one and they came back with their new roster. We have Lan now in, and I think they just completely adjusted their strategy, and now it'll be up to Wood River to try to adapt next map. Well, they have a few moments to do that adaption. Hopefully they talk amongst Ooh. themselves, maybe have a coach here to help them out, but we can see here by these stats, Definitely Jerome was dominating on the shots on goal. So it maybe feels like Wood River's the thing that they need to do the most is take more shots on the goal because boost used was relatively even. So people were moving around the court at the same time. I think they just need to get a little bit more of that aggression. What do you think? I think it's the issue of slowing down too much. I mean, tempo control is important, but slowing down and getting it to a comfortable pace for you might be too easy for the person that you're going against. And so you need to be playing at basically your maximum tempo at some points. Yes, it's okay to slow down, but do it in a way that's un unexpected. Almost every time I felt like we saw Wood River with possession, they would stop or they would try to go for a back pass. Something that would take away that forward momentum and that's something easily capitalized on by the other team. So changing up mo tempo and momentum is important, but also making sure that it's being used to your advantage. And this is still the Idaho Showdown in Rocket League 3v3. It is a best of five here for tonight. And we do have another map. The teams are right now tied. So far, Jerome and Wood River, they've each won a map. Jerome wants this reverse sweep. Wood River really wants to stop that from happening. So what were the biggest chinks in Jerome's armor? Re-remind us. Well, they, they double committed on a lot of balls that were in the air. I mean, if it wasn't one of their teammates that popped it up and initiated an aerial play, if it was a volley that was being sent over to their side of the field, more often than not, two players were elevated to try to take care of that. So recognizing that, putting pressure where it needs to be in those situations can be the key factor here for Wood River to come out on top. And taking advantage of area play, I mean, it's there. Double commits are something every team faces. So Wood River can potentially take a lot of advantage of this and hope that Jerome doesn't do the same to them. And it looks like we are over in Wood River's side of the court, which is not where you want to be if Wood River wants to reset and take this next map. And Ooh. shot on goal after some awkward, almost hot wheel action on that crossbar. will roll in finally. You can see it goes across that, that post on the side and then finally finally the entire center of that ball crosses the goal line 30 second 31 seconds to find the first goal a little slower than our first couple of games 
still anybody's game, though. It's very important to keep in mind. However, leaving an open goal like that, Bubbles is going to capitalize on immediately. Lan had to correct that and manages to find the save. And now all of the members of Jerome are in their own field, so Bubbles is going to have a much more difficult time trying to get shots on this goal. Is still going to attempt. It will be taken by Cheezots. And Astronic now has possession of the ball, which is dangerous for Wood, Wood River. Bubbles, though, gets in there, chips the ball towards the back wall, has a lot of pressure put on them, though, so Halo Thief has to come in and help out, but both have rotated away, leaving no pressure on this ball, giving open opportunity for Jerome to do what they please. They need to start creating the tempo for themselves, leaving the ball like that. That's what I was talking about. Slowing down is fine, but doing it in a situation where the other team gets an advantage, not what you want. You can't slow down just to give the enemy team the ball here, and Wood River really needs to put on more aggression. It feels like they're almost not confident in their ability to push forward, and they really need to be if they want to stop Jerome from scoring. Bubbles is extremely confident in their forward, That's true. Uh, their forward aggression. Honestly, just call out when you're pushing forward. Ask a teammate to be there ready to be ready for the follow-up. Could be the missing piece here that they need. Bubbles has done some fantastic job like making space, getting shots, getting clears. Let's see if they can turn one of them into a goal scoring opportunity. This one unfortunately just went too far forward too fast. So Astronic was waiting for it. Land now looking to get the clear, possibly using yes, gonna just center it up for themselves. But Bubbles is gonna get right in that passing lane and keep this ball on the side of Jerome. Too far forward is better than too far back, especially against Jerome right now, because, I mean, no goal has been scored on pushing it too far forward. And right as I say that, it looks like Jerome is setting up to try to do something as the members of Wood River fall back to defend their goal. Astronics touch on the ball kind of awkwardly. Lulls about in the air for a little bit, finally crossing that midfield stripe. We have Bubbles pushing forward. They have Halo Thief with them, ready for the follow-up, but it's going to no. sail right past the defenders and find goal, and find the goal for Bubbles. Jesus was just unable to stop it. Bubbles, who has been the primary scorer for Hood River, really coming alive, doing everything in their individual power to get these goals, tie this game. Both teams are now, they've won a map, and they're one-to-one -one with two minutes and 28 seconds remaining. Yes, so now we're basically at a best of three series, so winning this one is actually extremely important, and Jesus recognizes that. They take the shot on goal. It's going to get initially saved, but the follow-up touch is going to solidify it. That was all six members almost in the net or back in that lower third towards Wood River's goal. You see everybody's there, and Chizots was still able to send it in and get that goal. Highland, or, uh, excuse me, Jerome is now up one with two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Wood River's playing the game of catch-up. Jesus takes another shot, saved by Bubbles. It's gonna go to the side, but Bubbles pushing forward was just not quite fast enough. Astronic now looking to get this ball dunked down in Ooh. front of the goal, and they do. Just those awkward ball physics, sometimes you can't anticipate where it's gonna go. I honestly thought it was gonna go at a wider angle, and it ended up just bouncing right in. But you know, Astronics is a physics major. They've done all of these shots. They've played so much of this game, you might as well give it to them there. And as a result of that, they've gotten most of the goals for Jerome here. Two minutes still on the clock. Wood River can bring this one back. That is a goal every minute. It's doable shot on goal immediately from Bob Bubbles. It's going to turn into one is. of the two that they need. One more. Plenty of time to find it. Just and that's within 20 seconds of that goal. Bubbles is going to go ahead and score that. It feels like Bubbles is could maybe rely on their teammates a little bit more because most of what Wood River has done has been solo Bubbles plays. So it would be really nice to see Asteroid or Halo Thief get involved in some of that scoring and passing opportunity. You're 100% correct. Facilitating bubbles might be what you need to be doing and just figuring out how you got to do that. Maybe not forcing bubbles to be a defender and allowing them to be the cherry picker is what you need, but we have a shot Ooh. on goal that the crossbar saves. Now off the back wall, barely poked forward. It's going to land to Astronic. Halo Thief gonna elevate with a little bit of help from Bubbles. It'll be saved. Astronic still has possession though. Ball finally crossing that midfield strike. Halo Thief pushing forward, has an opportunity to get a touch on it, but instead decides to slow, slow down, down too much. But Bubbles gets another touch. Astronic goes for the challenge, immediately volleys back to the third, the, the midfield strike. Wood River needs to press forward. Halo Thief, it was only cheese odds in that goal. Halo Thief, by all means, could have taken that shot. And maybe it goes in, maybe it doesn't, but you don't know unless you shoot. Off the back wall, Astronix has a follow-up from Jesus, and they're going to find another goal. 
I think that those two have been chronically just going for assists between one another, recognizing the opportunities that this type of play represents for them. It's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But to echo what you said earlier, yes, you miss 100% of shots you don't take. Astronic and Cheezots have been a huge duo for the side of Jerome, and it doesn't feel like Wood River has that duo, and it doesn't feel like they have the confidence in themselves or the aggression. Like, we watch them see a single person in the net and just stop, and you need to take that shot. Even if you don't get it, the worst that's going to happen is it gets thrown back into midfield, and you're set back up to try to do something else. Jesus now with possession, does not have pressure on them. Bubbles finally comes in. Ooh, does manage to force them to get rid of possession, but it ends up with Astronic. Astronic now looking to go into the mid. Is going to dunk the ball down, but two of the members of Wood River were waiting for them. Now we have, I believe that's Cheezots going forward. Gets Ooh, a roll gets into the goal, and that is a hat trick for them. 20 seconds left on the clock. Three goals needed. It's not good. looking good. It, I mean, I've seen... I think four goals in 30 seconds before. It's not impossible, but it's, it's not easy. You definitely don't want to rely on having to get four goals in 20 seconds just to tie it up. Wood River, but though. Ha uh, Halo Thief, that, that was pretty good. That was almost, and you know, that was within five seconds there. So that's exactly what they need. They need plays like that. And with, as we dwindle into five seconds remaining, Wood River. It really feels like the aggression is lacking from them. You brought it up earlier, and that the, the seemed what seemed to be a little bit of a lack of confidence. And I really hope they do find it, whether it be their coach coming into their ear, maybe just a parent or you know a fellow teammate saying, "Hey guys, this is still you know a championship match nonetheless. You guys." deserve to say that you have that confidence to take those shots. You have the skill and the prowess to do so. So hopefully they start, you know, firing all cylinders in this next game. I mean, yes, we do have one team at match point, but reverse sweeps are still possible. And actually, it was it was Jerome that was coming back. They were down the map. So it's definitely possible for Wood River to do the same thing. But they really need to start taking those shots. They can't just leave it all to bubbles because poor guy is doing their absolute best for Wood River here. Yeah, bubbles, yeah. We see you, but uh, we see you. It, it's okay. You got to keep going. Full reset on the mental here going in this next 50-50. We have Halo Thief. Halo Thief actually had some great shots on goal as well. Call that out to Bubbles. Make them be your follow-up in that situation. It doesn't only have to be one playmaker either. Facilitate one another. That's very important in a three-on-three -three game. We have Astronic junking the ball down off their hood. There's going to be Bubbles pushing it forward to the midfield stripe. Ch Chizitz is going to be there for the challenge. Snap is actually also back in, so Lan is out for the side of Jerome. Another composition swap as far as players go can mean the playstyle changes up. We'll see if Wood River is able to come up, come above that changeup and come out on top of this one. Astronic cheese odds, though, that duo is still there, and that has been a threat for Wood River since they first came out, especially last map. And it looks like Cheezots is not going to make that shot on goal just because all the members of Wood River are right there, and it's sent careening over onto the red side of the field. Bubbles now looking to get a touch on it. The challenge, though, is going to go in Ooh. favor of Jerome. A snap. 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 Snap doesn't quite get it. Gets taken away from Bubbles. Snap is the new sub in. They were in first map, weren't in second map, and now they are back. The return of Snap. And now we see them trying to get the score on the goal, but with all members of Wood River, that's a Ooh, tall order. Bubbles, Bubbles, that's a great shot on goal. Are you going to be there? To be the follow-up was there, but tries it elevates perfectly. Gets enough slow down there to force the rotations to come out. Halo Thief looking for the challenge. They're going to push forward. Never mind. It's going to be Bubbles who goes for the shot on goal. Saved by Trizitz. Is there going to be a secondary touch? There almost was by Halo, but just missed it by an inch. Now another opportunity to push this ball forward. It's on the back third drum side of the field. Bubbles is still there. Halo Thief at the mid returns the volley, but it looks like Bubbles might not be astronic to the ball. Instead, they're going to do the response. Now, can they get another touch? They only have Trezitz to be. It looks like they're not going to even take possession of the ball just yet, though, as Cheezot still has it. And they're sending things over into Wood River side of the court. Actually, no, it's just going to go straight into midfield. Both of these teams looking for an opportunity that they haven't found yet as we approach 2 minutes and 56 seconds and descend it. There's a fantastic clear coming out from Wood River and a follow-up touch, just not enough momentum behind it. And at a little bit of a slight wrong angle, Chizitz is going to find a clear. 
Halo Thieves gonna attempt to get a touch on it. Instead, it's gonna be Asteroid who does, but in the process, they get destroyed by Chizitz. Bubbles now looking to dunk this ball down into the net. It is going to be cleared by Chizitz off that respawn at the mid. Astronic is gonna send the ball to the back third of Wood Rivers half of the field. And now Asteroid has control of the ball, which we haven't seen Asteroid have a lot of ball control. It looks like it will be taken from them so far here as all members of Wood River are trying to stop the Astronic Ch Chizots duo from scoring on their goal, which they're gonna do. That is first point going to Jerome as we approach the back half of this game. One of the trends that we noticed earlier is when a team is in this offensive position and they are not letting their foot off the gas pedal. Oh, apologies, there's been some mix-up. This is indeed Highland. Sorry about that, guys. Um, one of the things that you can do is, and it, this comes down to meter aggression. Take out one of the people that is going for that offensive play. Take out one of these two in this dynamic duo. They won't be able to set up as easy of plays anymore. Someone's gonna be stuck respawning. You'll have the opportunity to get the clear. You're already in a defensive position if you're going for that demo. So the rotations are still going to be happening. And so it looks like Chizots has the ball here. And there's just Halo Thief so far back in the net for Wood River. This might end up being a Highland goal here. Astrona gonna take it crossbar, gonna be the best defender that Wood River needs right now. Bubbles playing it off the wall to themselves. Unfortunately, though, Chizitz is going to read it well. Halo Thief trying to dig it out of this corner, plays it back from snap. Chizitz, though, at the mid, plays it off the wall. There's a 50-50 challenge. Halo Thief or Asteroid has the opportunity to get a touch on it. Now, unfortunately, overdriving that ball, Bubbles is forced to come in and help out. Grabbing it off the wall, though, is going to be Snap, actually. Centering it up for a teammate. It's going to be Astronic. So Astronic Ooh. finds goal number two for Highland. And that is a minute and 19 seconds and two goals. This is definitely manageable. But for Wood River to not be in the same position that they were in last map, where it was just downright unwinnable with four goals and th almost 20 seconds remaining, they've really got a score right about now. One minute seems like it's not a lot, but in Rocket League terms, it can also be a lot at the same time. So Definitely have like, There's plenty of time right now for Wood River to get these two goals that they need. That's all they need to be focused on, not trying to get a third, just those first two. Ooh. Okay, I was almost about to have to eat my words. Asteroid, though, pops the ball up in front of their goal. It is going to be followed up, though, by the Highland players. Bubbles. Finds the clear, pushes it forward across that midfield stripe. Snap does a backpedal. It is going to be responded to immediately by Halo Thief. Astronic sends the volley. Bubbles elevates, dunking it down at the mid. Astronic again with possession, pushing forward. Ooh, shot on. There goal. it is. Defender went to go for the challenge. Unfortunately, could not predict. The ball would just barely pop up over them. That's almost one goal every 10 seconds that Wood River will need to do. If they pull this out, we will be very impressed. But they've really got to completely adjust their strategy and they've got to do nothing but aggress in these final 45 seconds if they want to even tie the game. Highland Astronic though plays it around Bubbles. They're going to elevate a destroy. It does not elevate high enough. And we have Halo Thief finally get a touch on that ball. We are at 30 seconds. That's a, that is now a goal every three seconds. Ooh, and this is the very difficult for, position for Wood River to be in here as Highland is not even giving them the chance to take it over into their side of the field. Ball gets sent to the corner. Astronic is going to play it into the midfield. Dunk it down to one of their teammates, but two of them go for it. Forcing Astronic to take it again at the mid, trying to reset up this opportunity. Ball Time is ticking down. Ball hits the ground <laughs> and that is it. <laughs> Highland, though, going for an extra goal for themselves. Two seconds left on the clock. At this point, we probably can say that this is going to be a Highland victory. However, I am wanting to see Wood River get one goal. It can be a crazy aerial play, something just pop it up, keep it going for an extended period of time and try to find yourself that one you need. We'll have to wait and see, though. And it looks like Astronic is actually going to choose to keep it in the air, but Asteroid is going to end up letting it touch the ground. Halo Thief was unable to get there just in time, and that is Highland as the winner. But they dropped a map, so it is three to one in our best of five. Highland is our third place in the Idaho High School Rocket League showdown. Congratulations to both these teams. You guys fought very hard. And, you know, there's always more Rocket League, and it's truly really only a loss if you didn't learn anything. That's true, and the Idaho Army National Guard is a proud supporter of Boise State Esports. Top plays are presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive, impressive critical thinking skills into real time. With more than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for, the Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out on Twitch at iGuardGaming. And what a wonderful event for Boise State Esports here tonight. What are your thoughts on 
player of the game just because of these final matches that we have done so far? Uh, I think it's gonna, for me, gonna go to Astronic. What about you? Okay, I'll go Cheese Ots then, because I mean, that was definitely the duo that was doing all of this work, putting all of it in, especially in this final matchup against Wood River here tonight. And it is gonna be Cheese Ots, but honestly, that was pretty 50 50. It could have just as easily been Astronic. We honestly are just kind of giving suggestions. At the end of the day, it is production who gets to make the deciding factor here. So, congratulations, Cheese Ots. And the ICCU player of the game is brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes a team more successful, just like Idaho Central's helping members achieve financial success. Chizots is the Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game with a dominating third place win here tonight. And you can just see the level of mechanical skill that goes into some of these plays by Astronic and Cheezots. They were always there for each other. In this case, it was Astronics with the setup, and then immediately after that, Cheezots with the goal. And I mean, it felt like that 50-50. They were just on point, and it didn't necessarily, like the third member was important, but it was really just those two that have been playing together. I think they've got all the playing together hours, just that Snappy's just trying to fill in that duo. I. And it's okay to, you know, be the person stuck at the goal yeah. box. You're, you're fulfilling Absolutely. a role. But, you know, it felt like those two in particular had a lot of faith and trust in one another, mm -hmm. knowing that if they made this play, their teammate was going to be there to make the follow-up touch. And that is something that comes with time. And it's something that comes with, honestly, team camaraderie and friendship. Because you're not going to trust someone that yep. you don't want on your team or don't want as a teammate. And so that just goes to show that these guys genuinely like spending time together. They like playing together and they definitely are in it to win it every single game that they play. And it's beautiful to see. Like it's beautiful to see these two players just play off of each other so well because that's what we've been harping on all night is that teams need to bounce more off of each other instead of this clutch individual play. Because Bubbles, again, an amazing clutch individual player, but they didn't quite have that that Astra or that cheese to like bounce off of and get that victory that they wanted. But we expect to see more of Bubbles in the future. Overall, a phenomenal player. What are your final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts, um, definitely keep playing. Um, make sure that you are always working on your core mechanics. Do never, never ever let those slip. And make, do not leave an open goal, please. That caused <laughs> so much anxiety on desk today alone. And in that final series, it was a couple of times, but throughout the day, it happened so much. Please get those rotations locked down so it does not happen. And as we get ready for our next matchup, which will be the Valorant Idaho High School Grand Finals here, we, the Idaho Army National Guard is presenting you with our top five plays. And the Idaho Army National Guard invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. With more than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for, the Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. As we take a short break, enjoy these top plays, and we will be right back.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. We are continuing our coverage tonight of Idaho High School Esports Showdown. And we are here for the Valor and Finals here with Blackfoot taking on Twin Falls. It's going to be an exciting final matchup with the first map being Icebox, which is a welcome surprise change, especially from the Boise State roster. I am your host, Brennan Bray Loud, and joining with me to call all of the action is Brandon Red Hot. Uh, so, we're jumping into our finals tonight. You've casted pretty much this whole yeah. league. What are you hoping to see from these last two teams? It's something a little bit we talked about before the cameras turned on. Uh, I think the biggest thing is both these teams are actually like pretty evenly matched when it comes down to like skill overall. But I think the biggest thing that's kind of been the, the factor is just like those last couple rounds where you see like those 3v1s happen and you'll see a lot of those clutches of the one versus three winning those. So the biggest thing is kind of like minimizing those mistakes that are the guaranteed wins today. So I think that's gonna be the biggest kind of difference today. Yeah, and one thing we touched on is a lot of these players really like, and as you just mentioned, of winning a lot of those 1v3s, which is why we've seen such a prevalent Reyna yeah. in kind of mm -hmm. this high schooler meta and a lot more of free ulted uses and going for kind of those dirty peaks. But that's yeah. the perks of I'll running say. a Reyna. Yeah, <laughs> so Especially now heading over to Icebox, which has been kind of the quintessential map that Boise State hates playing. And now yeah. high school players are like, yeah, let's go for it. And they also chose to ban Bind and Haven. Yeah, I, uh, it was, I saw that too. And I wonder if it's more so with the new map rotation that you're not playing as much as that maybe like maybe in scrims or something like that that's like the only thing i can think of and now that you can kind of ban those maps maybe if you didn't like them in the past or maybe like you know your comfort agent picks and stuff like that you don't like them on that map so you can just kind of ban it away and so i think it you know kind of works out that way well as we get ready to jump to this matchup these players are going to need all the help they can get and we can provide it to them through the docs keys and then Valorant, that's going to be to focus your angle know your rain condition count cards claw whole abilities and of course any fps you got to click on some heads to get that extra damage and these are brought to us by dropping gaming who is the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments whether you're new to the scene or a seasoned veteran Dropping Gaming has the right games and competition for you. And to begin your competitive gaming journey, reach out to them at DroppingGaming.com. Well, so you take a look at the flyby. Walk us through kind of the quintessential know-hows of Icebox. What do we need to know? What should we expect going into this map? Yeah, I think Icebox is definitely the most verticality map in Valorant. Like, a lot of the maps are kind of base. You don't have anything. But there's so many ropes in here and different angles and stuff like that. So I think the biggest thing that happens in Icebox is, like, actually clearing everything. Clear left, clear right. Because there's so many times where like, people can cheese these ropes. Like, right away, defenders can just rope all the way into nest there. So I think it's definitely you got to really play those angles today. And I think, you know, in the tournament, people have definitely kind of been abusing those angles. So I think the big thing is you got to really check those angles today. So when it comes to the draft, since there's so much to tech, to check, mm. do you expect to see someone like a Neon who can clear out so much of that so much quickly or more like a Sage to just wall it off and push right past? Yeah, I think you, you just see Sage in this map because her wall is so versatile. And on top of the vertical in this map, people can use it to play even more vertical. So they'll play, oh, well, they usually play on top of like, you know, the ramp. Oh, wait, they went even higher than the ramp. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of cheese like that. And I think, you know, we've seen a lot of rain today, but I think it, she actually is pretty good in this map just because you can take a lot of these 1v1 isolated, you know, fights as well and then we haven't seen too much Sova today but I think Sova is also a really good map even post nerf just because he has so much of information gathering on this map and there's so many things to check. Yeah Sova's been really strong in the meta we've seen a decent amount of omen tonight yeah. as well he's really come back ever since the change as well as KO's come and gone mm. it's really been more of the comfort pick as you yeah. touched on earlier and also just in the prior or previous matchups, we've seen a, a kind of return of Cypher as well. Yeah. So really some more change-ups than the, the traditional of like Jet, Sky, uh -huh. Sage, so on and so forth. Yeah, I think it's going to be, a, like, like I said, just a lot of comfort. We'll see, you know, everything. You'll see, you know, the Sova on one team, the KO on another team. I think we've seen a lot of good KO usage in terms of at least personal usage with this pop flashes and stuff like that. I think the one thing that I always like is when you throw a flash and do something with it instead of just like <laughs> throwing it and then being like, I flashed him, but it's like, work really far back. Exactly. So I also think that the jet changes don't really do that much to her. If anything, it's actually kind of like a buff. <laughs> so I know Helios earlier, whenever he popped knives, probably averaging like three to four kills per knives. So I definitely think that's a good thing to look out for. Yeah, I did hear her, the, the uh, Blackfoot on stage with their Bronco Pride chant. But as we get into this half, very little changes from what we previously talked about yeah. other than really the chamber on what, I mean, 
It's the KO across the board. Yeah. But KO and the Reina are the only differences. Yeah, I say. Uh, or similarities. A sorry. lot of, I guess, as we've kind of gone through the tournament, I think the last like semifinals and this, you've seen a lot of like less changes in comps. Because I think people are like, okay, well, this is when it really matters. We've got to make sure that we have a comp that works. Cut for picks. Yeah, Cut for picks. Yeah, exactly. So both these teams have used the KO very well. I think we've seen, obviously, the Jet versus the, the Rays difference. And I think. Raze is a pretty hard, I guess, agent to play well. So I always kind of see, you know, okay, well, good grenades and things like that. All eyes are on the satchel usage. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, the big, we have seen a really good KJ usage as well with that ult and just being able to. I think KJ is a good kind of pick here because her ult is like, okay, we'll force to go in after it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good thing to kind of get on the same page. So for those first early rounds, just seeing how the guns played, a lot of ghosts yeah. and even the one sheriff coming out for mm -hmm. Helios on the side of Twin Falls. 50-50 bet. Who do you think is going to take round one? Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of these pistol rounds, we've seen them win in the first kind of half, and then the second half they've lose. But I think pistol rounds are, are very important. I think the biggest thing is basically not the just early over. Econ. Yeah, it is. A lot of things is what we like to call overheating, where you get your two kills, but you keep going because you want those kills. But <laughs> that's why that's you that's play the Reina. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and here's a, already a usage of these ropes just playing so far in there. Yeah, and Helios has been kind of that jet man that we have seen throughout this tourney. And with the Sheriff, is definitely something to watch out for, but just kind of holding that higher angle and a huge push already coming from the indoors of A. Oh, gets a little bit on that. And here it comes. And wow, Ooh. another Boombot kill. We've seen a lot of those as well. GB <laughs> doesn't get the kill on the solo there. And they're going to take the side on. Trendy Spike cards. already yeah. going down. Putting the pressure on Twin Falls as they lose another member. The KO is down there, losing a lot of the utility. Two flashes as well. Yeah, and Data's been one of those key factors in that team, so. Ooh, able to at least pick up one, but quickly loses another. Trades that Twin Falls can't afford, and that's going to be dead, actually, picking up a triple. Good first early round. That Twin Falls isn't going to be looking good <laughs> heading into the next, because that's a huge econ loss. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be coming at it with Spectres and Light Armor now. Absolutely, and I think the biggest thing I've uh, really noticed here is these pistol rounds will start off a little slow, but the next thing you know, we blink and the round's over. So yeah. I think that's a big thing is kind of looking at, you know, advantages or things like that. But we've seen a lot of forcing today. I mean, traditionally, you kind of see the losing team will kind of just hold or maybe the jet will buy a marshal, but everyone else will just kind of save. But today, we've seen a lot of forcing. We've seen a lot of forcing today, and it seems like no matter what they do, they definitely want to have some sort of gun. Yeah, definitely going for the kills and the objective a lot of these times of get the exchanges, secure it, and then go in the, for mm -hmm. the defuse rather than just, you know, try to ninja defuse or something <laughs> yeah. like that. But Headhunter yeah. already out from Kelsey trying to hold the high ground. Another A push coming out for a black foot. Oh my gosh, that was going to be another boombot kill there. <laughs> Make sure to run away from it this <laughs> time at least, but not shoot it surprisingly. He's playing a, doing a lot of damage to this chamber actually on top of this ramp. Yeah, the Spectres and Light Armor's coming out clutch for Blackwell as they get the first onto Solo once again, but Kelso's able to trade out here. But another two for Twin Falls yeah. finally giving a plus one in this fight. Now it's plus like, two with the shorty coming out. And Twin Falls full saved it. That was all classics and like a ghost. So doing a the great right job. The right click's coming yeah, in clutch with that three round burst. I saw someone with the shorty. They are ready for that one. <laughs> Gotta love when the shotguns come out and get value. Oh yeah. We sh saw that in previous matches on Ascent with the Judge. So he picked up that Spectre. That's value gain. So Twin yeah. Falls bring it to one to one. Say they retaliate with a full eco round and get the round. That's huge there. So Blackfoot's going to have not too much credits here, but looks like they're going to force anyways here. And it looks like Twin Falls will just be doing a classic kind of bonus up here. Going with not going to have enough for next round as well, so it looks like they're just going to kind of really commit to this round winning with that two extra Vandals kind of advantage. Yeah, at least Twin Falls does have the full armor, whereas yeah. they only, Blackfoot only has the light armor, so oh, it is still going to be mainly Spectres v. Spectres, but as you yeah. mentioned, those two Vandals can come in clutch, being, you know, the AK-47 equivalent yeah. in Valorant, but finally... Snow still going for the A push. I think it's also just the big angles. Icebox has these like really long angles on like this A site and on the B long site as well. That if you play those wide angles, that Vandal's gonna get a lot of usage there. Yeah, same with the Spectres. Just the close range yep. indoors of A, you know, swinging at close yes. angles. You want the SMG to just spray and try to get it. But the Vandal finally solo, not the first eliminated in a round, is gonna be able to take down their counterpart. Hurt, so the wins the Reina 1v1, which means Twin Falls is at least plus oh, one in this fight. Huge but paranoia coming out through. Yeah, they still haven't planted yet, so they still have they to started. clear it. Yeah, but Solo, Solo. We'll pick up the double, oh. goes for the triple, unable to get past the back up, but gets the overheal going. Trades able to pick up one into Kelso. Now Blackfoot, two remaining members. 
trying to even things out. Twin Falls only plus one in this fight date, and take it, but Solo's closing that out with a triple. Yeah, I mean, he just kind of sat back in sight almost this entire round, got one, and then the second one he just kind of dismissed around the corner there, so he couldn't actually get anything off that, and now it's kind of showing that the guns were kind of the difference there, but it looks like Blackfoot is really okay with just <laughs> forcing these light armor. They just like Spectres, Spectres. yeah. yeah they just, I mean, if that's what they've been good at, but yeah, they've lost true. the past two rounds, so has it been working out, or should they go for the save? And now it kills we do have freaking an out the operator op coming out too, so op that's going to be pretty scary because I mean, unless he's getting smoked off, especially that chamber. Chamber can play so many different angles in that A site with an upper, lower. So definitely going to see some op usage there. And my personal favorite of the Aries has even shown a little bit here, but. Okay, I was playing the risky game, and Ooh. finally a B push coming out as well from Blackfoot. And but he's ready. Yeah, oh, he gets it. Oh, he almost gets two, but he does trade. Good trade as Hogmeade's able to pick him up, and Helis as well. Good swings from Twin Falls. Blackfoot does have to who would probably reevaluate this push as they've lost three members to Twin Falls only one. Okay. But they do gain the yeah, Vandal so they, out they of it. They get one gun out of that, which that smoke kind of helped them get that, actually. Yeah, but. no one was watching it either, but as long as they have the spike, they should be able to rotate out, but now they're going to have to deal with the other two members yeah, of say, Twin Falls that have just will, been sitting yeah. there the whole time. So Twin Falls is definitely doing a good job of, okay, we're just going to stick here, because a lot of teams have just been rotating full force. Like, okay, they're going B, we're, we're there. Yeah. But these guys are just kind of holding back sight here, and got to be watching just your for them. Yeah. yeah. They definitely haven't gotten as bad as Boise with the single file line, but you have to be checking your high grounds when pushing A side as well, as Solo is able to pick up both of them with the Vandal. The op is down, so hopefully he remembers to at least pick that up. Yeah, so that was the close, like, yo, get my op. You know, people, <laughs> people, even quiet people will start saying that one. They'll just be like, yo, my op, my op, my op. <laughs> There's a reason why it's known phrase in the gamer community of save the op. Yeah, exactly. Above all else. It is so expensive on that side now with that being 4,700 credits, but. Blackfoot still going with the Spectres. They are staying true. I think no matter what, until they win around, they're just going to keep running that Spectres light armor. But the ults are going to start coming up here. We see Twin Falls only having that Empress, but Blackfoot does have the Orbital Strike and they have the uh, Killjoy ult as available as well. Empress v. Empress incoming. Yeah. I mean, Spectre probably won't win that, but you <laughs> never know. They land the shot. Yeah, so maybe with the enhanced attack speed, that might do a little bit. That'll be a difference. Yeah, there it is. The they listen to Doc's keys and click on those heads, but Bonbon could also get an elimination. But Helios and Solo are going to take down the first two, spearheading that push, bringing out the Killjoy as well from Blackfoot. But they lost two members to throw down, and Ultimate is. Not yeah. a ton of value gain. They do get control of sight, but they need to start taking control of that high ground, which they have yet to do so. And they're just planning now, though, so they have a lot of time to do with this retake here. The Empress still online for Twin Falls as well, and yeah. she's at half health. Could help him. Splash even going out, but actually pushes with it as well. Immediately taken down by Helios, though. Ooh, the dash has been triggered, so they got 10 seconds to use that now. Gotta get aggressive with it. I mean, only having 32 health might let go by the wayside as Hogney picks up one. That's the kill joint down. That's the triple for Helios. And that's the round for Twin Falls. I was saying, and Helios did a really good job of kind of playing that verticality. He was just kind of playing on that top of screens right there, holding that angle. They were not ready for that at all. And he gets one and just gets out of there. So they get tr two trades, like you said, with that kill joint ult. And you're already at a disadvantage. And you're attacking. And you're supposed to kind of want as many numbers as you want, like you can. So pretty unfortunate there. But. Twin Falls win another round. They're on a four-win streak right now because yeah. ever since that first round, they haven't lost. So Twin Falls really running away with it. Oh, I see one Phantom now. They got one. Moving up in the world oh, one at a time. Two. They got three Phantoms. Okay, this is going to be the first round that Blackfoot is actually have a at least three-person buy here. So should be at least in somewhat difference. Still a lot favor. of light armor. Only yeah. one full armor for one of their members. But still do have the Brimstone ult as well. And if they get the spike down, hopefully earlier this time, they'll be able to commit it to buy themselves that much more time. But and this is a, an advantage you can have when there's no Sage in the team, and just playing through Tube there, and just playing really aggressive, because you can play so many different angles from Kitchen onto B. So I think this would be a good spot for the Blackfoot to play in here. But Achilles did just pop knives to get one. Yeah, so that will reset the, him, assuming that they haven't missed prior to that, as we haven't been able to see that perspective. But Hogney through the wall, able yeah. to take down Trendy. And already the op even coming out as well, taking down Marma. Now, now only two members remain of Blackfoot. Every B push they have, they have yet to get really more than two members on the side. Oh, Solo has another flank mid spike this time. Down. That's the spike down as well. 
Oh, okay, Jimmy does at least get one. Okay. Oh, but the satchel's right into the knives. That's even a headshot yeah. for Helios. Shut him down real quick. I think Helios was surprised too. He's like, I'm gonna check this corner. <laughs> Whoa, you're in front of me. So and suddenly there's a raise in yeah. front of you. <laughs> and that just happens sometimes with Jet and Rage. You'll see random updrafts and they're right in front of your face. And you're just like, okay, well, that was dumb, but I didn't expect it. So maybe I worked for that. So it happens all the time. Yeah, so Blackfoot having real troubles trying to deny this win streak of twin yeah. falls right now. I mean, th that's their fifth round now heading into round seven. And I think the biggest thing is, is Blackfoot is just forcing every round. Like, they, they don't really have a, an eco going on here. They just force every round. We see, I think one has a classic. There's like two or three Spectres and like one Phantom Vandal, but then gets killed <laughs> right away. That's Spike very unfortunate. Eight. Helios playing another angle very aggressively, taking that rope. Perks of playing that jet, dash yep. in, get the elimination, dash right out. Oh, and now even with the three ults built up, Tour de Force probably going to be committed next round if he gets eliminated here or just use it no matter what. But eliminating the Brimstone, that denies the beam so they don't have any defense yeah. for the spike either and As still well. pushing this. They do have the Showstopper available for Raze, but we'll see if she ends up kind of committing that ult. Or Reyna is playing right in this screen spot that Jet was last time, and I don't know if they're going to ready for it or not. I mean, could Wombo combo with the Satchel Charge to try to get that yeah. little boost up and... Maybe right on to the Reina, which would also deny the Empress if they decided oh. to bring it out, but good oh, smoke! Him, yeah. The debate worked in their favor! Do trade Spike one for one so far a. as Hogmi takes down Trendy, make that two, taking down Lapis as well! Twin Falls plus two in this fight right now. Yeah, so these guys on A are really holding it down. I mean, Helios and Hogmi. Oh! oh. The worst time to bring out the yeah. showstopper. I would say the worst thing about the showstopper sometimes is when you pull it out, there's actually an animation lock of like 0.5 to like, you know, one second there. And the thing is, you can't just peek right away because yeah. the moment that you peek with it, you can't shoot it. Like, you have to actually wait for it to arm. And so that, that happens to a lot, and it is always the worst feeling. Yeah, definitely costly, but Kelso's never going to need to really pop that. I had Tour de Force yeah. as they were holding the operator. Now it looks like they're going to yeah, be swapping Yeah, I think they out. swapped it because he's going to use the Tour de Force here. That's my guess. So hopefully point. we see the usage here, but yeah. still holding on to the Brimstone yeah. because they haven't gotten the spike play. I'll say there was one time where he had a really he had a good spot to ult, but it was one before, so I think he just realized it wasn't worth to use it because I can use it and then I still am gonna lose anyway. How much value would yeah, be gained? Exactly. Maybe an elimination at best, because yeah. most people are smart enough to be like, oh, there's a beam on me. Let's pull out a knife and run away for our lives. But ooh, this time an aggressive push down mid yeah. for Blackfoot. Oh, so stupid. <laughs> Once again, no. Solo is able to pick up the first one. Solo either gets eliminated first yeah, or gets yeah. the first elimination. He'll be that first factor, though. Living okay. up to their name of being the Solo, <laughs> just getting aggressive, even playing the Reina, bringing oh, out the K ult, but takes down Kelso. That's the Tour de Force down. Yeah, that's just what they kind of need going. The K, the K ult's going. Oh, oh long long there, range. Oh, 2 oh, HP, oh. and he gets it. He has the orbital strike available, but him and KO are literally one HP each. But he actually gets Helios on a flank. Yeah, and now I think Data is literally just play, trying to play for orbital strike here, knowing that a, a fr a literally just any bullet will hit him. I mean, anything to stop the win streak of Twin yeah. Falls right now. They just had the momentum in their favor. So all the pressure is going to be on Solo here as he gets past a Ninja Diffuse. <laughs> As we wait with faded breath. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's in huge pinch yeah, situation. Yeah, so definitely got to commit something here. The time is definitely running kind of low. Oh, gets one. Oh, the dismiss. The overheal. Oh, he has the molly, but he also has his ult. He doesn't have enough time for go to He's deep. Oh, okay. He gets the elimination to deny at least the econ and lives with 30 HP. But that means Blackfoot finally denies the win streak. Yeah, they finally but get that. But it cost them a lot. I would say I. They, that's a big round for them to win, but hopefully it's enough eco because they get the plant from they get the plant money this time. So hopefully that's enough credits to kind of get them going for a, a full buy because they definitely have kind of hurt themselves in terms of not having the e equal playing field with all these vandals and phantoms. That was also a costly round for ults. We saw the Tour de yeah. Force came out, the KO ult mm -hmm. came out, and. Uh, it cost them everything yeah. to get the spike down and win, and they lost all five players in doing so, and still holding yeah, on at least to they the got Brimstone it. old. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can kind of see a good usage there. I mean, that time the Molly kind of secured the round, but the thing is Twin Falls also has three ults now with that Empress and the Omen ult, as well as the uh, KO ult to silence everything on site for retake. And Helios Ooh. is just... Not solo yeah. first time. Helios now taking that top spot. These guys are holding these angles in A. I think they're what's happening is Blackfoot's just kind of dry peeking in terms of they're just not using any utility with it, and they're just taking they're paying the price. 
Yeah, bringing out the dagger to try to scout him out. Able to find... Doesn't sound to anything. The bomb by... It's got an elimination before, so... That is true. Maybe they're looking for another one as... Big flash. Ooh. But they slow to oh. push with it. Still get it, at least, onto Solo. But Helios comes out with the One triple instead in the yeah. back line. And Reyna actually dismissed there instead of healing. So I don't know if she thought that another person was close. And Helios with a 4K. <laughs> All right. I guess the jet on the other side of the map with the cross angles just really helped out. Solo was the cost yeah. for that fight. But Twin Falls has got the momentum. And the dagger yeah, built back. out. Yeah, they got it back. This is going to be your second dagger's use, which, you know, Helios usually kind of pops those daggers and gets at least two to three kills every time with that. So definitely got to be kind of watching out for that one. I mean, K, you know, KO can kind of silence her if he can find her. But unfortunately, I think the, the knife hasn't it's been a big really if. Yeah, yeah, it's a like big if. So if especially if they're updraft, you can usually just jump over it if you really needs to. Yeah, so Blackfoot having a real issue to get a foothold that yeah. is comedic ass that there is, is on Icebox. Yep. There's a Knives popped. And look at her. She's literally just playing so far up. You can see her just playing on top of this these, <laughs> these <laughs> angles that, you know, Blackfoot have just not been kind of finding. Blackfoot, you're the attackers. <laughs> you have yeah, to Yeah, say at this point, Twin Falls is definitely playing very aggressive. I mean, they've been excelling at it so far. And just looking at how far Kelso and even the Reina are yeah. Just jiggle picking those angles. They're waiting for something, but. There's a smoke. They haven't used any utility for Blackfoot yet, so hopefully, maybe it's like a late kind of push where they hit it's him with three the mind smokes. Games. Yeah. What? Twin Falls is not moving an inch, I will say. They're definitely. The thing that sucks here is that uh, the chamber is just holding B long, so you don't have to worry about if they're B. And then so they just have two members mid, and then they hold A, and they don't really have to move because they have every angle covered of where they're going to be. Yeah, and the K on the side of Twin Falls was holding mid, but is rotating out through B to try to help out the chamber, who doesn't need as not a single enemy has been spotted all game. But Oh, and Solo gets another <laughs> kill right there. First one, once again. And no smokes dropped yet here. Oh, he, he just went on crashing. The Empress popped as well. Oh, great. Oh, oh he should have through the smoke. He was mid reload yeah. as well. But the dagger is coming in huge for Helios. Able to pick up two. He's looking for a third. Misses the right click onto Salty. It is 1v3. It is Anyways, impossible. Yeah, but the thing is, he's going to run out of time here. Yeah. He's got eight. And he doesn't have yeah. spike. If he doesn't plant within four seconds left, which is now, that means he loses the round no matter what. And Falls might alive. get overly yeah. aggressive here. Girl. Salty definitely wants to keep this vandal. And his armor. Keeps something for yeah, sure. So I mean, he yeah. hasn't taken a point of damage, so he will end up surviving, but costing the round and the rest of his team. Absolutely here. But Helios. Helios yeah, these knives are definitely putting in some work. I think every time he's popped that, it's like really two. one right click, though, missed. Yeah. You know, he was a hair to the right yeah. and decided to commit all five to it. I've seen it so many times where Jets will hit, like, you know, pinpoint left clicks. You're like, wow. And then they right click, and you're like, where'd that go? <laughs> like, sometimes they try to flick it or look cool like the pros. The one know, time flick, you yeah. go all in, you miss it all, but you're throwing one at a time. You're just oh, yeah. winning huge, so. Definitely and, cost, but oh. he'll have it back in like two yeah, rounds with true. how many quads he's been getting. We got two rounds left of the half, and it's already eight-two here for the side of Twin Falls. Lewis holding this off, and they're gonna run right into Kelso. He's been holding the single. Oh, knot. Great, Ooh, sorry. great Lear, yeah. Got yeah, flash from Reyna. Has to rendezvous out of there, her, but sets up another perfect smoke from the Brimstone to deny that Ooh. side angle. Good KO as well. Gonna have no utility to be able to use Ooh. inside Blackfoot. That means no K, uh, KJ or, or Brimstone. Throws the flash. Can't push with it due to the smokes, but knows oh. he's there. Poke damage from the box. Yeah. Got a lot of damage out. Blackfoot now even has the Killjoy built up, so they could throw that onto the... Oh, they have even planned. I thought they planned it no, there. No, they just kind of went and then they got the KO and they set a board mission and they just <laughs> they went out. I mean, I guess that's gained value of losing that ultimate, but... They but they have to go back into solo and Helios over here. Which has a, been a hard push for them. Oh, like now, that, yeah. Now the Killjoy is coming out as Solo once again gets first elimination. Quickly followed by Hogmeat now taking down Trendy. At least they got the Killjoy. Five HP. Why is he so far forward with 5 HP? He's ready to go. He's holding that angle. He has two mollies, though. I mean, though. he has the Spectre. Yeah. He might be able to hold it. And with an elimination onto Kelso, that's an Operator down as well. Oh, he's now the he's air is coming oh, out. But pushing Solo like that is not ideal, especially when it's... Oh, my gosh, he has 5 HP as well. Oh, and he just all pushed low. it with the knife, not checking the angles cost oh, him. Oh, and wow. Bombi is going to go pretty crazy that round. And Twin Falls are now up 9-2. Maybe looking to go up 10-2 in this final round here. 
I think the biggest thing is, like I said, the gun disadvantage is just so hard to deal with. Windfalls are holding these long angles, so the moment you peek, they have the Vandal difference, so all you have to do is hit like two bullets on you, and you know, Last you're gonna go down. Yeah, hand. Blackfoot losing those early rounds in a way, forcing out the yeah. buy, definitely hurt him in the long run, not being able to save up for at least a round to be able to have a stronger comeback. We and do they're in full timeout. I mean, you do get one per half usually, so I think it's not the worst thing of like, okay, well, what are we doing, and you know, if they can win this round, that's nine through curse. We all know that one. So, you know, definitely gives them a chance on the second <laughs> yeah. side. So uh, I think, you know, timeouts are always good. I think some teams don't call timeouts enough. I think sometimes it's like you can really stop the momentum in this game because in this game it's a, it's a one-minute timeout plus yeah. the actual pre-round stuff. So it's like it equals out to like a minute 30, usually a minute 45, which is a long time to stop playing. Like, you know, if you're feeling hot and you're winning these rounds over and over again and have that timeout, it's at least just a break to like, mm -hmm. you know, figure out what you want to do. So I always, I think timeouts are always great. Yeah, the adrenaline can just be pumping and that slows down just like, okay, recuperate, yeah, yeah, exactly, come back yeah. into it with a fresh mindset can be really good for that. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how that might change things yeah, up. Uh -huh. But coming from the side of Blackfoot with how much of a deficit they've been yeah. at, I mean, if they win around, then we're at the 9-3 curse, which true. they could just full reverse sweep true, it. Yeah. Ideally not if you're a Twins Fall oh, fan, course. but it's always a possibility, mm. and this timeout could be detrimental to Twin Falls. As you mentioned, yeah. they've been snowballing, yeah. so taking a break could just, you know, give you something. And, how, and actually come up with a plan, too, right? Like, there's mm -hmm. nothing better than actually planning your attack out of, like, well, we can use this utility and talk about that more yeah. so than instead of just being like, well, go, smoke go, here. Go, go. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good thing of, okay, we can use these ults or these smokes, stuff like that. I think when you see more smokes come out, just, you know, really give them a different angle to play. Because I think the problem is, is Twin Falls is playing the angles that they want to play rather mm -hmm. than what the angles that, you know, Blackfoot makes them play. Yeah, Blackfoot being the attackers, you want to determine where the fight takes yeah. place, but Twin Falls being the defenders and aggressors mm -hmm. have always been going for that advantage. So now, hopefully with that timeout, Blackfoot's able to kind of regroup and say, this is where we're going to take it. Right in with the Odin, Salty, my man, even bringing out the ultimate as well. Fulgman heals with the operator, though, brings it out. Well, they are getting on the side here, though. It is a 4v4, so. Oh, they're actually going to. Fake it. Rotate out? All right. They committed a lot of utility, though. Yeah, they did have sight there, but the problem was I don't think they knew where, at least they, they didn't have Helios getting off kill, so maybe they're kind of scared of, like, okay, well, maybe he can kind of peek that again. But the problem is uh, they can probably hope to get to B site. Now, the thing is, is without having a Sage, B, planning B is kind of scary. Because usually Sage can kind of just wall off your area to miss. That's why they, they have the Odin. A yeah. wall of bullets. That's true. <laughs> you just kind of shoot enough bullets to, to hold them off, but... Oh, oh, I thought that was going to be it, but... Good smoke here as well. Helios gets another kill, though, left. unfortunately. Out. No longer with the Operator, so... I assume that went over to Kelso, as we did see him holding on to they it. They also haven't planned yet. And they're oh, starting to the Odin again! I think Odin's new Sage. <laughs> it can heal, right? Yeah, I would say the problem here, though, is they're actually going to run... They're starting to run out of time. They have to plant with at least four Ten seconds left, because it takes four seconds to fight this fight. His plants goes down, but he loses both yeah, members in the process! Oh... Went to the melee, tried to sprint around the corner. So Helos is going to close it out with a triple again. They're trying to get their daggers back already. Yeah, we said say. it would take two rounds. But so. unfortunately, it's a half, so he loses that. He can't get the third daggers. He's close, but he can't get the third. And we he missed nice. the 9-3 curse. That is true. You, I mean, that's definitely kind of a, a breather there. But I think the biggest thing here is Blackwood's going to have to definitely play some really good defense here. I think, you know, they're going to play really disciplined. they they got to really avoid these first blood deaths. I think when you lose one within, like, 15 seconds of the round, you're already at a disadvantage. You're going to attack there where every member really matters because you have to play at a dis disadvantage anyways. So you got to really just make sure that you're at least trading something going on there. Yeah, so well, right now, oh, Twin Falls running away with it. But can Blackfoot try to take it back in round 13 now? Yeah. We're, I mean, we're only three rounds away from Twin Falls taking map number one. That is true. So pressure's for sure on Blackfoot right now. And not it, even an ultimate on the board because we had just swapped. Yeah, and pistol round's really important, right? Like, I mean, for Blackfoot, it's really important to win this round and get momentum going. So mm -hmm. you can buy those specters and be okay with that full armor and specters. Yeah. So they need an advantage where they can get it. So I think this pistol round's going to be a really good first starter if they want to get things going here. And if Blackfoot loses, I would love to see them not force by so then for that final round if they do end up losing two in a row they are able to fall by and actually have a concise yeah. fight and they have an actually had an advantage there too if they do mm -hmm. win that round for those vandals versus those specter bonuses yeah but we'll see how this first one ends up going they're just going to really come slow out and Helios with yeah. the sheriff and now they're kind of just ganging up back sight here <laughs> with the dagger trading one for one with jebby okay wow another 
Uh, another molly kill from Cajun. We've seen a lot of those today. Three to three right now. Flash even going out and pushes with it. Something that we've oh, seen think in, he saw in the past. Low health as well, oh. but not even with the health advantage. The health headshot comes out. Soul can. picks up one. Hogmeat gets another. 1v2 situation. He does have health advantage, at least against the Omen. I think he saw him. We definitely saw him there, but he did. I don't think he realizes that the angle is being covered by another person. Yeah, the rain on the high ground. He's going to have to rotate all the way around, and he doesn't have time for that. I think this is a good play here. I think it's at least good enough time where you don't have to worry about the second angle. Ooh. Ooh, but Hog has the angle instead. Closes out with the triple. So even picks up the Sheriff for his for Helio. So Absolutely. Apple still having an econ advantage. Immediately, goes <laughs> with the Vandal. And it's gonna be 11-2 here. Yeah, going with the Vandal, that's definitely, uh, they're definitely move. feeling some, they're feeling good right now. Let's just say that's kind of a, an ego play. Cause if you do in that in any other- 11-2 situation, oh, you yeah. have to be feeling Absolutely. good. Absolutely, cause if you win this round, you don't, your bonus is you have another Vandal. So no matter what they do, you're ready to go. And it seems like Blackfoot, Blackfoot is gonna force. At least somewhat. At least two of their yeah. players have bought something. We did see at least one ghost and one specter with one shotgun, but still playing the A site. Ooh, but you know he has a good angle up there. He doesn't. I think he has like a frenzy though. It seems gives his friend a sheriff. He says, "Take this." Something's better than nothing at that True. point. Here comes the smokes from both sides. It's gonna be all about the one thing. Head, heads. Ooh, oh, they're gonna. They, oh. Right next, he wins it. Trade one for one, now one for two, as Dead picks up the double. He gets a Vandal from his Bucky shot. Blackfoot has the plus one in this fight. That first time we've seen in a while. Even Shorty coming out. Oh. One nice swap to the Spectre. Wow. Even taking down Hogmeat as well. That's huge key players down for Twin Falls. Blackfoot's looking to finally win a round. And as oh. he's retreating, it's the poke damage in, but they defended the site. Yeah, he's very low HP here, so I think he wants to try to save the Vandal. I mean, the Vandal already going over to Blackfoot is already a problem, because, I mean, that just helps your ego so much. It's so much money you just gave away. Yeah. So the ego from Twin Falls is definitely going to, you know, not going to play too well into this next round here. Left. And Blackfoot is definitely not going to be the over-aggressive that we yeah. saw Twin Falls on the defending side, so even picking the single is so risky. I mean, he has 20 seconds to try yeah, to go and no play one's it, here. Which he doesn't know. Of course, yeah. So yeah. he's still going to play this very slow. As he should. Oh, the turn Ooh. even spots, and that's huge knowledge for the kill drone. They immediately, you can see as soon as that turn had the notification, oh. <gasps> loses the 9 HP as well. Okay, will, here we go. He knows at least the kill is there, but has no control of the high ground, which is Ooh. very risky. He hurts the swing and didn't have the HP to hold it. And Blackfoot makes the first step into, wait, there's another Vandal there, I think. I don't think the one member who didn't. Oh, he picks oh, it he up right it, yeah, at the tail end. Like, now I think they had two. They had three vandals actually. So that's gonna be three free vandals here for Blackfoot. Where Twin Falls are definitely up to eco here or some sort of save round. But Blackfoot's eco has helped a lot from that because they have three free vandals and like now they can just save for next round and then basically be kind of set up. Yeah, even picking up some of the shorties that Twin Falls yeah. brought in, you know they're going to be holding those close angles oh. on A with them. So hopefully Twin Falls is acknowledging of that because not everyone picks up a shorty of all things. And the shorty is the best secondary in the game. A, it's the fastest pulling out gun in the game, so it's actually the fastest swap in the game. And two, if they're playing close, it, there's a reason in A, the indoors. Say, yeah. Oh, he let get past mid here. You didn't actually see him. Oh, he's up the dash. Oh, he oh, does the oh dash goes into him. He so threw him off. Who needs a flash and even a dash? Ooh, even a lot of trading. Yeah. yeah. At least Hogney's able to pick up one, but with Solo being the last remaining member, a huge swing for Blackfoot on the defense. They take him down with Jebby. And hey, that's the start. I mean, they've won two the last two rounds, so we've seen it happen last half. So we can definitely see it happen again at the very least, but. It does seem like it was an eco round there from Twin Falls, but hopefully they have enough for next round. They can kind of be on those same terms, as I like to call it, for the first even round besides Pistol, where they both have those Vandals and Phantoms. But we can see the old economy is still nothing too crazy. Still up, one to one, yeah. you know, round th I think it's round four here, so not too much going on. Do you have the Darkness and the Empress, but yep. I don't expect to see them come out this early on as... Well, they do fall by on each side, so if anything, Ooh. this would could be a good round to use it to just get that advantage and deny that extra econ. That Helios is definitely thinking up. about going up this tube here, but decides not to. But if you look at that A site, 
they're kind of posturing and there's no members of Blackfoot. Yeah, that's where being overly aggressive like Twin yeah. Falls had paid off. If there were no defenders, you get on site, spikes down and now the defenders have to become the attackers and really swap sides and the mind games and come through. Yeah, I, I do kind of like the Twin Falls approach here of, of, of s slowing things down. Like, okay, well, we've lost the last two rounds. Let's make sure that we can at least just try to get this la next round here and try to close out this game as cleanly as possible because they've literally made no noise and now they're just going to slowly take a site where they have Omen smoking B, so they think that they're going B, which is a good good bait play for sure because he has the ult to be able to get back to his team. He can just ult there, call it a day. Okay, I'm back. He is Jiggle peeking a lot of those angles just basing on the site lines and will get taken yeah. down. See, well, now they're going to sight. Yeah, able to scout at least one. The smoke comes out, which might give away a little bit, but Spike goes down now. And they're pretty set up, even with the high ground from the Reyna. Should give them that little bit of advantage that they desperately need. Empress coming out as well. Exactly. Now they Blackfoot Ooh. is going to be the retake and starts off with getting Marmalade, but does trade at least one. So now it's still 4v3 in the favor of Blackfoot. Does go down though, now it's a 3v3. Yeah. Consistent trades at least, but another one. Two for one like that exactly. is exactly what Blackfoot needed. Now two to two. Well, they're running, they're trying to low, they're trying to the low time. down as well. Oh. Solo with the quad coming out here. Even through the box to take down Jebby. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it just seems like anyone in Twin Falls is going to have that moment. We've seen so many just different 4Ks having different members of, okay, well, it's this time it's their round, or this <laughs> yeah. time it's their round, so. Everyone's uh, had their moment. Yeah, in the exactly. <laughs> Instead of their one, it's that one 4K, so. Mm, the one time. Yeah. Uh, now 12 for this game point here for Twin Falls. Now as Blackfoot has to win eight <laughs> games, or in, eight rounds in a row to just get to overtime. That's not even the win, so. Yeah. Got to win eight straight here if they want to kind of bring it back, but. If there's a time to do it, it is right now. I mean, we did see the one Odin, so I have yeah. faith in you because of that alone. Anyone who runs a R Odin immediately wins my heart. So <laughs> it's a lot of bullets being able to shot. Exactly. No one needs a sage when you have a wall of bullets. That's what I'm That's saying true. here. And it's the strategy that worked out for them the one round mm -hmm. that they got the spike down on B at least. But it seems that Icebox has been in A only map because no B push has yet to be successful. Ooh, and oh, he finds it. Faster. Does trade though. At least one for one. Dash comes out as well. Ooh, taking control. Of There's the ult coming out. It's back there as well. Still full health. Twin Falls is sitting very good right now. Even across the board, one yeah. for one. That smoke's probably a timeout here pretty soon, so he leaves have a great view Whoa. onto screens. That timing, as soon yeah. as you leave it, they swing the angle. It's curse of any shooter. Ooh. Oh. Didn't check the high ground. Ooh, the Odin. There it is. Got a, deep, got a little bit of damage out. They actually went to the Spectre there. Who didn't get enough height on that? So falls back down and swings and gets it. Julius on a triple here. Oh, he's the knives. It's the time to make it happen. Just don't right click. I think he's. I think he wants to right click here. Okay, nope. There it good. is. That's the quad. And that's the first game. Map one for Twin Falls. Yeah, 12? 15 4. Yeah. Whoo. Pretty dominating victory for them. So we wait to see what. What is your hope for third map after such a dominating victory from Twin yeah, Falls? Yeah, I, I think definitely maybe even just like a split because I think the one thing is, is if Blackfoot's forcing every round and stuff, splits kind of benefits them because split has these really small angles that you have to force through. So like those shotguns and specters can get a lot of use out of that. So I can definitely see this is the split being an option. But I think honestly, they're probably going to pick Ascent. I think whoever's going to... Ascent's been played like every game today. So I think Ascent is definitely going to be a pick here as they just comfort-wise. Well, some hopeful things to look forward to in the future. But as we wait to get into round number two, we're going to go ahead and throw it to a quick break. So make sure to stay tuned for more Valorant.
NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boise State Game Pants eSports Arena. We are continuing our coverage of the state championships for some high school valor. And we just saw a Twin Falls take map one off of Blackfoot on Icebox. We are ready to jump into map number two. I am your host, Brenner Bearlad. Joined with me to call all the action is Brandon Red Hots. Pretty dominating yeah. victory from Twin Falls. I mean... They didn't even get close to double digits on the side of Blackfoot and kept buying. They never yeah. gave themselves a break, so they had to call the timeout, which allowed them to finally break the winning streak of Twin Falls, but unable to come out with the win. So what are you hoping to see them change up here going into map two? Yeah, I definitely want to see them eco. Like, I, I think, you know, obviously it's okay. Well, maybe, you know, we might win that one, but it's like that one doesn't matter if you lose five because of it or lose four because of it. So I think the biggest thing is, is they definitely just need to be on the same page for eco and just, like, be, be willing to just give that round up. Like, it's yeah. okay. Like, I understand. It's okay to save your money for I understand for one that, round. like, you know, you definitely want to win this really bad and you don't want to, like, you know, we don't want to get the score deficit too big. But I think the problem is, like, it gets bigger if you do that. So mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is, you know, relax a little bit and be like, okay, hey, it's okay to just save this round. It's a very big part of Valorant. We've seen it all the time. So just, you know, save those rounds. And other than that, they just, if they use utility a little bit better to each other, like, you know, I think a lot of times with uh, Brimstone and stuff like that, you can smoke, then go in with a flash, something like that. So now with the map being Ascent next, I think yeah. that can basically be a, g a good showing of that. We mm -hmm. saw Blackfoot play it earlier today. did a great job on it. So I think that's going to be, I guess, a good point to look at for them. So maybe they can kind of use that point from earlier and play off that. Yeah, based off the prior round, I would assume Twin Falls chose Icebox. So now having losing the round, Blackfoot's going to choose a map that we've seen them yeah. win on, mm -hmm. the return of Ascend. So I assume that we're going to stick to kind of, kind of the meta of Ascend. Probably see a Sova come out here. Possibly a Cypher, which we've seen come and go. Yeah, I think last time uh, we'll maybe see the double KJ. The KJ has been a big like Sentinel kind of pick here, maybe with one chamber as well. We saw yeah. a double Sentinel, I think, from Blackfoot one game. But overall, I think it's going to be that comfort again. I think we're going to see, obviously, the Jet again and that chamber. and that rain. I think the Reina is obviously we'll see both the of those has been kind of the mainstay, yeah. especially for Solo and how much value they got yeah, in the Reina. <laughs> There's been a lot of just Solo fights, and especially those first Bloods. Like you said, they was literally just every other round it was either Helios or Solo getting the first kill on that yeah. defense. And they were just kind of taking turns. They were just like, well, okay, you get the next one. Okay, mine next. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> just back so and forth so they could keep the ego up. Yeah, so team. I think the biggest thing is going to be using that utility. And I think this map is definitely hard to hold those angles like it was on Icebox. So they can kind of hold those different angles in A. On a set, you can Especially kind of hold with no the same. Sage. Yeah. And so I think they kind of hold those same angles. And we have seen a lot of, I guess, Killjoy cheese in this map. We've seen a lot of kills, honestly, with the Molly today, which is more than I've ever seen in my life. But we have definitely seen it happen. So I think the biggest yeah. thing is utility is going to be a pretty big difference. Obviously, gunplay does 
you know, carry a majority <laughs> of it. Here, no matter what, yeah, you can't get rid of I think, it. I think you can do to, like, skew that percentage-wise is using that utility, those flashes yeah. and things, smokes like that. Which is why this map also really favors Omen, because he yeah. can teleport to a lot of those top of the boxes that players just don't mm. think to check a lot of the times, which is why I pray to God we see an Omen yeah. here, because those plays usually come out as the best, because they just walk right past him. It's like, free kills! And I also think uh, Omen's so good in this map because he has those recharge smokes, Like whereas Brem can buy three smokes, but the thing is, once he uses all three, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Whereas Omen, you can smoke both at the beginning of the round, and if you go to A and you're like, okay, we actually don't want to go A, then it's like, okay, we can go B with that one smoke, right? Like, you can, we can wait for the recharge, whereas Brim doesn't have that. Yeah, well, as we wait to get into the next map, we have a little bit longer to take, so we're going to go throw it to a quick break, but make sure to stay tuned. I swear, Valorant is coming. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure.
with some high school Valorant here in the finals. This is the Idaho High School Esports Showdown with Blackfoot taking on Twin Falls. Twin Falls took map number one of Icebox. Now we're headed to Ascend. Hopefully we can see Blackfoot try to come back Heck here as we even have swap sides now. I believe Blackfoot is up on stage. E no, I think it's Twin Falls on stage now. I think Blackfoot was on stage last Well, now time. they have the moment in well, spotlight. Well, on stage now, yeah. Exactly. So they'll have the moment in spotlight. But I'm your host, Brennan Braylad. Join with me to call all the action is Brandon Redhots. So we kind of already talked about what we're hoping to see from Ascent. Kind of a bit of the roster change-ups as well. Still haven't had no sight of Neon or anything. Yeah, she's completely fallen out of the meta. Yeah. But hopefully Fade will come into it but not be, you know, the traditional of new agent either completely overpowered or completely useless. Yeah, I think the thing is, is, like, Neon's very niche right now. Like, we've seen Neon on Fracture and Haven, actually, in terms of, like, you know, pro play and stuff like that. It's actually, once Optic used, everyone was like, wow, that, that works out pretty well. So I yeah. think it's going to be just taking that, you know, it takes one team to kind of realize how it works and then go off that. But I think these comps so far, like I said, you know, biggest thing right now in terms of like these games right now is I hope they kind of just use that utility a bit, a little bit more in usage and just, I think they just need to communicate more. I think a lot of times it's sometimes it's like, well, we'll go A, but it's like, well, we're not talking about like, you know, our utility or like, you know, maybe one's going in a little too early. I know I do that a lot sometimes where I'm like, oh, I should have called out like, you yeah. know, can you flash for me? Cause then it's like, by the time you're too dead, you're like, well, the guy was right behind me. I could have just asked for it. But mm -hmm. it's like, if I don't say anything, usually just ends up people get mad about it. So there's usually why they call it focus mode. Cause yeah. you're just so into yeah. it. That you're like, oh wait, I have teammates. Let's tell them what I'm doing. I was say like the biggest thing is like, you can watch Valor and be like, well, you know, why do you do this and this? But it's like, when you're playing the game, it's fast. Like mm -hmm. a two minute round is like, oh my gosh, like it's, it's time and down. Like, we got to go. So I think that's the biggest difference here. Take a look at the maps. We can see that Bind and Haven were both banned. Haven, the unusual ban yeah. that we've not traditionally seen as it's kind of been for Boise State, their second most played map behind Bind. So yeah. it's definitely interesting to see. And it's one of the OGs, too. So exactly. it's like I feel like people have played it a decent amount. But maybe it's like one of those things where it's newer players and they didn't, probably haven't played as Haven as much. And, you know, you never know when people kind of pick up the game and stuff like that, especially in the high school level where some people can pick it up right away and, you know, get pretty good at fast or some people played it for a long time. So really just depends in terms of comfortability, but it seems like obviously they kind of came into a collective decision that, okay, we don't like Haven, so <laughs> maybe there's Tonight some strat that we don't know. Haven list night, but yeah. did see that. But we'll go to Senate, which is actually like one of my favorite maps. I think it's a really mm. fun map of, you know, having that really in important mid. And I think it's also yeah. like, the thing about Haven is like, you definitely have to take mid to get control of like, be able to rush A or B, because if you're just rushing A or B every time, they're just gonna be ready for that. 
So I think the biggest thing is like that using that catwalk in that mid to really, mm. I guess, throw people off. Yeah, and it's also playing around what your comp is. We've been talking about like a lot of these have probably just been the comfort mm -hmm. picks for these players as it is, you know, the most stressful moment. You don't want to play the hero that's like, I'm kind of iffy on, yeah. so 50-50. You want to play the comfort pick, your best that can get the value mm -hmm. as we've seen with all of the Reinas yeah. coming out. Not really the meta pick, but if you're popping off like we've seen our Reina players doing, obviously pick yeah. the Reina. I would say it's like, obviously, like you should definitely pick something you're comfortable with because, you know, the very least like you Helios don't want to Like with the jet. Yeah, like he's definitely very comfortable on the jet. Like mm. I think you just want to play that comfort because then you can use that utility to the max. Like, you know, your dashes, you know, your updrafts, you know, your smokes. And mm -hmm. Especially his knife usage. I mean, we've seen yeah. like a lot of ults not being utilized too well, but it feels like every time Helios uses a jet ult, he's definitely taking like one or two or three. So mm. I think just having that underneath your belt is obviously going to be a surplus already. Yeah, and with Ascent being a pretty Sova favored map, oh, yeah. especially on the B push area, we'd hope to see it, but if no one's comfortable with it, then play yeah. what you're comfortable I'll with, like, which is why we've seen stuff like a Cypher come out, which is just kind of, that's not seen often. Yeah, I would say, <laughs> and I think KO especially is one of these things. I think mm. the biggest thing that we've seen is the comfort with KO, which has yeah. honestly been used very well. I think, yeah. you know, the ult's been used on cooldown for attacks and defenses. Following up his flashes, exactly, which is yeah. a huge issue we had early on. Like he can flash for himself and also flash for his teammates. So, mm. And, of course, his nade is always good as a kind of a molly kind of yeah. get off, you know, whole yeah. thing. So I definitely have seen that pick a lot, and I think it's been really well used, whereas a Sova, you know, you definitely don't want to just like randomly recon dart and then just be like, okay, well we saw one, but now Time we'll to go. Hunter's Mark. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Hunter's very in for one guy. Like, all right. And of course the Sova nerfs are through, so I mean yeah. the shock dart damage is reduced by 15 dent now, so it's now 75 instead of 90 max, which you can still one shot someone, but they have to be the center of it. Yeah. And then of course his drum, which got nerfed pretty hard in terms of doesn't last. You hate as to long. see it. You hate to see it, but at the same time. We hate the drone. I mean, the drone is so annoying. <laughs> so instead, we're going to buff the Bomba of Rays, which already has elimination tonight. So That is true. I mean, I think this, this the right Bomba has gotten a lot of kills so far. So Surprisingly. Surprisingly. I think sometimes it's like, I will say, when it's used in smoke sometimes, sometimes smokes are just dropped all over the place because mm -hmm. like we got to use them. So I think when the boom bot's kind of going crazy in the smokes, you're just like, where is it? And then it gives some peaks at the same time. The next thing you know, you hear the sound. You're like, uh oh. And then it just goes <laughs> off. So that's always pretty good. But I do think a big kind of like pivotal thing this game, or at least this overall map, is going to be the pistol round. I think the pistol round actually matters Those a lot more. Those have been more. the really big deciders. Yeah, I was saying. I think, you know, pistol rounds have been pretty decisive in terms of you win that, you play off the momentum for that second one, and then go off that. So. Already jumping in to the draft, kind of see a lot of the. Similar faces that yep. we've seen. Kelso on the chamber. Helios on the jet. Hogmeade this time not on the Elmer. Yeah, going, so for, going the for the Brim, actually. Which is... I don't believe we ever did see the Brim ult last map. And if we did, I never caught it. No, I think there was like a lot of times where they were trying to, but it happened because it kind of just came down to like a 1v4 where it was like, well, if I ult, they still have enough time. So Yeah. So hopefully we can see that ult usage come through. But big changes here are going to be the raise and the Killjoy this time. Yeah, the Killjoys looked pretty good. I like the ults because, I, like I said, it really kind of uses the teamwork together there where they're like, okay, we can use this Killjoy ult in sync. Let's wait yeah. for it. And it just forces them to kind of play together because, like, I think ults like that are definitely good. Same with the KO where it's, you can just kind of press it and then go. Like, yeah. you know, you don't have to worry about the, okay, well, the setup has to happen first, then the goes, and, you know, so I, I kind of like those go buttons. I think it's really good for these kind of teams. Which is why the rain has been so successful. Exactly, yeah. It's Hit just, Empress Charge. So... A Same with the Jettle, it's very much the individual play mm -hmm. of I can win these 1v1s because I have my ultimate. So And the eco it offers. I mean, mm -hmm. just not being able to have, to have to buy and have basically a stronger gun in your yeah. hands is always just a good thing, and especially the chamber as well. Like Those two agents definitely just allow ecos to happen efficiently, or at least help that out more with you mm -hmm. know having the chamber, you know, the deagle or the sheriff and stuff like that, and then having his tour de force as well to kind of counteract that as well. Yeah, and I think this is also just a perfect evidence of these teams going for comfort picks. We're not seeing the traditional of the Omen and Sova yeah. uh, for Ascend. That's what we see in, you know, the top tier pro plays. But here it's comfort picks go yep. for those eliminations, get the advantage. But already, it seems Blackfoot is very stacked up on the A push. Yeah, Helios is definitely popping his dash. He's going to probably lose that one. But Blackfoot playing kind of staggered to A, but... Not really committing anything yet. That was a good, good smoke. I think from, has to be from Twin Falls there. Now comes the smoke coming from Brimstone, and they're gonna take sight. Yeah, going right in, try to apply pressure into Tree. 
And even with the Ghost able to clear out Heaven and push right into Hell with Trendy, Spike down and Twinfold's down a member. Yeah, and the thing is they're going to play retake too, so they're going to have a 4v5 retake as well, where Blackfoot can get very comfortable as well. Yeah, aggressive push on Heaven right now. No one watching Ooh. in the corner. We'll trade out one for one, but Helios with the Sheriff now coming in with a two-piece. Oh, wow. Make that three. Will he find a fourth? Kelso takes it. And, well, yeah, Helios kind of came with that Sheriff and just popped two heads right away. And <laughs> At that point, you're just like, okay, well, we're losing like this. Now they have, once you get those two right away as well, that retake, you have every angle covered at that point. It makes it so hard to play. Yeah. And Blackfoot didn't have a single member secured in hell to try to hold them off as they yeah. went for that push either. So he was running away with a triple, nailing a lot of those one ding headshots too, as you can see from the kill feed. So and he just has the aim on point. It seems like Blackfoot is not forcing this time. Which is exactly what we want. Oh, we do see one. Uh, yeah, spectrum. okay, wait. Little worried. Hold. <laughs> Everybody hold. Uh, okay, we uh, see one. That's not bad. I'm kind of worried to say I think I might have seen a Frenzy. Frenzy's not bad. I think you got to get, you know, a one in there for it. It's only come up a little bit more popularity recently just because, especially on Jet, uh, which they don't have, but it's good to kind of get that one kill close range because you can move and shoot with it a lot too, but, oh. Yep, there's the Frenzy. I was right. What? I don't know if that was there in Maybe. Oh, no, because enemy teams. That was a cool lineup, actually, from uh, the Ribbon Twin Falls there. He kind of just popped a molly right into the uh, site there. Wow, once again, Helios playing very forward. Has the gun advantage with the Vandal, so who oh, has to bring out some utility from Blackfoot as they have been identified going for the B push because Helios saw at least three of those members. Okay, here comes the other Molly. Right into the market doorway, so pushing right out. Gets hot meat as well, pushing on to site. Make sure he's clear up Bohouse. Finds Helios on the stairs, who picks up Jebby. He has a Vandal, too, by the way. So Helios is definitely uh, quite overgunned in terms of... Still full health as well! Yeah. Okay, they do trade that, though. They're doing a pretty good job of getting a lot of trades. Yeah, one for two right now. Twin Falls actually being yeah, down a member right now. But Salty with 7 HP. Definitely a ballsy swing there, taken down by Solas. He just picks up another, but now finally taking oh. some damage. Nice dash to dodge in with a triple. That's gonna be the defuse. And that was a great player there too, because he the dad like the jet dashes through to get out of the sight of the you know the first back sight, but then Reyna's covering right where she was. So it's like you either have to force to shoot the the, the dead dash or the Reyna's peeking you, and at that point you're just kind of you know, playing two different angles at the same time, which is pretty hard to do. Yeah, perks of having that number advantage is cover each other's backs, so. Check out so low, too. That was pretty scary, that 21 HP. Yeah, but came out on top. And Absolutely. And Trendy not firing a bullet. It was definitely caught off guard there. You could tell of just she dashed forward, get the angle shot down. So Twin Falls goes up 2-0 right now. Blackfoot having one. Should be able to buy, though, at least four of them. Should mm -hmm. be able to have like full buys here with the Vandal and Phantoms, which Has they the actually daggers. want the they're going the light armor specters again. Oh, Helios does have the daggers. Playing really aggressive though. Has to be really careful with the brain of flash. Might pay off. Oh, oh gets wow. it with the headshot on the dead. Be Make sure to back off immediately. Eh? Waiting for the updraft to come in here and just <laughs> Yep, there it is. I think that was one of those things where Helios kind of forgot that jet was changed there. Because you look at it, he he uh peeks it. And then he presses the dash button because you see it become active, and then he's like, "Oh, because he's already he's already <laughs> in the corner." So he definitely is kind of having that used to that muscle memory of, "Okay, get one kill, dash out," mm -hmm. which happens all, still, I think, with jet players right now, where you're like, "Oh, right, I have to charge it." That adjustment period of yeah. the new patch for sure. Gonna take it some adjustment time, but still has four daggers remaining of the five, so can and still kind of flank here too. Yeah, very slow push from Blackfoot could pay out for them, but. <laughs> Flashbang going out, pushing immediately with it. Only one member gets through. Oh, doesn't. I'm not going to put the silence on Jet there. Hog gets one. Oh, the bot. Yes, they definitely did not want to use his knives there. I think it's two left here to reset. Spike planted. Well, Blackfoot only has two members left. Yeah, even grenade coming out. Now smokes and the mollies. Ooh, I think he barely missed that. Yeah, he ran out of ammo, was mid-reload, so now yep. Jebby trading out here, and Hog's going to close it out with a triple. That's another round for Twin Falls, this time three members surviving. Absolutely, and now it's 3-0 here for the set of Twin Falls, so definitely already starting the momentum early like last game and kind of bringing it to this next game here. Yeah, and things actually looking worse for Blackfoot because even last round, they won an early round. 
but continued to force yeah. by, which is might be an issue but of what they're running into. I think last time it was fine, though, because they actually went with the uh, light armor... Uh, sorry, the light armor Spectre last round, but they actually have enough for this round. So you see that they have the Vandals and Phantoms. So they actually probably bought that knowing, okay, we have a minimum yeah. of that 3,900 next round. They did the math. Yeah. But two operators for the side of yeah. Twin Fall. And every time we've seen Twin Falls do this, we've seen teams really struggle with these operators. Because you got to play those smokes. you got to play. And yeah. Yep. Hey, Solo got the first little bit. Yeah. Last time Solo played on this map with Ascent, uh, I think he had probably about 15 op kills mid just by holding that down. Yeah. Where, you know, people really struggling to kind of smoke that off or anything Can't like that. Can't really so. swing an op there. Yeah. Unless they miss that first shot, but they wouldn't oh, buy it after they couldn't. Yeah, really cuts off the team from each other. Two and two split. But Blackfoot needs to get a foothold on the site. At least spike plant down so they can get a little bit of economy yeah, in their favor. On the iPad here. Figuring out what game he wants to play. I mean, look, the members of Twin Falls are also rotating through mid, so they Watching might even smoke. go for a flank push if we're ever so lucky. We do see the chamber holding down in tree as well. So oh, great go. Molly, but he's going to be outside the smoke. I don't know if they, they know he's there. Oh, he did a lot of damage, actually. I think that Molly hit him up pretty good there. Going to take a little bit of poke damage up top, so they were able to clear hell at least, but aren't able to apply the pressure in heaven as all four members of Twin Falls are stacked up. Kale is very low. Might be able to get the poke damage through the floor. Say Twin Falls now playing for this retake. Dash is up top already. Gets nice one gets two. from Helios. Able to pick up two. And the over Helio come out. Three. Shows away the position. He's looking for the quad. See ya. Takes down. <laughs> he's, like, yeah. I got, he's like, I got my three. You guys the last one. <laughs> he had the defuse as well. Yeah, so he's like, I'm holding. I want my old point. So he's able to secure it. Twin Falls continuing to run away yeah. with it. I would also very much like to see possibly a time out come out for Blackfoot to try to have that regroup after. Yeah, definitely kind of stop the momentum going because you can keep gaining the momentum, then it starts yeah. to go like even further and further away. So definitely kind of want to stop that going. But Blackfoot, I think, did force the round as well. So they're going to have to probably save this round if they want to kind of get things back on they track. They do have three ultimates to the two of Twin Falls. Twin Falls is buying a Spectre there, so it must have had one of those ops go down, because, I mean, buying two ops is really expensive, so if you have one of those go down, that's definitely a lot of money here. But Helios is... Oh, oh I should almost the timing there, too, but does get out unscathed. And Brist is come out. Oh, and the ult's coming out as well for Blackfoot, so after this, Molly probably goes away. And the kill drill, they're definitely wow. giving a lot to this, which they definitely do need to win this round to kind of stop <laughs> the momentum, yeah. so... Three ult committed. Oh! oh. So that's Empress down. Oh, he might. He's that's not the silent, so down. He's hitting it. Yep. He's not attained, so. Doesn't <laughs> get him down, yep. He walked right past him for a second and was like, oh, wait, that's an enemy. So. Oh, now here comes the retake, Gale. So now everyone, uh, the members of Blackfoot, are silenced. So we're going to want to see an aggressive push from Twin Falls. They are up a member now. Pick that up three members with the double up coming in for strides here. Yeah, and just playing retake with op too. I mean, you just see get two picks right away. I mean, he, he's just wide thinking with an op down yeah, on the side. So they're definitely feeling pretty confident with these ops. And I, you know, I think Blackfoot's definitely come up with a strat here to kind of stop those. They had a lot of going on there, but the problem is they didn't check that first corner with Helios. And yeah. people sometimes will be like, okay, well, I KJ ulted. You can't be there. But then they're there and they're like, oh, well. Now you get two of us. <laughs> exactly. So. And not to mention, it was the ulted Empress Reina yeah. that he took down as well. And the Brimstone. Yeah. So they had no denial for the spike plant. We did see Twin Falls kind of use that orbital strike there to kind of take the last of that side to make sure they won that round. But it's now 5 0 for the side of Twin Falls. But that double operator is still going too, and they're about to peek on Cat. And so if he doesn't smoke, smoke Cat here, it's going to be trouble. What do they do? So Ooh, good start the there. He's coming out. We hear Jet dashing somewhere. It. Operator as well. Whew, if he fired through that smoke and picked up one, that would be absolutely disgusting. Oh, oh gets it up top instead. So it gets first elimination. All right, the bot didn't deserve that. Whole operator shot for little old bot. It's got to be destroyed. Destroyed. It can't have any any traces. <laughs> Reduced oh, to Adam. Shot. Really good flash there. And Kelso, but they're on the cross. Yep. Bobby able to pick up Halt, at least trading out. Getting taken down by that Ares. Oh. Let's go. The knives have been popped, though. Jet and Helios is looking to just push out, I think. Still but sitting in her spot, Yeah, going to play B. I, I like that play of it's, it's you know, Sometimes it's tough to like, well, I want all the kills. A but bit like, of an overcoming, yeah. I would say, on the side of Twin Falls. Definitely did not need the knives in a 4v2 situation. Yeah. But at least it popped them. <laughs> you know? It is usage. Dead right now on a double, able to at least pick up two. And did that the off. Oh. did have it. Wait, that's three offs around. 
Well, at least that's one Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> but you know his teammates hopefully picked that up. But and Helios is now rocking the Odin. So he's got something on top of everything. And now I mean, he did lose his ult, so that yeah. is lost value for Twin Falls. They didn't really need to use it, so if anything, that's a bit of a power move on the side of Twin Falls. We're now 6-0. They're halfway to winning this ride out, so Blackfoot really struggling here and still holding on to the Brimstone Beam. Yep, we have two ults left. And the one being popped right now, two to force, so they're going to have three hops this round <laughs> in terms of, you know, firepower. They did get silenced. I think, they, I think two, one or two only got silenced, though, so they don't have the whole squads there. They must have been... Okay, they took all of there, but GB was actually one off, so they could have given it to GB here and got that Showstopper, but it seems that they actually didn't pick that up. Uh, yeah, you have to see Showstopper actually yep. come into value, as last time it was used, he got eliminated immediately. Yeah, so they so. got hit in the animation lock. And Solo gets another kill mid, so... First elimination for Solo, once again, living up to... What has been history so far? Yeah, the smoke is definitely stopping this push, though, as Brimstone kind of smokes. And they know they have ops there, too, so they can't just, you know, peek in and try to trade one for one because uh, there's no trade. They can't push through mid either, yeah. yeah. Have yet to see Blackfoot even push through tree as well. They've just been going either hard yeah, they A or hard to, B. I think they tried, like, two last round. It was, like, a 2v5 at that point. And, you know, it's pretty hard to actually retain. And up against two operators trying to push through mid is... The definition of an uphill they battle. They do have but a, You know, they have the Brimstone over the orbital strike here, but... Looks like Chibi's about to peek into an op here. Oh, oh that's a shot from oh, there. Oh, nice shot. It. The denial of the tour de force. I believe he only ever fired yeah. a bullet with yeah, that as so. well. It's huge value gain. And they walk right into oh, the side. Being used. Show stop into the beam. Okay. Not too much damage, though. Right as he looks away, even the shot on him. Oh, that's going far. Oh, the Odin. Thank you, Helios. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was. Oh, yeah, Helios you never is... peek at Odin. I hope Helios just sprays through this, because this is just paper with thin walls. Oh, oh dead yeah, picks up but one, but Helios trades. Those are the trades you want, and Helios with the Odin running away with it now, two surviving. Single life able to get all three picks on those daggers. He's... He, there's a possibility that we will see daggers next round built. Yeah, I mean... We've he, seen Helios get quads before, so... That is true. I think we've seen it. Twin Falls kind of all have their fair shares of the 4Ks, but I think with Solo getting this pick every round, it's going to be less of a chance, because I think no matter what happens, uh, no one's able to really go mid here. Yeah. Solo is just holding that angle, and he'll peek out of the smokes, too, and it seems like he's just not missing right now with this operator, so... Blackfoot definitely has to come up with a strategy or plan to kind of stop that from going here. And look at Chamber. Chamber's going to play this really wall. aggressive as well. Yeah, he's waiting to see he, but... Ooh, Blackfoot this time oh, going yeah. for a mid-tree push against Does double off. op. Or at least single op. We don't know if they rebuy. Okay. Finds him. Does get him, though. No heal available, though, so 3 HP. It's a good start. First blood for dead, yeah. Solo was unable to get first blood. He oh. took that from him. So instead, Kels is uh, going to even things out onto Trendy. Ooh. Salty gets another trade. He's down to 30 oh. HP for dead. And he's going to get taken oh. down by the Odin. And he was <laughs> very risky. He threw that Odin. Satchel charge oh. as well. Ooh. Barely missed Almost that good. double. Oh, Helios with another Ooh, one. The headshot yeah, as well. Yeah, Helios is just spraying through everything with this Odin. He, he's ready to go. But there's no one on B this time. So Blackfoot is going to Good at rotation. least try to take B. But they have to clear every angle, so they have to be careful. Actually, they're only playing one over here. The Killjoy, I think it's Marmalade there, is still playing in mid. He's looking for Helios as the push is coming. Yeah, looking out. for a hero play, I think, here. He definitely needs at least one to make this useful. Ooh, Spike Eater goes down, and they have no side on either of them. So Helios picking up that Vandal is going to get his triple there. Falls with the now it's a 1v3 with an operator. Do you play impatient? Don't. Yeah, this is where you don't want to swing. Wow. And he even has the light armor as well, which is brutal. Yeah. So he, is, what, 17 kills there, I think it's on? It's ring around the rosy right now. Can hears the defuse go down. Oh, and he looks at the 4K. There's the daggers. It's on Lord. Oh, yeah, you right. was going to happen. <laughs> and there it is. So he could get the daggers this round, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> Living up to it right now. So Now, I can definitely see the daggers being popped with kind of the last play he made 
on B, which is he probably just pops him and then just plays very aggressive, which... I mean, it's been working yeah, out for so, him. Yeah, so, I mean, might as well. I mean, usually it's like, okay, well, you know, I play really aggressive. I get, you know, taken down once. Okay, then I'm done. <laughs> but he hasn't been taken down yet. So I think he's going to keep going with his really confidence kind of ego peaks until something stops him, which well, is fair. I think it's fair. Like, you should definitely keep testing to see how far you can go yeah. until that one time happens. And you're like, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Got to wait till you get ego checked. But until then... Have as big yeah. as ego as you want. Kelso, another op right away. And that's He's been holding on to it. It's really hard to kind of play here with, you know, always being down that, just that one member right away. Yeah, and Blackfoot members are even oh, running in Ares and in oh. Odin. So really missing that safe tool right now. Just going to commit everything they can. Yeah, knives are actually be silenced here. So no knives from Helios. Does have a vandal, though, and able to get two. Spike down, B. One Three. Only silence him for so long. And... Even then, you have to worry about the bullet, so... Black -footed, yeah. 5v1, that's going to be a clean, flawless four twin falls. 9-0. to zero. Yeah. It's yeah, and it seems like, you know... Not looking good Black for Blackfoot. Blackfoot is definitely trying their best to kind of get something going here, but the problem is, is these operators are literally just holding down mids. The moment that you go through mid, they are ready for you. And it seems like, as well, you know, Helios just firing the smoke and getting them on these timings. Really kind of, you know, hard to do, but Blackfoot does have two ults here, so maybe they kind of ult off market, try to have that kill drill, but this time they'll wait until it's over, or at least, you know, this least till they're out of it. This yeah. time. <laughs> to wait and see. Solo in the exact same angle he's been all game. But it doesn't matter, you know. Finally not going for that mid push, instead just pushing B as hard as they can. With that Otis, they're going to be spraying Good through day. the wall the best they can. Buys them that much more time that Blackfoot really can't afford here because... They have yet to have a successful push. Now rotating all the way over to A. But Twin Falls, look how far forward they are holding right now. Yeah. Kelso is uh, definitely looking for one. Ooh, Ooh, there it is. Solo gets the first blood again. Rotated through mid and, and just no gave him that tiniest so. little bit of sideline. Very lucky swing in that. Oh, Brimson ult comes out. Splits his team and gets two with it. Hug me. That was disgusting. They do have a counter, Brimson ult, but... He's not going to eat. Yeah. Well, if he gets a double with it, yes, then... they are very low. Show him how it's done. Okay. Use there it. Is. Okay, they clear one angle, but the problem is using the right side angle. At least it's something. Oh, with fine. the double! That's a quad for Hog! Yeah, and that... With that oh, man, that orbital strike really came at the worst time. They're trying to get through that A main, and they were just stuck in between that place and just took two down, and so... Twin Falls now up 10-0 for Blackfoot. Blackfoot definitely has to kind of get something going here if they want any chance of kind of going into the second half here. Yeah, 10 to 0 in a best of three for the state championships right now. Yeah, this Twin is the grand Falls. final, so. Twin Falls looking to secure it out. Blackfoot hopefully uses the killjoy here to try to get onto site as quickly as possible. Yeah. But they are also. And the Odin is being sprayed through from Helios right now. Do we see a little bit of damage actually dealt to uh, Marmalade, it seems like, on that Killjoy. The you one person run. you don't want to lose who has the hey, ult. Hey, don't the ult. Sorry, kid. Gets a kill to the Gets smoke. destroyed, yeah. even. Such a hard loss. Oh, yeah, he just shot the Odin. He just destroyed the ult with the Odin. So, Salty's able to at least even get one, yeah. out. Smoke so good. Wants to shoot. As soon as that smoke goes oh. down. At least they're able to clear in time, and Spike goes down. So Killjoy did get the value that they wanted. Oh, look at that beautiful sideline oh, of the Odin. Gets close. a little bit. The long reload. He's the last place. Oh, he gets it. Oh, and he gets another one. Didn't even try to run out of the bolt. Just stood there and took it. He gets four. Oh, the ammo uses it, and he gets it. Helios with the Odin. Speechless right now. I mean, I'm loving I, this. I love the commitment there. I mean, I'm not going to lie. He just kept spraying through the wall. He's like, eventually they might run into me. 66 bullets and a dream hit yeah, hits four. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And what it, I mean, we take a replay here as well and just see, okay, well, we got 66 six bullets but left. Nothing beautiful and place. Just there's one. Slowly there's kind of makes two. his way. Wait for third and fourth. Has the dash. And then just keeps going. Just saw the corner peak and quad with an uh, Odin. I was in that last one. Those boat walls are paper thin. So that Odin is just going to shred all the way through. 
And he decides, okay, well, maybe we can get a little more Vandal. I'm not playing B anymore. New Ascent meta? I New Ascent meta? <laughs> hey, we've seen, I mean, Boyce does all the time, too, with Dream Maker. He does it a lot with that Odin. I know. He'll always he play will that. always be the yeah. player of the game in my heart for any time I see an Odin in this game. So, Helios, you're a player of the game in my heart <laughs> with this Odin play. Well, and the 25 kills you have, but yeah. No, that's all of it. <laughs> <laughs> all of those kills are from the Odin. Change my mind. That's right. okay. <laughs> yeah. It's now 11 0, though. Both Empresses online, so. Black, but you got you got one here, I believe. I Get mean, Solo's been holding on to it for as long as this game's been yeah, going on. Yeah, he doesn't on. need it. He's like, I don't know. He's exactly. He's been holding down mid, uncontested for so long, and Hogmeat picking up on the salty, who pushed very aggressively, forcing out the Molly, denying the push. Brimstone's able to get Spike. Brings out his own Odin this time around. If you can't Ooh, beat double Odin, Odin, actually. If you can't beat an Odin, buy an Odin. Oh. Okay, so it's hey, uh, Empress is procced. Oh, oh, goes, oh, got out of Odin. Got Odin out of on Odin violence. Okay, here we Ooh, go. The 3v3. Spectre even right now. 30 seconds left. The Odin meta right now is flowing from Blackfoot, and it's working. Able to pick up the Vandal now, push on the site, dropping the Operator, but smart choice when pushing B of all sites. This might look like the first round for Blackfoot as the Empress yeah. is online for them still. I'm leaving them. So, so it does have the Empress available and does actually have a gun this time. So, oh, ah, there it, it is. <laughs> by clockwork, able to call it, Flash. pull it out. Great job by spraying through this, making sure that no one's actually there. It's a great spam wall. Oh, the uh, double Odin able to pick up to the Empress still alive. Could be the difference that he needs. Able oh, to fight right. two. Can he get his own quad here? Oh, well, it's gonna you, expire you in time. for last round. Uh, what are you saving for? Yeah! And they, wait, take, oh, great job, they take that. I'll tell you what. I mean, it ended the win streak of I'll say, 11 I'll, rounds. I'll tell you right now, Blackfoot doesn't get swept. That's one thing they don't. Able to take at least one round. Hey, one's more than zero, and that's we'll hey. take that. Take that to the grave. Moral that's right. victories, moral victories That's here. right, we take those ones. So twin falls. All it took was the Odin counter. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. I mean. As it being my favorite gun and meta, tried and true working on this map right now. So anyone who flames me in quick match from now on, I have evidence. Yeah, so there's one time I was casting <laughs> and like, you know, the Odin worked for a couple rounds there, but. Prove me wrong, you can't work again I here. can send you some clips. I may be playing split, but it still works, <laughs> right? Okay, now Twin, you know, Twin Falls still has to attack here, at the very least. I mean, I know it's level one, but they still got to attack. Yeah, this is the one point where Blackfoot could try to get an early lead for these pistol rounds, being able to half oh buy my against gosh. the pulse. Not oh, such an aggressive push mid, and Helios gets it with the Sheriff. Oh, good point there. Good trade, though, immediately. A lot of post damage, though, unable to A lot to of damage. Twin Falls actually taking They have two very low members. At Chaos at minimum 10 oh. HP. Nice swing, unable to secure it. Does trade. One for one. These are They're trades. so low, though. Picks up the Sheriff, at least. Oh, the frenzy. Spike goes down. If he sprays through that box like he's supposed to, he would have gotten it as well. He gets. He has a sheriff too, so he actually takes a lot of damage there. He takes 55. Frenzy not spraying through the oh, box. Able to get it in on two. Gets, gets on me. They're at plus one, and Chamber doesn't have the help. Oh. And so he gets it. Blackfoot trying to bring it back. I love the energy. They, 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 they are take not, what you can they're get. not giving up, and I can respect that on a lot of different levels. I mean, this is for the championship. Absolutely. So you got to bring it back somehow. And the reverse same sweep starts, of the end. It starts with two. It definitely is. It has started. And that gave them the econ advantage and now as they can well. Bonus. Yeah, now they can kind of get that buy with those specters and marshals and cool things like that. Even Ares, if you really want to. Which, I mean, with the Odin place, the Ares could work here. That is true. So I'll have to wait and see what they're gonna go with. Yeah, twin falls. A lot of specters posturing towards maybe a potential or mid hit with that kind of classic. You're gonna be saving again, so not the worst. Do you see the one frenzy at least? Yep. So my kind of jet. I'm, I think it was the jet, which is pretty common because you can just dash in and then be ready to go for that. No, we've seen the jet running the sheriff. So. Yeah, the first round they usually do just because they have that that dash. There's so much distance yeah. as well, so it's been a very popular thing. Ooh, Molly oh. at tree as well, and Trendy's gonna get it too immediately. Even one onto Helios. That's huge. Oh, there we go! Wow, the first flawless we've seen for a black foot. The aggression from Twin Falls. <laughs> 
<laughs> Take what they can get, man. That's true. That's what I mean. Hey, let, the fans got your back too, Blackfoot. We can hear them. So now uh, heading into the fourth round of side swaps. Things looking much better for Blackfoot. You're getting the momentum in their favor. Even a Vandal coming out for Absolutely. Salty. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you got you got a bonus here. You got but get... at the same time, Twin Falls can fall by. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of smart in this situation. They got to win every round at this point. So I think the biggest thing here is like one leeway, but it's only for overtime. So you got to buy when you can. I mean, they can technically lose one yeah. round, but that's a distance you oh. do not want to close Helios that gap. does find him. I think Twin Falls plus one, definitely ready to go now. Yeah, they came online. They have the guns that they needed. No more pistol rounds. So but, I mean, like I said, they did have to save that last round. So I think it was a very smart play overall, and they have the guns as well. So I mean, they could have tried to commit last yeah, round, but, but it did, would not end well. So they tried to get it over. As say last time they did possible. that, they were like, "Okay, we should just save." Because exactly. you know, it was like, well, if we just save it, just you know, hey, we'll be. They well. had a little bit yeah. of leeway. You know, it was only eleven to two. Okay, so. dash through. Ooh, Ooh. there by two, but standing. does trade at least one. Yeah, Nate able to oh, pick up one. so close. Helios up to a triple, looking here. for the quad He's onto out of there. dead. So that means Spike's probably going to go down on B, knowing where he is all the way on the other side of his spawn. Oh. And with a long trade like that, it's going to be around for Twin Falls. And now it is going to be game point here for Twin Match Falls. Point. I think Blackfoot actually kind of forced a bit there. We, oh, we saw Noden buy, but it's sold back. You gotta buy it. That, that, that's, that was that was the I winning mean, tool. They have to force buy here for Blackfoot. Yeah. I mean, it, whether they it's can afford it or win not, or, it's win or lose. So it is. This is where we want to see either some god tiers plays of a reverse sweep or just. <laughs> see, this is 28 kills. Yes. <laughs> carried, carried. Yeah, no, carried. for sure. Huh? <laughs> he was getting Odin, carried. Yeah, the Odin's OP. <laughs> <laughs> Never in my <laughs> life have I heard that statement. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, Twin Falls. They do get at least one. The bot, no. Yeah. But that doesn't really give them too much information. I think only one or two shot at it, so. Slow push, trying to buy as much time as they can. Try to throw Blackfoot off. Wonder how close Helios is to those daggers. They have to be, like, right on yeah, the cusp. Yeah, he's got to be close. Marmalade holding us down. Ooh, I think he does have his utility. Right on top of him. Daggers this time right so. in. He swings as he's going to see all the members. Oh. And Unable to secure even one free. There's the daggers. He yep, got, he got it so back. quickly. 5v2 situation. Spike going down on B. And he's running at him. Spike I mean, running. as he should with the daggers, he has every advantage oh, here. Oh, he's ready. Oh, this is it. Though. Gets it. Empress is available. Oh, my God. They're just firing through, though. Salty throwing both flashes that he can. Not even pushing with Gets him. Gets one even in the nade. Three to two. Oh, oh Empress came online as well. It's one to one. Oh. Unable to secure it. So that means Twin Falls will be the winner and the state champions. Deservingly. Very deservingly. I mean, towards the end, Blackfoot definitely got their footing in. Yeah, and they slowly came back, but... I mean, going from a, what, 5v2 to a 1v1 yeah, was, that was, really was close. That was a really good retake right there. And honestly, yeah. a, a good way to go out at least. It was very close. I mean, not to say the least, but uh, Blackfoot made it this far. Yeah, so they they take second That's place. That's still second in the state. So huge win for them. Absolutely. Uh, as we close it out, it will be Twin Falls taking it away. This stream is brought to you by the Idaho Army National Guard, who is a proud supporter of Boise State Esports. And they want to invite you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time with more than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 sign-on bonus. The Idaho Army National Guard is the best team to join out there. And make sure to reach out to them on Twitch at iGuard Gaming World. Twin Falls coming out as the state champions. I, I don't want to say it's on the back of Helios, but 28 yeah, kills is I mean, hard not to say something say that like that. first game was definitely all over because, you know, Solo got a lot of those kills as oh, well. Yeah. But the second game, Helios definitely turned it up to a different level. I mean, I think he had like 30 total kills at the end of the game there. So I think any difference when you see 30 on your top frag and then you see, you know, I think the second frag was like 16, 17. So Helios definitely was pretty much the difference there. And with, with game one being so close, I would personally give it to the game, you know, player of the game, of course, the series. Yeah. But you never know. I mean, Solo <laughs> definitely did a lot of work, especially that second game, because 
Healer's Barb been popping off, but Solo was holding down that mid yeah. and definitely made it so that mid was a wasteland with that operator. I mean, no one even tro like tried to go mid anymore. We also saw meet with the fantastic oh, yeah. swing with mm -hmm. the KO. I mean, as we've been saying, most of these players have had their moment in the spotlight. Absolutely. Everyone had their pop-off moment, uh -huh. especially members from Blackfoot when they were able to win rounds. Absolutely. So for player of the game, I mean, no matter what, there has to be an Odin play somewhere in here <laughs> because they were huge oh, players. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, they were getting sure. quads with a lot of oh, those. Yeah. So I would hope to see, I mean, as we mentioned, Helios solo, the go-tos. What and surprised me is it's yeah. Helios without a doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, this the, play was insane. If this is not number one in the top <laughs> five, I don't know what would be. No bias, by the way. No, but exactly. <laughs> No cap, no cap. <laughs> Just like a really cool play, that's why. <laughs> He's not the player. It's all about the Odin. Yeah, the Odin is the player. They put of the game, in all actually. the work, yeah. obviously. Uh -huh. It wasn't his aim or anything. It was just oh. spray and pray, yeah. obviously. So, but that is going to be Helios for the player of the game, which is brought to you by the Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes a team more successful. Just it's like Idaho Central is helping members achieve financial success. Helios is going to be the Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game. Well, as we wrap up the state championships, we have seen both Rocket League and yep. Valorant, but we still have more games we to play. We got a lot tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow is the kind of the heftiness of it in, in a sense because yeah. tomorrow is a lot. Yeah, tomorrow we got, we got Overwatch, yes, League of Legends, and Smash Bros. Yeah, Smash will be fun because it's going to be crew battles, so that'll be fun. We see both these teams kind of – it's not just about their best member in Smash. It's about the whole team. It's going to be a very – team event in terms of Smash. So I'm really excited to see that as well. Yeah, so make sure to come back for tomorrow, but that's going to wrap it us up for here tonight. I mean, the return of the Odin is here <laughs> after that matchup is all I'm going to say. So I know what I'm going to go home Absolutely. and do. Play some with some Odin. There you go. I might get flamed by everybody, but I don't know in my heart exactly. what is possible to be accomplished with it. But we're going to go ahead and close out tonight with the top five plays brought to us by the Idaho Army National Guard, who once again invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time with more than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for. The Idaho Army National Guard is the best team to join out there. So make sure to reach out to them on Twitch at iGuardGaming and have a good night.